it is, man. Don't know who it is, man. The Dolphins D, we already in here. Ready to turn up this year. Turn up this year. He gonna get it. Hard Rock Stadium. We gon' defend. We gon' defend. We gon' defend. We gon' defend. Home of this side. Home of this side. We gon' defend. We gon' defend. Let me he say his squad. 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 We gon' defend. We gon' defend. We gon' defend. Home of this side. Home of this side. We gon' defend. We gon' defend. Let me he say his squad. His squad. His squad. His squad. His squad, 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 his squad,
to let them know we here. Yeah. I know the whole city riding. A little early, it's a bit surprising. Been it smooth, now we enterprising. Switch it up, now we improvising. Go to get in the winter column. Whole squad been trained to go. Bins for life, we throw the foe. Singing this just to walk and broke. Two a time, two a time. Time to grind, time to shine. Two a time, two a time. Two a time, two a time. Two a time, two a time. Time to grind, time to shine. Two a time, two a time. Two a time, two a time. Two a time, two a time. Really hope he the man. Hope he found us a gem. Like the heat found bam. Wanna take time to think fit. Cause he put on a show. But the young man up. In the whole city know. Time to catch all the blessings. Cash out on the vest. Ball out, don't choke. Fins want all the smoke. Chris Greg gay ho. Coach flow like spoke. Damn arena still a goat. But to a man on go. Watch to a man throw. Watch to a man scope. Watch to a man dish shoot that we never ever see before. Fans up, let's win. Boy, I'm ready for a ring. Maybe three, four, five, six. It's damn week, use ten. I know the whole city right. A little early, it's a bit surprising. Been it smooth, now we enterprise. Switch it up, now we improvise. Go to get in the winter column. Whole squad been trained to go. Bins for life, we throw the foe. Singing this just to walk and grow. Two a time, two a time. Time to grind, time to shine. Two a time, two a time. Two a time, two a time. Two a time, two a time. Hey guys, I'm Danny Johnson, CEO at TPP, the Positive Porpoise. I'm Jason Miller from Fins Up SoCal Fan Club. I'm Scott Howell from Atlanta Dolphin Club. Mark Angelo, NorCal Dolphin Club. You're, you're listening, listening to, to Clock Blockers, Miami, Miami fans, fans' number one morning show. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Stephen D, and I am super, super excited that you all are with me here on this lovely Spread Kindness Friday morning. I want to give a big shout out and a good, good morning to my Finns family and my Finlaws. Hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing today. I want to uh, thank you guys for supporting the show. I'm so excited for the uh you know, show that we have lined up for you today. It's going to be an absolutely amazing one. Um, I want to remind everybody why you guys are in here this morning, right? I need you guys to go hit that like button. If you guys haven't done so already, what are you guys waiting on? All right? Because we're here, we're ready to go, and we're super excited about having this opportunity to be on with you guys this morning. And uh, we have a great show lined up for you today. So go hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe. If you guys are subscribing, make sure you turn on that bell notification while you guys are doing that, and that way you get alerted every time Miami Sports Music goes live. I know sometimes I get hit up uh, that, hey, Steven, you went live and I didn't get notified. I don't know what's up with YouTube. Sometimes they can act a little funky, uh, but no matter what, I still want you guys to make sure you guys hit that notifications tab or that notifications bell, and make sure you put your alerts on for all the time so that way you always get notified. Uh, another thing, guys, we have a YouTube membership. That's right. There's three different levels. There's DWA, there's DWA for life, and there's DWA loyalty. And I want to give a big shout out to my people that are already part of this family. Estefan, Rob G, Tracy, Saxman J. Will, Marcus, Antonio, Travel Adventures, uh, Jason Miller, Vic K, Chef Shu, D Dub, A Rod, uh, and I guess that's that's full Quiddy. I can't I can't I haven't quite pronounced that one yet, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, but I want to give a big shout out to everybody because all of you have been absolutely amazing and supportive of everything on the channel, and um, I want you guys to be part of the family like them. So, uh, guys, if you're already a member of the channel, tell them what they're missing out on. They're missing out on being part of the big family, 
And that's what we're here. That's what we are here at Miami Sports Music YouTube channel. We are just part of one big happy family. So we hope that you become a big part of that. Um, I also want to remind everybody, you guys can donate to the channel. Okay. If you guys look above at the top right of the corner of the screen, you'll see there's three different ways to donate to the channel. You guys can do it through YouTube Live, through the Super Chat, which I'll explain to you how in a minute to do. You guys can do Cash App, which is uh, Money Signs, Stephen D13. And you can also do PayPal, Stephen D Report. Now, all week long, we uh, if you've made a donation of $5 or more, we are doing a giveaway. All right. And now the original plan was that any donation of $5 or more this week, you would be entered to win a DWA swag bag. And let me tell you what happened yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, it got a little crazy. And um, so what we decided to do is um, up the goals a little bit for today. I, I originally said... Uh, that any single donation of $5 or more would automatically get you entered into a swag bag giveaway. You can enter as many times as you want. Rules, restrictions apply. Uh, the original goal was at least 25 single donations. We surpassed that yesterday. Big shout out to all the Miami Sports Music YouTube members. We are at 44 currently before the start of this live stream this morning. Okay, and I say that because now we have a new goal. It is Spread Kindness Friday, and we want to do things big here on Miami Sports Music. So we're going to up the ante a little bit, people. Friday's goal during today's live stream is I want to get 100 likes. We're already at 13. So 100 likes this morning is the goal. So I expect Chef Ju, all the people that are members, I need your help this morning. 100 likes. So make sure that throughout the whole show, you guys are getting people to hit that like button. You guys are going to social media and sharing. We need to get 100 likes. That is the goal this morning. If we get an additional 31 donations, single donations, of $5 or more for a grand total of 75 donations, because remember, we're at 44 at the moment, we're going to add some prizes. And we're going to add some pretty good ones. Okay? Uh, yesterday. With everything that was going on, I want to give a big shout out to NorCal, the godfather, uh, who uh, decided that uh, when everybody was starting to add these donations and making me cry yesterday, and I appreciate you guys for making me cry, uh, that he was just going to keep on adding T-shirts of, uh, uh, of, of uh, Fins Up NorCal. So uh, right now, this is how it's going to look, Okay. If you win first place, you're going to get a DWA swag bag. If you win second place, you're going to win a pair of DWA shorts. If you win third place, my man Cameron Scott, who is a part of East 32 Tailgates, who's also going to be a part of the show this morning, he's going to donate a hat and shirt set from East 32 Tailgates. So I am pretty stoked about that. That's going to be awesome. And then fourth, fifth, and sixth place, you are going to get a shirt from Fins Up NorCal, donated by the Godfather himself. So I am super stoked about that. It's going to be an awesome time. So let's get those donations up. Let's get those likes up. Let's do that. But that's not it. Wait, there's more, right? If you guys end up getting uh, to 100 donations instead of just 75, I'm going to up the ante big time. And how I'm going to do that? Well, I think you guys are going to like what, I, what I'm going to do. So if you guys up it, I'm going to add an autographed item of a current or former player if you guys hit 100 donations. And anybody who donates $100 or more today, today only, I will let you automatically win one of these prizes, no matter which one they are. And it's still not going to take away from the rest of the crew. So if you donate $100 or more today, you will I will let you choose whichever one you want of these prizes, excluding the autographed item, because we have to hit the 100 donations goal for that, and that will automatically go into first place. Okay? The other prize I'm also going to add if we hit 100 donations too is a DWA hoodie. 
So, guys, we got goals this morning. We got goals. We got a lot of things to work towards, and I expect your help on all of this. I'm looking for you guys to take charge, take the lead. Let's spread some kindness this morning. Let's grow this channel. There are so many cool things we want to do, and we can do it together. So donations, $5 or more, any single donation of $5 or more gets you in. 100 likes is the goal. We're at 16 right now. And if we get at least 31 more donations... Uh, we're going to be at 75 donations, and we are going to do a pretty awesome job. Remember, if we get to 100, yeah, yeah, we're going to do some big things. All right, if you guys want to know how to donate to the YouTube Live Super Chat, step one, you go down to the bottom of the live chat, you'll see a money sign there. You see where the yellow arrow is? You click that. Next thing you do is you choose either a Super Chat or a Super Sticker. You guys will choose which one you guys want. And then based on that, you guys will be able, you see this yellow circle here. Um, you guys can figure out how much you guys want to donate. And then you hit buy and send where the yellow arrow is and you are good to go. So it is going to be awesome. It's going to be a good time. Let's make it happen. Let's do it together. And um, I'm super excited. We're going to have a good time this morning. So let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it big. Okay. Need your help this morning. I'm going to keep on reminding you and I and, and all the uh, YouTube members, I need your guys' help pushing this thing this morning. We're, we're going to work as a team this morning. It is Team Spread Kindness Friday. Let's go. All right. Today's guest is going to be none other than former Miami Dolphin Julius Pruitt. I'm super excited about having him on. He's going to join us in about 10 or 15 minutes. Um I'm super excited about that. If you guys look above of today's guest, you'll uh, see my social media at Stephen D S K P L. Make sure you guys go follow me on all the social media platforms at Stephen D S K P L. All right. Without further or do, and I guess it would be or do. Let's go. What's going on? Mr. Cameron Scott is in the building. Hey, man. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Finn fam. And good morning, everybody on the Clock Lockers. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. It's uh, it's Spread Kindness Friday, baby. Spread Kindness Friday. We're uh, we're looking to hit it hard today, spreading a lot of kindness. Uh, I love the setup. I love everything you got going on. And I just want to reiterate, donating this beautiful Miami Vice, Vice color theme hat and shirt there for the prizes uh east 32 swag for you throwing that in the mix dude i love that 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 miami vice color it's so dope so exactly uh what i got on today see i was gonna wear that but i i've decided this morning i would wear my spread kindness it's contagious hey, t-shirt today uh um, we'll hit them hard both ways i know that's right baby because it's all about spreading kindness it's all about donating growing the channel and it's about hitting that like button. Guys, we're at 19 likes, 100 likes, and 31 more donations. Let's go. $5 or more single donations. Let's make it happen. And any single donation that is $100 or more, you will automatically get whatever prize you want from that list. Okay? We will make it happen. All right. Um, dude, while we're waiting, let's kind of, uh, you know, talk for a second. You know, um, these 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 Florida Marlins, they're uh, the Florida Marlins. These Miami Marlins, they're on a losing streak, man. They can't seem to like get one and win one and put it together. Um, they're not looking good right now. Yeah, listen, they're in the midst of a six uh, six in a row losing streak here. You know, we're kind of in the dregs of the season, and um, you know, it, it's been especially hurtful the last two games. Um, you know, we've taken leads into the eighth and ninth inning respectively, with uh, arguably our best best two relievers on the mound and um, <clears throat> giving up the leads and uh, giving up the game. Uh, the Pirates last night and um, the night before uh, to the Blue Jays, um, you know, they walked it off on Yimi Garcia, our closer. And, and last night's loss was especially hurtful because we finally got, you know, our fifth starter back, Alicia Hernandez, and the young guy's been working hard, you know, to get back from injury and um, was pitching lights out, gave up one run, and I think 61 pitches through 49 strikes and looked really sharp. 
Um, but because, um, you know, he had to bat, he uh, singled and then went first to third on a Starling Marte um, single. And then uh, on the next play, you know, was running home and pulled his quad, man. And um, it's just another another reason why we should have universal DHs in the Major League Baseball. I mean, 100%. Hate to see, hate to 100%. see a, kid, a kid as talented as that has worked as hard as he had to get back and, and to be performing. And then first game back, he's, he's, he's out. Yeah, man, it, it's tough. You know, when, uh, you know, COVID hit last year, and Major League Baseball was doing that, and I was like, man, I, I thought the rule was going to stick. I was very surprised that they went back to it this year, but I shouldn't be surprised by any decision that Major League Baseball makes because they don't make the smartest decision a waste. No, no, man. It's it's, <laughs> it's another another reason why, uh, you know, the, the commissioner that's there should be, uh, you know, taken care of, you know. He needs, he needs to get ejected. We need to be like, you're out of here. He needs to go. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right. All right, man. Look, I am uh, super excited uh, for this morning, man. Um, you and I are both diehard Miami Dolphin fans. Um, and, you know, I am super excited uh, about, you know, the guest that we're going to have on this morning. The guest that we're going to have on this morning, uh, you know, obviously, a former Miami Dolphin, uh, played from 2010 to 2013 uh, on the Miami Dolphins as a wide receiver slash special teams uh, specialist. Um extraordinaire and so i am super excited about having him on uh because first of all i mean anybody who put on that uniform for the miami dolphins is pretty dope um he's been in the waiting room and he keeps on butting in and out so i hope his uh internet connection is good so hopefully we'll get him back in here and we'll be good to go um julius give me the thumbs up if you're good to go man all right, all right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll get you in. We'll get you in, big guy. All right, let's get you in here. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, bring in our guest for the show this morning. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I have the one and only Mr. Julius Pruitt in the building. What's up, baby? Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How are you doing, man? It looks like you got a busy morning gone over there. You got all the kids and everything to set up. I went through yeah, your Instagram, it's still man. Yeah, time over here. It's still hey. school time. They don't, you know, the kids don't get out till June 8th, so we're still rocking and rolling on this virtual online schooling. Hey, Oof. man. Look. Hey, Woo. good morning, Julius. Good morning, Julius. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Hey, man, we're excited to have you on, man, um, for many different reasons. Number one being, you know, uh, we we always enjoy any former Miami Dolphin coming onto the show, uh, and especially one that represents, um, you know, the community so well, because I've been seeing what you, you – you just graduated, like, in the last year from uh, your alma mater, and so it looks like you're, you know, doing big things, man. Things are, are – are you excited about that? Yeah, I'm very excited because, you know, I'm coaching down here now. I'm the tight ends coach at my, you know, my university. I uh, just graduated in Walk May 8th. You know, finally got my Bachelor's of Arts in Kinesiology. You know, so, hey, yeah. man, get that degree, baby. When I left, you know, for the Dolphins in 2009, I had, uh, you know, 16 unfinished hours. So, hey, get those get those unfinished hours. I think you froze there. Did you froze? <laughs> I think you froze there for a second. All right, we'll get Julius back on here in a second. I'm, I'm not. We'll, hey, we'll, hey, Steve, tell me, tell me how many times you had to look up the pronunciation of his university. Washita, right? Washita I, University. Washita, Washita, Washita. Washita. Dude, you got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got Washita. it wrong. <laughs> Washita, big respect. Did you pledge? Yeah, I pledged. Uh, let me see my my junior. No, in 2006, I pledged Phi Beta Sigma. Okay. And I actually had to pledge across the street because we have another college across the street from us called Henderson State University. I don't even like to mention them, but <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I had to pledge <laughs> over there, and I pledged Phi Beta Sigma. My wife's an AKA, so I know all about. Uh, uh, you know, look, if I had went to college before I got hurt, I would, <laughs> I would, I would have, I would have pledged, man. That's the one thing I regret about not doing and going to school is, is having that opportunity to do that, man. So um, tell me about playing uh, at, at the at, at a Baptist university and what that was like. And you know, let's kind of start from the beginning, man. What, what was that like for you um, playing college ball? 
I mean, it was, you know, it's a small town, but I grew up in a small town population of 7,000 people. Um, my next door neighbor actually uh, was a sophomore at Washington Baptist, and that's how I first originally heard about him. And so when it came time to choosing colleges and things like that, Washington Baptist was the only uh, visit I ever took because it was one of those things where seeing my next door neighbor, you know, do such good things and hearing about the school because it's a great private, it's a great private school. Like it's mm -hmm. one of the top educations in the nation, you know, especially for a D2 university, like it's the, the education is unmatched. And, you know, and it was one of those things where, you know, it just felt like home, like being with the coaching staff, Coach Knight and Coach Derby, when they were going through the recruiting process, it was one of those things where it made me not even want to look, you know, any other college's way. And from the time I got here, I had the red shirt my freshman year. And, um, you know, then after that, like once I stepped on the field, my red shirt freshman year, like the rest kind of took care of itself. You know, you started producing, started performing. What was it? What was that difference like from high school to college? Even D2, I tell people all the time. I mean, it's a night and day difference of what you're going to see with the quality of play that's on the field and what you see from a defense. And it was because, you know, in high school, we ran a wing tee. So I wasn't necessarily a receiver. I was a, I was a wing back and I played defensive end. But uh Washington recruited me. You played play defensive college. end in high school? A, yeah, I was a defensive end and a Whoa. wing back. Yeah. <laughs> and so they recruited me to play wide receiver. You know, I was they saw something, you know, in me that they wanted to kind of, you know, experiment with in a sense. And um, you know, so once I got to Washington, I started, you know, learning the nuances of being a receiver. And so it was just something that I really enjoyed, you know, and I got the each year, you know, each each summer, each fall, I got better and better at it. And, you know, and it just, you know, went, it, it got, went, it went. Exactly. Go go ahead, uh, Cameron. You got a question? Yeah, yeah. No, man, I'm, I'm really impressed, you know, and, and I want to find out more about the experience um, at your school and then the whole process of being an undrafted free agent you know, and being looked at, um, you know, by the Dolphins and, and what that process looked at. And, and secondly, I want to ask you, um, do you have interaction with Kirk Merritt? Because I know he went uh, undrafted and he went to Arkansas State. And I don't know if you, um, you know, know who he is or had any interaction with him. Uh, like for me, like it was my junior year when the scouts started to, I guess, take notice in a sense. Whenever, uh, you know, my head coach told me, you know, you have a couple of guys in here watching your watching your game tape you know, and they want to kind of talk with you and meet with you. And one of the first guys that I even um, talked to, first scout was a uh, scout for the Dolphins, uh, Ron Brockington. Like mm -hmm. I walked into the team meeting room one day and he's in there sitting out all by himself watching, you know, game film on me. And so uh, going into my senior year, every practice you had scouts from different teams, you know, out there at practice, taking notes, watching me, you know, just watching how I practice. And things like that and um you know get invited to the uh the d2 all-star game which is the cactus bowl and you're in front of all these different you know different scouts and things but the one thing i regret about that whole process was i didn't run my 40-yard dash at the all-star game i got advised by my agent because i signed with the agent and i got advised by my agent not to run and one of the scouts from the baltimore ravens i will never forget he came up to me after everybody had finished running he was like why didn't you run I was like, I was advised by my agent not to. And he was like, so you were, you let a guy that you've known for maybe two months advise you against doing something you've probably been doing your whole life. And I'm right, a natural 4-4 four, four guy. I'm a natural 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, guy. And it's mm -hmm. one of those things where I probably, you know, I would have gotten drafted way higher because I was projected to go to fifth round, you know. So had I just got out there and just did what I've, I've been doing my whole life and just run, you know, it probably would have went an entirely, entirely different route. You know, that's interesting, Julius. You know, how many do you think a lot of uh, free agents or even, you know, college seniors going into the NFL get wrong advice? And, and how often does that happen? I think it happens a lot, you know, maybe not as much now, but I know back when, you know, in 2008, 2009, when I was getting in, I think that happened a lot. You know, they were so, agents were so in tune with finding gyms and kind of trying to keep guys a secret and not trying to get guys written off early in the process. But it's one of those things where, I mean, me doing what I've been doing was the reason I was in the position I was in the position, you know, anyway. So mm -hmm. just taking that advice and kind of, it kind of, I wouldn't say hurt me because I never regret anything that I've done because it's put me in a position where God wanted me to be ultimately, you know, and I don't, I don't have any regrets about the process. I just know it probably would have went a little different. 
you know, because you have to get in front of those hundreds of scouts and tell them the reason why you're not running. So I'm I'm right there at the starting line and say, hey, uh, my agent advised me against not running. Yeah. And then you just see him in the stands. <laughs> right, right. Right. And it's, that had to crush you. Yeah. Like deep down inside, that had to be like a, a gut wrenching. Like as soon as he said that statement, it was like, oh, my gosh, like, what did I do? What decision did I just make? Yep, and you see yourself getting written off, and it's one of those things where, you know, like I say, that probably was the reason why I wound up being an undrafted free agent, but I think I, I ended up in a position that was perfect for me with the Miami Dolphins because they still were willing to give me a chance, you know? And like you Still went to the greatest Kirk, football team. I'm yeah, the greatest football team in the world, you know? <laughs> and you mentioned uh, Kirk Merritt because I'm from uh, Newport, which is 30 minutes from Jonesboro, and that's where sure. Arkansas State is, so... I've kind of um, I hear about, you know, what the receivers from Arkansas State do. And um, it was one of those things once I seen that he signed with, the uh, you know, the Miami Dolphins. I was like, huh, somebody that's kind of close from home and like hoping yeah, yeah. that he sticks and kind of, you know, makes his way onto the roster and things like that. Yeah, I know we have high hope for him, too, as a fan base. And I, I was just curious because I knew he was from that area, even though he's a Louisiana kid, but went to school not too far from you. Yeah, not too far from me. Yeah, you know, growing up in the South, I think is a, is a, my wife's from Natchez, Mississippi, and so um, you know, growing up in the South, uh, it, I think it, it does a, sports are a whole other way of life, especially yeah. when you're young. When did yeah. you knew? When did you know? I guess as as a, it, go, let's go back in time just a little bit again. When did you know that you were a little bit better than the average player on your high school? Like I I could do this. Like there's something to this that I'm better than the average person. Well, my mom wouldn't even let me play contact sports until I was seven. I mean, until I was in seventh grade. She didn't want her baby getting I was, hurt, man. I had uh, skinny legs, as she would say, <laughs> and she never wanted me to, um, to, I guess you can say in a sense. And so uh, flag football was the only thing I would be able to play. But I would be a quarterback for my team, for pretty much every other team would want me to be quarterback for them because they would always be one less of a player. And I would six, seven touchdowns. Like it was just one of those things where – I knew I was faster than most of the kids in my grade and, you know, kind of just more athletic, I guess you can say, in a sense. And so I guess from that time on, I knew um, that if I, you know, whatever I put my mind to, I, you know, I would I would do it. And it was even my dad where I was decided because I'm really a basketball player. That's really what I wanted to do. And um, when it came time in 10th grade, I was kind of deciding which one do I really want to commit to. And my dad was like, your niche is going to be in football. Like he sat down outside with me one day and told me, he was like, your calling is going to be football. So he was like, I get it. You love basketball. I did it. But and if you want to get to, you know, where you the place that you dreamed of going, like football will be your best bet. And so Jews, how old were you when he had that talk with you? Yeah. So that's really when it clicked for me, like right around in 10th grade. So I really tried to kind of put my focus into into football in a sense. But it was like I say, it was kind of hard because I was a wingback and a defensive end and, and you know, and only one football to go around. And here all we did was run the ball, you know, and the running backs got most of the glory here in Newport. And so, like I say, it's just my opportunity really came when I got to Washington Baptist, when I really – you know, finally got to get out there, you know, and saw that I was one of the better athletes in my conference, you know, in, in, on the college level, I guess you can say in a sense. All right, guys, look, I just want to remind everybody today is hashtag spread kindness Fridays. Uh, Ju Julius, we try to spread kindness around here on Fridays. We do it in the forms of many different things. Today, what we're doing is uh, we're taking uh, single donations of $5 or more from the people. And if they mm -hmm. do, uh, we, we originally had a goal of 25 they got 44, so now the goal is 75 uh, to get by the end of the day. Uh, but I love doing it because I, I think that at the end of the day, there's so much um, division and negativity into this world. And so when you start seeing people do stuff for others and be positive, um, I always think, you know, things end up happening for the better and, and, and end up being. What was that like, you know, you know, growing up in the South or going, going to college or, heck, even being – you know, undrafted, the negativity you might have encountered at all and how you overcame that? I overcame a lot you know, because, you know, in high school, like I kind of got, you know, picked on early on, like being, you know, especially like in a small city, like if you're one of the smarter guys, like I guess you could say like grade wise in a sense, you know, you get picked on by certain individuals like ah, he's he studies or, you know, like he's he's smart. He thinks he's better than this and this and this. 
So you start falling into that crowd where you just, you know, you just kind of want to fit in. You don't want to get looked at in a certain, you know, in a certain light, especially if your family is um, like, you know, like in a certain area and you kind of have to see these individuals outside of school. Mm -hmm. So you really don't want to, you know, you don't want problems outside of school and at home. So it's one of those things where you start falling into a, a you didn't want to get in trouble. You didn't whatnot. want to get in trouble and, with your um, mom either. You know, but for me, I was a quiet kid. I like to sleep. Julius froze up on us again. That's all right. We'll get him back on. Guys, uh, while we're waiting for Julius to unfreeze and get back on, I want to remind everybody. Even here in Washita, like it's a it's a Baptist university. You, you froze there at the end. I don't know if you still hear us or not, Julius, but um, uh, I think you froze up on us again, me. Cam. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can hear you now. <laughs> it's it's that internet connection down south. You guys got you, – you, you're going to have to put your hand out with the satellite dish so that way you get better <laughs> with the, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now? Good. Yeah, I can hear you now. But like I was saying, uh, like here at Washington Baptist, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a Baptist university. And it's the place that I found, you know, my spiritual, my spiritual self. And I got close to, um, you know, close to God. I got baptized when I was here in college and things like that. It's just a different atmosphere. It was an atmosphere. Exactly. You know, it was just one of those things where I grew as a person, you know, the second I got from got here to Washington Baptist, you know, it was totally different from where I grew up. And then just the just the individuals around you, you know, a lot of times your environment shapes ultimately who you're going to be. And I guess just being around here, having to go to chapel and things like that every Tuesday and just always around the word, always around positive people. And even my coach, my head coach, coach Todd Knight, he's very much like that. So they instilled a lot of that, you know, that spirituality in us. And so it was one of those things where just as a person, as a man, like I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for that experience because it helped me grow, you know, especially now as a father, as a husband, you know, like those those memories and experiences, like they're unmatched, man. What what is it? Um, you know, look, college can be very tempting, and and life, especially when you get that first NFL paycheck, can also be very tempting. Um, you know, look, I ain't got to tell you. I'm sure that you know what you know. Having the background and the foundation that you built in college, especially with you know having uh, a background that's so centered and close to God. What was it like trying to encounter a maneuver through those things as a rookie in the NFL, as, you know, a star player of his of his college football team? You know, I'm, I'm sure you encountered a lot of opportunities to make the wrong decision. So, you know, how did you battle those? Yeah, but like I like those opportunities, like didn't come from my from Washington. Like it was mainly from back home. Like, you know, the second year you sign a contract, like everybody thinks you're a millionaire. And that's the sad thing about it. You know, I'm an undrafted free agent. You know, I'm starting off on practice squad. I'm just trying to, you know, first time I'm having even that amount of money. But at the same time, I'm not rich. You know, you're not rich. You know, until you get into that second contract, you're, that's when you're well off. And it's just one of those things where you have the the distant cousins and, and everybody's like coming to you asking, you know, to pay this, to pay this, to get this. Hey, man, let me hold something. Yeah, let, and exactly. And it's one of those things where, you know, especially me, it's just one of those things where I didn't want to forget, you know, kind of where I came from. But that was kind of the mistake that I did make, you know, is trying to make everybody happy by by giving. And the second you would say no, everything that you have done for them, like goes out the window. Goes out the so, window. Yeah. So that was like the biggest thing for me is like kind of getting past that, trying to stop being so generous when money shouldn't, you know, I was always generous. Like just me being me. But at the same time, I felt like I had to kind of win over and kind of keep a lot of that negativity away by by just giving, you know, man. Look, it, it's 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 so interesting that, you know, um, it doesn't matter how big you are, how famous you are, how, you know, whatever it is that you do when you all of a sudden there's a little bit of opportunity for you to gain any uh, advantage with somebody that you might know. I think the funny thing is that you'll find out is you find out who your real friends are and who your real friends aren't. So I'm sure that you found that out very, very quickly. Um, let's kind of get into being a rookie in the NFL. So so you get undrafted by the Miami Dolphins. Let's come at it from a personal standpoint first before we get into the football side of things. Who were some of your close people that rookie year for you that you knew that could keep you centered and grounded and down to earth? Joy Porter. 
Um, because like he, he's a five beta sigma. Yeah, he's a five beta sigma, and he has a cousin that went to Washita Baptist name, uh, Mr. Ken Calvin. And so uh, once Ken had found out that I was, you know, I had signed with the Dolphins, he put me in touch with Joy. So once I first got to Miami, like, you know, Joy was one of the first ones to kind of take me in. Like, you know, he invited because I got there September 7th, um, you know, and so kind of bringing me over to his house. And, you know, my first Thanksgiving dinner over there was at his house amongst him and his family, you know, and it was one of those things I think that kept the older guys off of me. In a hmm. sense, like I didn't go through a lot they of they were messing reasons. with Joey Porter, bro. They exactly. didn't want that smoke. <laughs> exactly. So I didn't have to go through a lot of the rookie hazing, the haircuts, and things like that. Because I guess once I got in, they saw that I was with, you know, with Big Dog, with JP. That's you awesome, know? man. But yeah, wow. but he was he was one of the first ones. So uh, you know, what was that first day? So uh, you saw how did how did the contract? So you get undrafted. How did the opportunity come about with Miami? Like, what was the phone call like? What was the process like? Um, tell me th- about that little experience. Okay. Uh, so the scout that I told you about that was there, the first one that was watching my film, Ron Brockinson, he called me after the draft and was asking me, had I had I signed with anybody? And I was like, not yet. And so he was like, I'm going to call you back. And so I'm sitting around waiting for the call. And then he calls me the next day when I was in class. I stepped out of uh, I stepped out of class because I was still here in Washington. I stepped out of class and pick up the phone. And he was like, "I'm sorry, Julius, but we've decided to sign Brock Marion. We signed another oh. wide receiver." Oh. So I'm like, you know, like I appreciate that. So it's just kind of like from from there, I'm like, I don't I don't know what you know what I'm gonna do. So I finished the day of class and I headed home to Newport and kind of just sitting around like you know and on my mom's couch and just kind of like wondering like was that was that it and so it was just one of those things where i just started i just started uh i got up i started jogging everywhere around town i would if i needed to go to the, to the gym I, I ran i ran to the gym if i needed to go to the store i ran to the store like it was just one of those things where i always had to be out the house and on the move and so um you know i'm keeping tabs on the dolphins and what they're doing during training camp and things like that and so eventually, September 7th, Coach, I mean, Mr. Brian Gain, the um, director of uh, player development, he called me and was like, uh, Julius, we're going to offer you a position on practice squad. So no training camp, no no mini camps, none of that. Wow. Right when it was time for after they had set the 53 and they was finalizing the, the eight um, guys on practice squad, they offered me a position on practice squad. So I got there right when we were getting ready to start for the season. So, so you didn't play. That's that's actually really interesting because you know, um, obviously, being fans of of the Dolphins for so many years, and a lot of us in the chat room uh, are, you know, we see the preseason games, we see the players. So that means there were some players in that 2010 season, and and just in general, not e- not even with the Dolphins, but all these other players that that had an opportunity to showcase themselves that they still wanted you over players that showcased themselves in the preseason. Yeah. That didn't make it. That didn't that's, make it. That's a big deal. That says a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I was grateful for it. Like, you know, like it was it was one of those things where it was surprising, but at the same at the same time, like I knew it was for me. Like it was for me. And I, I'm like I'm forever grateful for the Dolphins for giving me that shot, you know, because from the day I walked in that building, you know, it was hard for them to kind of get me out. Even though I got cut, you know, every now and again, but at the same time they kept me around for you know, they always for the kept duration you close of my by. career. Yeah, they always, they always kept, kept me close, close by. by. I always kept me close by. Yeah. Hey, Julius, we got a, we got a question in the chat room from one of our longtime members, D Dub. He wants to know um, how did you settle on number eleven? I couldn't hear you. How did you settle on number eleven? Number eleven. He frees up. He froze up. He froze up again. <laughs> Man, what an interesting story about, uh, you know, coming on without, you know, a mini camp or a training camp. I know. I, I The Joey Porter story for me, too, has been so good. Guys, while we're waiting for uh, Julius to uh, sign back in and get back on, uh, on the air here, uh, I want you guys to remember, hit that like button. The goal is 100 likes. We're at 27 likes and 31 more donations gets us to 75 single donations. And if we do that, we're going to add more stuff to the donation uh, or the to the prize giveaway. Um, and we're already set up right now. So make sure you guys go check that out. 
Uh, one and and we're gonna make I'm that sorry happen. We got got cut out. What was the question again? Hey, huh? no, no worries, man. Glad to have you back. Um, <laughs> one of our chat room regulars uh, wants to know: Are you there? He froze up again. <laughs> the yeah, power of now. radio. It's all good. It's all <laughs> it's good. All bro. good, man. Hey, Julius. Uh, one of our chat room regulars wants to know: How did you settle on number eleven? That was a number that they issued me. Like when I got there, they were like, it, it belonged to uh, AA, who was Anthony Armstrong. And it was like, it's a good number. And yeah. usually the guy that's in his number, you know, does, you know, does big things. So that was a number that they gave me. And I wasn't going to argue with them, you know. Yeah, you're just happy to have a number, right? I was just happy to have a number. <laughs> you wanted to put me in, in, in 37. It didn't matter. It didn't matter at that point. Just give me a number and give me a place to play and I'll be good. I'm ready and to I'll go. I'll be good. Yep. <laughs> um, all right, so so let me ask, man, who was um who was the quarterback? Who were some of those players that rookie year that you got to like practice with on a day in day out basis, um, uh, and, and that kind of made a big influence for you too? Uh, Chad Pennington. He was the he was actually the first guy that I spoke to whenever I got to my locker, like because my locker was right in between him and Jason Taylor. Oh, so when I was yeah, I mean that's oh, cool. the perfect spot to be, perfect spot to be. And so uh, actually my first day, like kind of in the building, in the locker room, whenever I was, you know, getting settled in, he came in and kind of, you know, asked me where I was from and, um, you know, things like that. And so got to chat with him a little bit. But um, it was Chad Pennington, uh, Chad Henney. Oh, hmm. oh man, it was getting good. Right. And Chad, Hen Chad Henney's still in the lead, man. I know Chad that's Pennington. Chad Pennington, Chad Henney, who else? You 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 cut out there at the I end. I think it was Tyler Thigpen. I'm not for sure on that. I think Tyler Post Coastal Carolina. In. Yeah, yeah. I think he was there my rookie year too, or it might have been the following year. Lefty. Who are some of the other wide receivers in the wide receiver room and, and who was your wide receivers coach then too? Yeah. Uh coach uh Coach Carl Durell. We had Devon. Um let me see, it was Devon Tay again. And then uh, Brian Hartline, Devon Tegan, Brian Hartline. Let me see. It was me. I'm trying to think who were the others at that time. I just know those were the big three: Tegan, Brian, and Devon. Dude, I mean, you're you're drop you're doing some name dropping here. So when you when you get into a wide when you get into an offensive meeting room, and Chad Pennington's there, right? And you know, Ted Ginn, you know, was a was a top top 10 pick, you know, you, you knew you what, like, what was it like kind of be like, did you feel like you belong there? Like, did you know this is where you like, cause sometimes the moment can get a little overwhelming. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, just how did you feel sitting in those meetings for the first few days before it kind of settled in? It was actually, it was actually common, like, because the guys were like, you know, they welcomed me with open arms. Like it wasn't one of those guys like, oh, we are about to get him out of here or, you know, anything like that. But it was just one of those things where I felt I belong, you know, like I it was I was I wasn't I, won't, I don't want to say comfortable, but I was comfortable in that element, you know. Oh, I definitely, definitely do. I'm trying to see who was the head coach there at that time. Coach Spell, Spirano, Spirano, right? Coach Spirano. Tell me about rest him, you know, peace. rest in peace. Yeah. But what was what was Coach Spo like and, and how was he as a because I I've never really heard anything bad about him from players players seem to love him and gravitate towards him he, i mean like i love coach Sprano. like you forever grateful because he was you know a part of the reason why they gave me a shot and it was one of those things where he was always encouraging you know each week like he would always like uh when we're doing wide receiver drills during warm-up he would always pass by it was like stay ready like stay ready prove it like stay ready you know just one of those things where because each week you know, especially as a practice squad guy, you never know. Maybe one of the starter starting wide receivers may get hurt or things like that. But he always wanted to make sure that I was ready, like stay into it, get better, like, you know, just stay ready. And he also wanted me to make sure that I was giving the, you know, the first team cornerbacks like, you know, that work, make sure that I was always keeping them on their toes, you know, just doing my job as a practice squad player at the time, you know. But Coach Sperano, man, like he was, was – he was awesome. Like the players bought into him, like feeding the wolf. Like, you know, like he was, he was an awesome coach and I really, really enjoyed playing with him and the rest of his staff. What I'm hearing from you is that the the locker room had a good, 
like there was, there was positivity. It was a good locker room, and yeah. and it wasn't a bad one because as Dolphin fans, we've heard horror stories about some locker rooms and how how some of the atmosphere was in the, those too. And so you played for a couple of different head coaches during your tenure off and on with the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about going into your second year. What was your second year like? And and how were you? Did you did were you told, hey, you're coming in, you're gonna you're going to play in the preseason, you know, what was the deal for you in knowing going into that second year? In the second year, you know, that's when I finally got my first preseason taste. And it was also one of those things where I was always told to stay close to Coach Rizzi, the special teams coach. Darren Rizzi, baby. Yeah, you know, so it was one of those things. Uh, I got I to gotta, I gotta stop you. Where, uh-huh. How is he, man? Because, whoo, that man had a personality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, you keep freezing. <laughs> you get, you keep freezing at the good part too. Um, uh, so how was Rizzy, man? Because I've heard nothing but good things about him and his personality. Energy, 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 energy. Like Coach Rizzy, Coach Rizzy, man. Like he's he's one of my favorite coaches all time. Like just from just the See? standpoint of of like always straightforward. Because you know he was always the coach to tell you he was like. When you're when you're doing bad in your position group or, you know, like you're supposed to like this is how you make the team. And that's that's the way he used to tell us like this is if you're on the verge of the roster, this is how you make the team. So if you can't play special teams, you're probably not going to make it in the National Football League, yet alone the Miami Dolphins. Like you get me. And so it was one of those things where he kind of grew fond of me because the way I guess the way that I worked in practice, you know, and I used to always give the guys, you know, the look on special teams and practice and things like that. So. You know, when it came to, you know, my time to actually get in there as a gunner or, you know, getting down there on kickoff, he put me in a, you know, in a position for me to excel, you know, and it was one of those things where I try not to, I try not to, you know, not take advantage of that opportunity. So it was one of those things where, you know, my time on special team was, was amazing because I felt like, you know, that was my niche and that was kind of the, one of the things that, you know, that kept me around with the Miami Dolphins. D Dub, uh, one of our longtime listeners, asked Julius, "Did you play special teams before signing with the Fins? And what was your first NFL tackle experience like?" Shout out to D Dub, who's a YouTube member. D Dub, well, I played. Uh, I was a kick returner and a punt returner here at Washington Baptist. But uh, after my sophomore year, my coach took me off of uh, special teams because I would never fair catch on punt return, and so guys would always try to, uh, you know, take their <laughs> shot at me. And it just one of those things where he thought that I would end up getting hurt eventually. So, um, and, you know, so I really never uh, had to play kickoff return or, or a play gun or anything. My first time doing that was with the Miami Dolphins. And my first tackle was against uh, the Buffalo, was it the, the Buffalo Bills? It was the first tackle was against the Buffalo Bills. And it was one of those things where it was a snow game. And um, I uh, split the I split the double team back there on kickoff and kind of um, had a solo tackle. Like, I think I got the guy right at the nine or the ten. But that first that first tackle is is you know it's amazing, you know, amazing feeling. Pretty uh, pretty redeeming for all that hard work you put in, right? Yes, yes, very much so, very much so. You know, because even my first game against the Kansas City Chiefs, what week seven or week eight of 2011, like you know, I was hoping to get my first tackle, my first active game, but I didn't get it until the following week. Um. Do you, uh, you are you familiar with the Miami Dolphins fan base and how they have different fan clubs across the world and stuff like that? A little bit, a little bit. All right, so Wayne is the president of uh, Fins Nation UK over in over in uh, uh, the UK. Um, Wayne uh, is a cancer survivor, and uh, he's he's a big guy. And and uh, uh, th- 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 see, went away for a minute. All right, we'll we'll get him back. Up. I'll get your question in, Wayne. Don't you worry about it, big guy. Um, Glad to see Wayne on the show today. Yeah, man. Shout out to Wayne, everybody from Dolphins Nation. Shout out to all our, uh, you know, United Kingdom uh, fan club, man. Those guys just bring it. I know he said there was 1,600 of them in there. Wayne, tell all 1,600 to get on this thing, man. We'll get to 100 likes easily. Tell them let's (laughs) go. Let's go. All right, let me uh, change screens here while we get uh, Julius back on. Um, And we'll do it that way. And here, there we go. We'll do it like that. Uh, all right. You know what? 
yeah, let me let me bring Julius in. Let me bring Julius back in. You there, big guy? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> there he is. Yes. Yeah, after that. this, after this conversation, your next call needs to be to your internet guys. Be like, look, man, I was trying to do a show with the number one Miami fan morning show, and you know it couldn't. You, you guys are killing me. That's what you. I don't. I don't want to say. I don't want to mention the name, but suddenly, yeah, they're killing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I All saw right. the question. The question was, who was the best DB that I faced? Yeah. From uh, Wayne over in Finns Nation, UK. Was it just from the Dolphins or just a cornerback in general? Anywhere. I would say Vontae and Sean. Vontae, Vontae Davis and Sean Smith. You know, like just going against them every day, you know, from practice squad. Like, you know, both of them are different. Vontae is more of a twitchy kind of natural athlete. And then Sean Smith is just so tall and, you know, he's long. So just getting those different looks from those two guys like every day in practice, like it only made me better as a wide receiver. But, you know, like then in preseason, like there was never any guy that was better than our cornerbacks on the team. Like, you know, like I like so I felt like I got my best work there in practice with Miami. Uh, uh, Cam, you have another question? Yeah, yeah, man. I, I want to go back to uh, the team environment, man, because on that 2010 team, you had some personalities on that team. Uh, Richie yeah. Incognito and and Channing Crowder. I mean, how was it like, you know, being in the locker room with those two guys? It was actually funny because the first day that I walked on practice, uh, you know, on that, my first practice, like Channing, I heard Channing Crowder say, number 11 is not going to make it through period 12 because I wore <laughs> long sleeves my first day. And it was so, you know, it was, it was hot, mm-hmm. you know, and I heard them, you know, then the rest of the defensive guys, they started placing a wager. Like if I would pass out or call it quits, because I guess they've had practice squad guys in the past that wouldn't make it through the entire practice. And so it was one of those things where they had kind of like a bounty on my head saying that I wouldn't make it through, you know, 12 periods. And it was just one of those things after hearing that the second I walk on field for stretch, it was like, nah, y'all just y'all don't y'all don't understand. Like I'm from I'm from Arkansas. Like I'm, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm here. Like, you know, I'm here to stay. Oh, uh, you know, he's a Gator, so I'm sure he knew you were from Arkansas, and he wasn't liking it too much, probably. <laughs> yeah, but, nah, but even that, like, they were characters, but they were always, like, they were they were good dudes. Like, you know, like, every interaction that I've had with them, like, it was always, it was, always, it was fun and games. And that's pretty much the vibe of the entire team, like, from the time I was being there. Like, you know, of course, you know, practice is all work, but in the locker room, like, it's still very... It's still very fun in games. Like, you know, you have all these guys from different backgrounds, from different parts of the of the United States and things like that. And, you know, you just kind of want to get to know certain guys. You know, why is this guy so quiet? Because I was quiet. I didn't talk mm-hmm. a lot. I just went about my business and trying to, you know, just make sure that I was doing the things that I needed to do to stay. You know, so, so I guess. Even, you know, I want to touch on another player that you shared, you know, I think the wide receiver room with, and that's Brandon Marshall. And, and Stephen had an episode this week, and, and we talked about mental health, you know, and, and awareness. And I know uh, Brandon's got a big foundation, and, and he's a big proponent of mental health, and especially with pro sports. How was it like uh, getting to know him and working with him daily? I enjoy watching the way Brandon Marshall worked on the football field. You know, it's just unfortunate. Like, you know, I tell this story a lot, you know, to, uh, you know, some of my players here coaching and things like that. It's just you always want to have, you know, a positive, a positive group, you know, like you don't want anybody in your in your position group to be that one person that brings the rest of the guys down. And, you know, like I don't want to don't really want to throw, you know, salt. But it was just like the only bad memory that I do have was you know, kind of one of our days inside a wide receiver, you know, meeting room. And that was with Brandon Marshall and his interaction with one of our coaches, you know, and it's just one of those things where just as a young guy, it's like, I know, you know, it's certain ways that you're supposed to talk to, you know, your coaches and things like that. And it's just the way that he went about it that particular day wasn't, it just, it wasn't right, you know, and it's one of those things where it made me see him in a different, in a different light. Like, you know, if that makes any sense, you know, it does. It does. Sure, um, I wasn't I, aware of I wasn't aware of that. And I, I wasn't asking the question to bring that out. But, yeah, you know, but we're all here human, and we're yeah. all make mistakes and evolve, you know, and try to be better every day. And we, you know, we hope Brandon's doing that same thing, you know. Yeah. You know, it, it, you you bring up a very good point. I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that story up. You know, so um, I, I uh, struggle with severe anxiety and severe depression. And so I recently heard. uh 
um, Brandon Mitchell was on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s podcast. And uh, I don't know if you ever, if you got a chance to listen to that, if you listen to podcasts or anything like that, but it's a really good podcast because he talked about, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, personality disorders and understanding, you know, how to correctly deal with certain situations uh, and not. And so <clears throat> he, I, maybe you guys are talking about the same situation because he specifically talked about <laughs> his time in Miami and how he blew up at a coach and it was like, you know, like that was when he kind of knew why is something happening to me? Like, why am I always finding myself in these situations? And um, he said, you know, look, he, he'll he be the first one to say his time in Miami was one of the worst times of his life. But he will also be the first to say that it also made him do a reality check of say, there is something wrong here that I am not able to control and I need to find the answers to go do it. How many times did you guys, did you, Maybe in your playing career, especially now in your coaching career, having kids, do you do you talk about, you know, um, depression or anxiety and, um, you know, dealing with, you know, stress in a positive way compared to a negative way? Looking at the Naomi Osaka ordeal over in, in, in France, I mean, that whole situation, it, it's an athlete's thing that they have to deal with. And so you look at somebody like Chad Ochocinco or... Um, Brandon Marshall, or I, all these guys will be the first to tell you, hey, I have, you know, behavioral, you know, disorders now, but they didn't know what to call it then. And they didn't know yeah. how to react. Like they thought that's who they were. That was just part of their makeup. Well, I mean, I know that's a lot to ask one question, but what are your thoughts on no. that? No, and, and it's one of those things where even after that, like, um, you know, Brandon, he has started bringing a lot of books, like he started reading. And I think it was one of those things where like his um, like just seeing him, like seeing the change after that, like, you know, was positive. Like, you know, Brandon, he still he led prayers like it was one of those things where he he grew from that moment, you know, and we all struggle with it. Because even my time out, you know, my transition from the NFL, like I dealt with it. I dealt with anxiety, depression, you know, stress, especially, you know, trying to raise a family, you know, and um, also just trying to find my niche outside of football and things like that. Like, I think as NFL players, like we all go through those kind of dark times in a sense. And it's one of those things where if you don't get a if you don't gain a grasp of, of some sort of control or find some other coping mechanism, whether it's reading, whether it's bike riding, whether it's exercise, whatever, whatever the case may be for that specific individual, if you don't find some type of other alternative, like it can be it can be hard. It can be extremely stressful. Like, you know, and it can keep you down in a dark place, but it's also having the individuals in your life. Like for me, it was my wife. You know, my wife pushes me to be my best self, you know, on a daily basis. And then seeing my four kids run around and just, um, you know, them seeing me go through schooling or, you know, even now as a coach and things like that, just I just want them to see the best version of me. And, you know, that was enough for me. That was my way of kind of getting out of that dark place was just waking up to my wife and my kids every morning and just wanting them to see the best version of me and me myself just wanting to see how how good can I be as a person you know and it's just one of those things where everybody's different everybody deals with adversity everybody deals with stress and anxiety like in different ways and it's just as you as a person is just finding that way you know just finding that that coping just finding that positive finding that light and being able to deal with your you know with your situation Guys, we're at 30 likes. We want to get to 100 likes. Julius, tell them to go hit the like button. Tell them they hit need the to like go hit the like button, man. This is Cock Blockers. Never stop snoozing with Stephen D. You know, like this is <laughs> Dolphin Fan Chat. Like, you know, Mr. Cameron, you know, what, what, what else do we have to do? Love it, love hey, it, man. Bro, hey. You just made my day. That's all I'm going to say. You just made <laughs> my day. That's all I'm going to say. I like it. I like it, man. Go ahead, Cam. Hey, Julius, I, I got a question uh, from Fantasy Fan Panel uh, One in the comment box here. Um, are you involved in uh, Stephen Ross's um, rides program? And um, you know, what do you think of the what he's doing for you know that uh, that program in the league? I'm not personally involved in it, but I keep up with it, and I've seen you know like the positive you know things that you know that program has done. You know, for me, like with uh, a lot of things, like I used to do the uh, like help with the dolphin food relief. Like, you know, I used to go out with other fellow alumni and we used to distribute meals at the stadium, you know, to the community of South Florida and, um, you know, participate in the Dolphins Cancer Challenge, you know, the bike ride and things like that. Those were the things that I was personally involved in. And Mr. Ross was, you know, very, 
that, those were his, you know, his projects, his things and like that. And the, those were the things that I was directly involved in. So your your experience overall with Stephen Ross is he was always doing stuff in and out of the community. And, and um, did you ever have a personal experience with Ross or did you have a personal relationship with them? Or if you didn't, like, what was your encounters with him anytime you did interact with him? Actually, like, no, only interaction would be, like, out and about, like, you know, if it was a team event and things like that, just, you know, in passing, in a sense. But, no, I didn't have a personal relationship with him other than, you know, his name at the bottom of my checks whenever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, by the way, so just to clarify something, from your knowledge and your point of view, Stephen Ross didn't make any decisions that had to do with anything on field like a uh, owner that's in Dallas usually does, correct? You're setting him up, man. From any of my knowledge, I don't, I don't think – I think he put the – you know, he delegated. He put the people – he put the people in position that he wanted to make those decisions. So I don't think he had any hands on, you know, say so like mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Like the, the other guy in Dallas, that gentleman, that yeah. gentleman the in gentleman. Dallas. Yeah. The gentleman. <laughs> yeah, that um, look, I want to go through some of these photos that I have and then kind of go back to the dolphins for a little bit real quick. But uh, what do you think of that? That was, that was one of my better preseason games. That was actually the game. I tore a ligament in my toe. Ah, oh, you had six catches in that game. Yeah, right? like 56 yeah, six yards. catches. I, yeah, that's the game I tore a ligament in my toe. And that was when they brought me back for the 2013 season. Um, you know, after I played in the Hall of Fame game, and they were kind of giving me another shot, you know, to kind of, you know, stick on the roster. But I pulled a groin in the opening kickoff of the uh, Hall of Fame game. But that was against the Texans, I believe. And, you know, still trying to fight through that, you know, to stick around. But, you know, it didn't work out. <laughs> That's me and B. Marsh going through the uh, uh, ball security drill. And that was just him telling me, you know, trying to make me fumble so I can get yelled at it by Coach Carter. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was one of the, let me see, I think that was one of the times we were in the stadium actually for like a scrimmage or whatnot, you know, just trying to um, kind of focus on the ball, like working on my catching because I had been, you know, talking with Devon and things like that on certain things that I can do to get better as a pass catcher and just trying to, you know, frame it, extend it, you know, and get better as a pass catcher. And that was a special teams drill. Like it was one of those things where I actually kept that guy from getting downfield. It might look like he slipped by me, but I kept him from he getting didn't. downfield. Yeah. We know what the deal was. I, I, yeah. look, I, know. I, locked, I locked him down. I forgot. I don't know who 48 is at the time, but yeah, I locked him down. <laughs> And that was getting ready for a preseason game right there. That's one of my favorite pitches right there. Dude, that uniform, I still – it's my favorite uniform. I don't care yeah, mine too. Mine too. Hey, uh, hey, Julius, you know, um, going through these pictures, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome to see in your time with the Dolphins. Um, you know, I got a question here. Talk about your experience with the Rattlers. So, like, how, how was that? Oh, I actually, I spent, that was the last time that I tried to give football a go. Um, I spent training camp with the Arizona Rattlers in um, 2013 after the my uh, last stint with the Dolphins or whatnot. I'm just going to give it a try. But that was also the time where, you know, me and my wife, we had just got engaged and, you know, we were expecting our second. And um, it's just once I got down there and went through training camp and things, you know, just kind of, I just knew, realized like I, I needed to be back, you know, I want to be back where, where where home is, you know, heart, you know, your heart is where your home, you know, home is where your heart is. And it's just, I want to be back with my wife and kind of. You didn't of, want to be no Rolling Stone. You didn't want yeah, to lay your head. Exactly. I, I, I didn't want to, I did, yeah, I didn't want to keep on pushing. Lay your head somewhere that wasn't, no, I got you. I got you. And then, and then look at that, this. Uh, that's, that's a beautiful, man, that's the best that's picture out of all of them right there, yeah, man. Yeah, that's, you know, especially my having my kids there and them understanding and seeing the work that I put in, you know, through school and finishing up, man, because it took it took 11 years for me to finally get to that moment. And that moment was very special. 16 very, very special. hours in 11 years. Come on, Julius. <laughs> hey, man, look, hey, we, we got all, everything. Hey, but the part part of the reason was because like I had to take some of those hours on campus and it was like, how do I get on campus while I'm here raising my family in Miami? And so Washita, um, luckily they started an online, you know, online thing where my my available, my the credits that I needed, I was able to take them online. So I was able to actually wow. finish in Miami. Which so did made you do it, that because of COVID? 
Not, I mean, well, they had started the program before COVID, but okay. since COVID, it it just worked out. It worked out best, you know. So I was able to finish that up, you know, online back at home in Miami, and then you know, then I got the coaching opportunity, and I was here by the time you know it was for me to um, walk and actually graduate. So where are you living at now? I'm in Arkansas, Arkansas. Okay, all right, but you were yeah. in Miami for a while. Yeah, I was in Miami for a while because it's actually we've only been here for four months. Okay, all right. Yeah, you we've only been here in Arkansas. You like being back months. in Arkansas? I do. It's it's country, you know. I miss the country. I miss <laughs> having all my seasons, yeah. you know. <laughs> but see, <laughs> I love it. I love it, hey, man. Hey, hey Julius, I, I I live right down the street from the uh, team hotel here in Plantation, and it's not country. I tell you that. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. And it's one of those things where, like, you know, in December when it's time, you know, you, you putting the kids in the car, you know, you got to wear double the T-shirts because, you know, you're sweating it out, putting them in the car in December. But here, you know, it's you get the snow, you know, get everything like that. And plus, my kids, they they like the they like the the country feel, especially my wife. They like the, you know, the small time feel. How old are your like kids, that. man? Uh, eight, seven, four and three. Oh, that's what a blessing, man. Rough. In fact, uh it's funny, my, I got a 10 year old and she's about to graduate uh, in about 10 minutes and I get to watch it on Teams. I can't, be there, I can't be there in person because of COVID. Because of COVID, yeah. It's crazy, hey, man. man I, I have, I have a, uh, a five year old and a seven year old. Five and seven. And so having having young babies uh, like you have, like what are, what are some of the obstacles as a parent, um, you know, especially through this COVID? And mess? a coach. It's yeah. just, you know, it's just kind of, you know, just being understanding, like trying to have even more patience because, you know, it's more time in the house. You know, they're not you don't get that that time. of You know, I don't want to say time away, but they're not in school. So they're constantly here and it's always finding something for them to do. And then it's, it's just trying to, you know, find a balance, especially with me and my wife. Like she handles a lot of the schooling. You know, she handles the meals when I'm, you know, coaching at the facility and things like that. It's just having that balance. But me and her, we, we, we're such a great team. And it, it just, it's a blessing because it's it's been working, you know, and that was one of the reasons why I was able to come over here and take this opportunity as a coach because my wife makes it so easy for me to do that. She sound like she she she's a good woman, man. You, p- you picked the right one. You did good. Yes, I definitely did. She's a rock star, man. She's a rock star. All right. Uh, I want to remind everybody, uh, this is Spread Kindness Fridays. Any single donation of $5 or more gets you automatically answer to win some DWA swag. Some doll fans with attitude. Uh, enter as many times as you want. The original single donation goal was 25 As of the start of this video, we're at 44 So let's keep it going. Let's hit those donations. Let's help this channel grow. The only way we can get amazing people uh, uh, to have amazing uh, guests like Julius uh, and we had Richmond Webb on. We're going to have Richmond Webb on on Wednesday. Um, Richmond's a great guy. Have you been ever been able to sit and talk with him? I haven't. I haven't. But I've heard I, I've heard amazing things about him. I've heard amazing things about him. You ever want to meet like the most kindest, you know, individual, uh, the gentle giant? Richmond Webb is that guy. Like he is he's hands down one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, speaking of spread kindness, man, tell me about. You know, one of the first things that you were able to do, um, I guess, when you got your first paycheck that that you did and then uh, to, to do an act of kindness, maybe for somebody that that did a lot for you, maybe growing up. And then the second thing is without money, what is an act of kindness that you try to do on a, on a week in week out basis for somebody? The first thing that I, I did was uh, I tried to start a uh, like an annual thing back home in Newport. It was called. Uh, it was like a praise at the park. So it was one of those things where I tried to have a barbecue at uh, one of our local parks and have like a local pastor come out, you know, and uh, him and his choir would do, you know, some music and things like that and just try to feed the community and things like that. That was like actually like one of the first things that I tried to do, you know, with a little bit of money that I had. And then even now, um, like my kindness is just uh, I try to instill something positive in my players and my kids, you know, each day. Like it's one of those things, something that they can use and kind of take throughout the day and um, just, you know, just try to be their best self, just like my wife does with me every day. Just wants me to wake up and kind of be the best, best Julius that I can be, you know. So, uh, you know, we I try to live by that mantra of spread kindness no matter every day, you know, coaching college football players. 
especially in the world that we live in today, I'm sure even on, on a campus, on a private school such as yours, yeah. I'm sure you encounter, I mean, we can't get away from it, the world as it is. So, I mean, have you run into situations where you have, and I know you're kind of new to the coaching thing from the aspect, but I'm sure you have a development of a relationship with some of these guys that you've been able to like have some real in-depth conversations with them. And it makes you like, Holy cow. I never had to deal with this when I was a player. And this is a totally different perspective that these kids have to deal with that. I never had to deal with when it, like social media wasn't that big. It was just becoming a big thing when you were playing, you know, but it's one of those things where I think our head coach like does a great job of, of the guys that he recruits now, like, because, you know, since they're winning, they don't necessarily have to, take chances on certain individuals that they that that might kind of you know steer the wrong way or follow the wrong crowd but it's just i've been fortunate to have a great group of tight ends and like just sitting down talking to them and gaining you know having that personal relationship with them now it's like they're they're positive you know they only want what's best for themselves like they kind of know what they want already and they kind of know the things that will derail that and and they they stay they do a good job of staying away from those things so they're always, you know, in the facility doing extra work, you know, trying to call me, having me come in the weight room with them. Let's go watch fam. Like it's guys that just really just want to do the right thing. And like, man, it's it's an amazing thing to see, especially with, like you say, the day and age that we're living in now. Like it's an amazing thing. It's a it's an amazing thing to see because these guys won't want nothing but positivity in their life. And they're trying to do the best things that they can on a daily basis to kind of, you know, reach those goals. Uh, Cam, do you want to ask uh, uh, one of the last questions before I ask uh, the last one? Do you have any last questions for uh, Julius? Because I don't want to take – you got your babies there, man. I feel like we took a lot of your time anyway this morning. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, you know, I just have one one last question um, before we cut Julius loose here. And and, and to reiterate what uh, Steve said, I appreciate your time so much. You've been a great uh, guest here on the show. Um, but you mentioned earlier um, having a locker room in between JT – and um, Pennington, I think you said, um, you still have a relationship with JT because I know he coaches here locally down the street. And, and how does that work? You know, um, maybe getting some kids up to your school and such, you know. Now, uh, you know, Nate Gardner, who's actually he was actually coaching down there with um, JT. And the last time I ran into JT was when we had uh, it was during it was a Super Bowl weekend. And there was a um, Mr. Ross was throwing a, he threw a party for a lot of the alumni and things like that. And I ran into JT there and kind of had, you know, like a, a two, three minute conversation with him, you know, kind of reminded him who I were, you know, who I was and things like <laughs> that, you know, got, got a picture with him and everything. But um, like the only guys that really I, I keep, I still keep in touch with is like, you know, Devon Best, you know, Marlon Moore, Nolan Carroll, you know, things like that. Like the guys who- How's Devon who doing? Out of football that we were kind of like always together in a sense, you know? How's Devon doing? I know Devon was going through. Devon's some stuff. doing well. Like Devon's Good. doing well. Like he's he started up his uh, the best route foundation again. Like uh, he actually just I think he might still be in Hawaii. And actually, my former wide receiver coach here at Washita is actually the wide receiver coach in Hawaii. So Devon had just spoke to the team, and then my wide receiver coach has sent me a message saying that yeah. I just met Devon, you know, he spoke to our team and things like that. So I thought that was pretty cool as well. But Devon's doing well. Like Devon's doing really well. Devon was one of my favorite, favorite players when he was like, I I still have a rookie autograph card that I got. So I guess it was 2010. Uh, when was Tannehill's rookie year? 2011? 11. So you guys played a preseason game in Carolina. And I, you didn't play. You played the game before. And I think you played the game after, but you didn't play in the Carolina one because uh, I was going back through like some of my cars to see if I got your autograph. Did you even make that trip to Carolina? Do you I made remember? that trip, but like I told you, like the game, like the first game, that's when I tore the ligament in my toe. Okay. And so uh, the Carolina game, I was, I actually was on the, you know, the opening kickoff and then like, I mean, the opening kickoff return, but it was one of those things where you could just. Do it. I couldn't do it. And yeah. so I didn't play the, you know, I didn't. I was sitting. Game. So it was my birthday. My wife bought me tickets. Very first row right behind your bench. So I'm almost positive we've met in person before because I stayed at the team hotel, uh, like trying to get autographs for like 12 hours and people were coming in and out. And um, so I'm almost positive we've met before. But the funny thing about um, that is, is, uh, you know, I, I see how 
the fans are. So, you know, we are Miami Sports Music for the fans, by the fans. What have been your experiences with the fans is one of my last questions to you. It's it, it's, it was nothing but love. Like, you get me? It was one of those things where, you know, like, from the time that I was there to the time that I, I, I left, it was one of those things where I never felt like I wasn't a part of the Miami Dolphins organization. I remember even the first time, my first active game, you know, going to the stadium, like, you know, where the players go through, like, to go to the locker room and then even leaving. You know, you're stopping there asking, you know, for, for autographs and things like that. I felt like a celebrity, even though, you know, I'm just like, you know, I'm like, I'm just I'm just Julius, you know. But at the same time, like it's like the 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 vibe there is, man, it's unmatched. And I, I, I just can't see any other fan base rocking the way the Miami Dolphins fan base rocks, you know. So, I, I want to I, I was going to ask another question, but that's the way to end the conversation right there. man. Um, <laughs> right. So, uh, you know what? I will ask one more. What are you, what are your future? Like, what's the ultimate goal for you? Is the goal to, to stay coaching in college or do you want to go to the NFL or what's your what's your goals? My uh, the ultimate goal is I want to stay here. I kind of want to because I'm fortunate enough that my head coach from college is still is still here, you know, winning. And it's one of those things where I told him when I took the job is I want to be here as long as he's here. You know, and the NFL, they have they have a minority thing where uh, they have a pathway. Like if I wanted to enter the NFL as a scout or anything like I, I could join that program. But it's one of those things where I want to I want to have me and my family like grow here in, in Arkansas. It's one of those things where I'm going to ride this Washita Baptist thing out until, you know, until the end. And also I'm going to have a, I'm opening a um a performance facility back home in Newport. So over the next couple of years, I'm going to get that thing up and running. So, you know, the kids over there would always have a place to to train, to develop and things like that. A place that I wish I would have had one, you know, when I was out, and I would always have a place to go back at home and train, but I didn't have it. So I'm going to open a facility here in the next couple of years over there called Upfront Performance Enhancement. And so that's what, that's what we're going to do. Performance, Upfront enhancement. performance Enhancement. Is there anything that we can do as fans? Uh, social media obviously has the power uh, of spreading the word. Is there anything that we can do to help you, man? Because, um, number one, you helped us this morning by coming on the show. I really am very grateful and blessed uh, that you took the time to, to talk to a fan and uh, because that's what we are, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything we can do to help you out or, or mo- you spread a movement? Hey, move a just, movement fo- forward? just follow me on Twitter at Julius C. Pruitt one and follow me on Instagram and kind of, you know, I'll keep you guys posted and just, you know, just enjoy, you know, just kind of like, share, you know, all the things that I post, the different things with me and my family and just everything that we're doing here at Washington as well. Like, you know, I appreciate you guys for having me. I appreciate the support, you know, the love, like, you know, like I really appreciate this, you guys, you know. Hey, no, man, I'm I'm grateful that you took the time to come on, especially with all the babies you got in the background there. And, yeah, they, uh, they're doing an online school, and it's, you know. Hey, no, why, man, that's it's a beautiful thing. Spotty. That's why the connection is spotted. We're all, it's all their fault. We'll blame it on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Julius, Julius, man, we, we wish you nothing but the best, and, uh, you know, bless up to you and your family and, and continued success, man, in your career. I appreciate it. Talk all to right. you guys soon. Have a good one, Julius. Thank you, All man. Right. God bless. Have a good one. God bless. Yep. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That was Julius Pruitt, former Miami Dolphin. Oh, man. That was that was Talk awesome, about man. a positive, you know, talk about positive Friday, Friday vibes, man. That was absolutely amazing. That was, um, oh, my goodness. He's such a great guy, such a humble guy, and just – Oh, man, he does his thing so well. It, it was so, so good. Um, uh, there's a couple things that I want to talk to you about. We're not quite done with the show yet. Um, but let me hit the reset button, and then we'll, we'll kind of move forward, and then we'll go from there. All right, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Stephen D. Again, I want to remind everybody, it is Fred Kindness Friday, okay? And if you guys uh, are watching this right now, we have 34 likes. The goal for today's like, if you like today's goal uh, or or, uh, show, I want you guys to remember uh, to hit that like button. The goal was 100 likes today uh, with 31 
uh, donations uh, for a grand total of 75 donations. Um, so I, obviously you guys were sitting back enjoying the content, enjoying that that wonderful interview we did with Julius Pruitt, and I appreciate the love. Uh, but let's see if we can still try to hit that goal uh, this, this Friday. Any single donation of $5 or more gets you automatically entered into the swag DWA swag bag giveaway. Enter as many times as you'd like. Uh, the original goal for the single donations were 25. We're currently at 44. Um, and this is what the um, uh, things look like. Uh, first place is a DWA swag bag. Second place is a pair of DWA shorts. Third place is going to be Miami Vice colored East 32 tailgate hat and shirt. And then fourth place, fifth place, and sixth place is going to be a NorCal t-shirt um, for Mark Angelo. So make sure you guys go check that out. Um, if you guys want to donate to the channel, there's three different ways to do it. Number one, you can do it through the YouTube Live Super Chat. Second way to do it is through the Cash App here. And the third way is through PayPal. So make sure you guys uh, do that. Help the channel grow. Donations are much appreciated as they help our channel grow. We want to bring you amazing and new content consistently, and your donations help with that. So we hope that you can. And if you're not ready, that's fine too um, because there's another way you can support. You can hit that like button. You can hit that share link uh, on YouTube. All of those things help um, with making our channel grow, and, and that's what we're trying to do here at Miami Sports Music. Uh, if you don't know how to donate on the YouTube Live Super Chat, uh, three steps. You go down to the bottom of the live chat. You'll see the money sign. You click that. You pick either a Super Chat or a Super Sticker. And then you pick the amount that you see circled in red. You slide it over. And then you hit buy and send. If there is any donations uh, today that is $100 or more, then you will win uh, uh, I will let you choose whatever you want from the uh, prize list, and it won't take away from the prizes either. We'll just add one more, and you can pick. So any donation of $100 or more, you'll be able to pick whatever prize um, that you want. Remember, it's donating to a good cause as well as uh, you can get some swag. Um, and, uh, yeah, everybody has uh, you know decided that if anybody donates $100 or more, that they'll get, um, they'll get to choose whatever they want from this list. Um, if for somehow we end up uh, doing what we did yesterday and going crazy at the end, if we end up getting over 75, I'll tell you what, I originally said 100. We haven't had any donations yet this morning. If we have any donations uh, and we get to 75, I will add one more prize, and that'll be a DWA hoodie. All right, so let's try to do that here within the last 20 or 30 minutes of the show. Let's get going. Let's hit that like button. We're at 36 likes. We can get to 100. I know we can get to 100. Uh, so let's do it. All right, um, back to my man, uh, Mr. Cameron. What's up, big guy? You're on mute. I'm not on mute now. You're not on mute now. Uh, how was that interview, man? That was really cool, right? Man, that was awesome. It's great to um, interact with, you know, positivity, you know, no matter, you know, what walk of life people come from, it's just icing on the cake that, you know, the guy played for the Miami Dolphins and uh, he's such a, a positive, uh, had a, such a positive message for us this morning. And man, it, it was great to interact with him. He told some really, really cool stories. I think the first cool one that I liked or enjoyed was him and the Joey Porter interaction that, you know, Joey Porter was, you know, somebody who, as soon as he got there, kind of took him under his wing and, and uh, you know, he didn't have to worry about being like a, a, a hazing rookie. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was so cool. You know, I'm sure that he had a lot more stories because that was a crazy team that uh, he came up as, as a rookie. on. I mean, with Channing Crowder and, and Richie Incognito, Devon Bess and Brandon Marshall. He mentioned Nolan Carroll, man, with, you know, that guy's. We got to have him on the show. That guy's uh, a dynamite. Uh, I would love to have Devon Bess and Nolan Carroll on the show, but Devon, I'm telling you right now, Devon was like my favorite player for at least two or three years, man. Like, yeah, just, you and me both. I love that guy. You know, and then to, and then to kind of see the the fall from grace that he took. It's so good to hear that Julius said that he's doing good. It makes my heart, whoo, feel really good on a spread kindness Friday. That was what I needed to hear. That one hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. Good. 
Uh, another cool thing that I thought was really cool from the interview about Julius is, um, you know, you know, after so many years, he graduated and got his degree. I think that's really cool, too, that, you know, he, he, he thought enough of it that, you know, I want to go do this. And I think that that's really cool. Yeah, and it was awesome. And, and all in the realization that he's, he's raising a family, you know, and he's rooted in family first. And I, I think that's a great lesson to be told there, man. D-Dub says, thanks for incorporating the chat room's questions into the interview. Guys, this Absolutely. is a network for you. This is your network. Miami Sports Music is made for the fans by the fans. So we try to do that as often as possible. Uh, you're very welcome. A-Rod said, great interview with Julius Pruitt, and we wish him nothing but the best with coaching. I appreciate the humble players that have played for our organization. Fantasy Panel says, great show, Stephen. Keep it up. Um I'm going to go back through and just read some of these because we haven't really uh, said anything today. Uh, D-Dub says, I'll be praying that God will continue to guide your footsteps. D-Dub says, I love it. Um, the best thing that he did was hire Coach Flo. Cisco, I'm sure, is referring to uh, Stephen Ross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Bone says, you never gave up. Um Let's see here. Uh, I'm just trying to go through these and take a look at what people said during the show. <clears throat> hey, I'm uh, I'm gonna hold on here. All right, go ahead. Who's that? Hey, oh, my yeah. daughter's grad. My daughter's graduating. Just checking her out. Oh, congratulations! What grade is she in? Graduated fourth grade, man. Oh, man, your baby's getting big. Your baby's yeah. getting big, man. It is crazy. She'll be a fifth um, grader next year. Guys, uh, I, you know, I'd love to hear your comments on what you guys thought of the show today. Uh, use the hashtag Dolphin Chat, hashtag Clock Blockers. We're at 37 likes. Look, let's make this realistic, right? I know where we're at. I know where we're at today. We're at 44 likes. Uh, we're at 44 donations. Let's get to 50. We get to 50 donations and we get to 50 likes. Let's make that the, the, the goal for today. We can get six more donations and we can get 13 more likes. Let's go. Let's make that the the goal for today. Um, you know, so some, some news kind of uh, coming out uh, of the NFL yesterday, Cameron. Um, you know, yeah. looking... Go ahead. I, I, you, I think you I know, know where you're going with this. Go ahead. I know where you're going, and I'm ready. No, go ahead. I want to hear you bring it up. Make sure we're on the same page. No, we, we, are we talking uh, the Tua uh, and, and Coach Flores not being uh, behind him all the way? Is that yeah, what, like is that's that what so, yeah, so there was the rumor that he was not behind him all the way, and um, I thought that that was very interesting that all of a sudden that suddenly came out. And it was from an unnamed source. And, yeah, so yeah, what do you think about that? An unnamed source, you know, from an assistant coach who heard it from, you know, a trainer who you know heard it from a cheerleader. Man, I, I don't buy into that, man. Are you kidding me? That I think that's all clickbait stuff, um, you know, just to conjure up, you know, some midsummer banter and, and discussion. And I think it's more shade on the young guy, uh, Tua, that, um, listen, we all know he's putting the work in. Coach Flores and this team is all behind him. I mean, if Coach Flores wasn't behind him, they wouldn't have gotten rid of Fitz or let <laughs> Fitz walk, let's say that. Um, they would have, you know, had a different draft strategy perhaps, you know, brought somebody else in. Now, listen, Jacoby Brissett is nice, but he's not going to challenge uh, Tua for the number one job. I'll tell you that right now. They um, Everything this team's done is to build around Tua, you know, in going out and getting Waddle, get, going out and getting – you know, um, yeah, the Notre Dame tackle. Um, and Liam Eschenberg. Eschenberg. And, you know, I, I just uh, – I don't buy into it. And, um, it, you know, it's haters. Haters keep on hating. Haters going to hate, man. Haters going to hate. That's what they're going to do. Uh, I, I, got a, I got an interesting stat for you uh, by way of pro football focus. Um, Tua, did you know Tua led the NFL in passer rating – when the game was it within one score in the second half last year. Interesting. During those during those situations, Tua was 41 of 51 for 410 yards, four touchdowns, and zero interceptions. 
So this this guy that we're saying doesn't know what a wide open receiver is, and uh, you know that guy, that same guy, passer rating of one twenty six, and his successful play rate was sixty seven percent, better than any quarterback, rookie or not, in those situations, second half and within one score. Tell me that's not somebody you want in, in your bro league all league. day, all Come day. On, that's who I want, man. That's who I want. Like, I don't understand. Cisco hits the nail on the head. The media is really hitting my last nerve. Can't stand those lames. I, I agree. 100%. I agree. 100%. And then D-Dub says, Flo stated his belief in Tua during the presser. Uh, presser. Flo is 100% set behind, behind Tua unless Aaron Rodgers or Deshaun can be had. LOL. <laughs> As the fin <laughs> says, I'm back. Hit that like button. Punch it. Hit that like button. Let's go. Uh, D-Dub said Tua had a better rookie year than Josh Allen did as a rookie. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think Josh Allen went for 10 touchdowns and 14 interceptions in, in 11 games um, or 13 games, if I'm not mistaken. And, and Tua had a much better uh, ratio than, than Allen in uh, much less games. Josh Lugo says, yeah, when you had average five yards per attempt. Does that matter if he's it, like, what would say it one more time? It was 410 yards, four touchdowns, 41 of 51, 41 to 51 for 410 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions in the second half with when within one score, you know, Bro, it, it, who cares if it's five Jack yards? Well, it was five yards because you didn't have receivers that were going to, you know, that, that would threaten the tops of defenses that, you know, they were playing man coverage on our guys because no one could get off the line. You know, no no offense to uh, Gusecki or Mac Hollins or Bowden or Perry, but that's what Tua had to roll with in, in many of those games. And listen, that's why they have Waddle. That's why they have Fuller, you know, and to take the tops off these defenses. And um, you're going to see a different, um, you know, yards per attempt. Mark my words this year. Hey, uh, are, are you are you good for staying on for a little bit? Because uh, there's a couple people that want to come on and ask some questions to us. Yeah, yeah, 25 minutes or so. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. I want to see 50 likes, though. Let's go. I want to see 50 likes and six donations. Let's go. 50 spread likes, that positivity. Donations. Hashtag spread kindness Fridays. I put the link in StreamYard, guys. You guys can go check that out. Get on, ask us questions, tell us what you thought about the interview. I uh, would love to hear from you. Um, let's make that happen. Um, and I know, um, here, I'm doing, let me, hold on. This doesn't want to work for me. Copy the clipboard. There we go. All right. Let's go. And you guys ask your questions in the chat room too. If you guys want to, uh, uh, us to answer anything and you can't get on 38 likes, 12 more likes. Let's go. Um, let me ask you, man, uh, the let's kind of, you know, hit, uh, practice squad players. You know, Julius was a practice squad player and, and practice squad players are going to be very interesting this year because of the depth that we have, that there's going to be guys that will want on the practice squad that will probably be able to make 53 man rosters elsewhere. How do we play that? Like, how does that, you know, how do we have to look into that or kind of, uh, um, attempt to, um, uh, battle that this year? Because, you know, we want to hide players and protect players sometimes on practice squads, but if they have an opportunity to go to a 53 man roster elsewhere, you know, what do you do? Well, if, if our practice squad players are being picked off, you know, for other teams, that means our roster is strong and it's doing its job, right? Yeah. It, you know, it, it, it's – and that's that's the reason you have a practice squad, you know, um, to hide and develop to, you know, good quality talent to, you know, support the, the 53 um, on any given Sunday. But mm -hmm. um, if these young guys have the opportunity to be, you know, sign a contract, you know, and, and be a – uh, a member of a 53 somewhere else that meant our job as a scouting department guys daryl mingo just said donated uh, ca through cash app 
Uh, yeah, man. Shout out to Daryl Mingo with his five dollar donation. So five more, five more to go for uh, so, till we get to fifty donations uh, for the week um, uh, for for this prize giveaway. Shout out to you, Daryl. Your name will go into uh, the the DWA giveaway uh, that we're going to be doing. So that's awesome. Appreciate the love, man. Um, look, I agree. I just think you know. What 39 likes, 11 more likes, people, five more donations, 11 more likes. Um, you know, I, I look at this and I see that somebody like Kirk Merritt might not have a spot on this roster. And how are you ever going to be able to keep somebody like that if, you know, um, you're not going to be able to hide somebody like that on a practice squad? So who's coming well, off, you know? Well, li well listen, you know, that, and that's what training camp's got to prove his worth for the 53 or, or, you know, he didn't – ideally, he didn't do his job and he gets exposed to the practice squad, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's what well, that's why you have a, a, a training cap. You know, there's only a certain number of players with guaranteed contracts. And, um, you know, Kirk's not one of those and neither is, uh, you know, Perry or, or uh, some of these other guys that were drafted the past couple of years. But, you know, he's got the opportunity just like anybody else does uh, in that wide receiver room. Yes, he does. All right, I want to bring in my man, Estefan. Uh, Estefan, what's up, big homie? How are you? Hey, what's up, on, fellas? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to hey, you, good man. Morning, happy, happy Spread Kindness Friday to you, man. Yeah, man. Ha uh, happy uh, Spread Kindness Friday to y'all, man. I, I almost <laughs> tripped up trying to get that out of my mouth a little long. <laughs> <laughs> Say that five times fast. No, I got you, man. Oh, no, oh, no. Did, did you hey. enjoy the uh, interview this morning? I caught some of it. I was in and out because you know I'm at work right now. But um, but yeah, I I caught the the gist of it, man. Seems seemed like a good guy, man. To, to just to get the insight on what these guys go through in a player perspective, man. That is much appreciated, man. Doing big things, big dog, man. I really appreciate that that interview. Getting him on. So no, we man. we got to we, we definitely got we we definitely got to get some more guys up in here, man. More players, man. That's what it's all about. No, it's about but, you guys. It's about the fans. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That is why you made this. <laughs> do you want to talk? Uh, do you want to talk about any particular topic this morning? Um, well, I wanted to ask you guys a question, and then I wanted to also um, say something after you guys. Okay. Um, so, and I don't know if y'all are aware. If you're not, then it's cool. You don't have to answer it. But um, you know, I want. I just want to give a shout out to all the uh, YouTube uh, fans verse that's out there, including uh, you know TD and. And reason and all them, man, because it's all love. It ain't a competition, man. We we all help each other grow. But I got to give reason a shout out. I heard a little bit of his show from last night. I wasn't up for it because, of course, I had to go to bed. But um, I believe he was saying that, and I didn't know about this, uh, so that's why it's okay to you know listen in every now and then and see see what pickups, different stuff from different guys, and see what what they've caught or heard. But he was saying that the trainer um, had mentioned to his trainer. Had mentioned, and from his assessment, that Tua was only playing at sixty percent capacity as far as his ability. What do you? What, what, do, what do you? I don't know if you heard about that. If you already formulated opinion, formulated an opinion about it, uh, what do you? What say you guys about that? Cam, go first. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I read the quote from his trainer, and he said that um, you know he thinks Tua was functioning at sixty percent of his strength um, in, in that heat. Uh, you know, through last year and that he wasn't truly uh, recovered from the surgery that he had 18 months prior. And I think that's what he was referencing. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I look at that, Esther, and I say that um, if somebody who is in charge of this man's health on a day in, day out basis, in charge of making sure that this person's going to be fit and ready to go when it comes time for the season is saying that he's not is he was only 60% from a football standpoint. Bruh. Bruh. That's all I got to say. Bruh. Like it's it's I'm I've told you. I've been on many different platforms. Tua is going to have a phenomenal outrageous amazing season. He will have the best second year season we have seen from any quarterback maybe ever. It has that potential. And I and I mean that. I'm not being a fan. I've looked. I've, I just 
the the simple math of it, the off season, you're not rehabbing. He's out working out with the players. He's gonna have a preseason. He's gonna have a full training camp. He's gonna he's got a playbook that's dedicated. Like there is nothing that is stopping him except for him, for this not to be successful. Point blank. That's what's up, man. Well, I want to I want to share my uh, thoughts on that. So. I was pretty adamant before this came out, and I said it a, a couple of times on, on, on different channels um, out there. And uh, the only guy that I have a receipt that knows for sure 100% that I spoke privately with was EM. And EM, you need to get your butt on here because I sent you the link. So <laughs> um, shout out to my boy EM, man, but it is what it is. You come over here and support Steven. Um, so what I was going to say was, and y'all gonna la- y'all might think this is uh, uh, hilarious, but when we have these talks about Tua and the quarterback position, Ian and reason reason included, they've seen just about every th- drop back this guy had in college before we even drafted him. And they I'd even go a step further and say that they were predicting that we would draft him last year when when Chips fell in place, he had the injury, and he was going through recovery. But my my thing is when the season when all was said done the season was over, um, you know I feel like I hadn't looked into enough. Like what why why did it look at times like he he and I'm just gonna be a, a objective here. So you know I, just y'all can just remove y'all's feelings. I I don't hate him. I'm just being objective. It just seemed at times like he wasn't himself. He wasn't moving to his best ability, and I drew that. Uh, conclusion by having a night of nightmare, like thinking about Tua, and as well, EM has uh, dreams about like Watson and Tua, and we talk about this stuff. So one night I woke up, man, and I just started watching some of his his uh, you know broadcast view tape, whatever you want to call it, uh, from from college, and I'm, I, I need to I need to know more. I, I can't remain ignorant, so I, I'm just sitting there watching them and do. In my opinion, Tua was electric in the pocket. His feet were quick. You could see the the, fix, the flexibility, the range in his hips was everything. And, you know, I've done mixed martial arts. And, and, and one of the things that um, one of the masters would say that uh, where I used to train down here, uh, shout out Brazilian top team, um, was that for athletes, the, your hips is everything. You you can actually gain all hip in the hips. Yes, it's you you can actually you can actually train train to gain movement and, and and flexibility there. You can go from not being able to do the splits to being able to do the splits. In other words, but so, so here's my observation was you know I know a lot of people were pumping up man look at these these videos where he's working out and all that and I would tell him like I'm not even concerned with that. My concern is his flexibility and his range of motion. And I, I finally started seeing pictures where he was actually, it looked like, you know, he, he, you know, like a cent, center of gravity type exercise where he's practicing with these bands. And that's what he's actually doing. I'm glad that he had this trainer. So my conclusion to all this is I'm just going to go ahead and make that statement. I think he's going to have a big year and he is going to take that, that lead in year two. Um, and uh, I think we're going to have some inconsistencies to begin with the offensive line. But that's just the conclusion that I drew was watching him play with us compared to how he played in college. It's not, it wasn't the same guy. It's clearly not the same guy. And I've said that multiple times. And, the, and, and there's people that can attest to that because I've said it plenty of times in this Dolphin verse. But I, I, that's where I'm at with Tua. I'm just going to go ahead and make that statement. That's what I wanted to say about what his trainer said. And, like, it's validation to what I was my, – the, the, the conclusion that I drew – when his trainer said that, because you know what I mean, that's what I was seeing, and so that, that's where I'm at with Tua. So, dude, I, shout I, 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 yo, what, man, what? you you hit the nail on the head, bro. Like the fa- and it's cool that that you were validated, especially from somebody so close to the situation, because it's like, all right, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just saying something out of my ass, and 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 that feels. Trust me, I have those feelings all the time, and when I am talking out of my ass. Uh, people are quick to call me out on it, and that's okay. But I agree with you 100%. Yeah, that's you what know, I'm you, saying, man. You just you, you have them thoughts. You got to put them out there, man. 
there's nothing wrong with being wrong, man. But you got to learn to formulate your own opinions. I'm not going to come on here and give you a take from Colin Coward or uh, what's the other guy that don't know what he's talking about? The Cowboy fan. Who, with, uh, who skipped Skip Bayless? Bayless. He already knew who I was talking about. He knows what I, he knows what I'm talking about. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't no, mean to cut you off. Go ahead, man. Esther, I appreciate you coming on this morning, brother. I got Dwayne in the uh, background. We're going to go ahead and get D-Dub on. Any last thing you want to say, big guy? Oh, man, just uh, happy Friday to everybody. Thank you guys hey, for having hey, me hey, on, man. Hey, e EM is, is listening. He's in the chat room. Tell him one more time. Uh, e e e EM, you need to get your butt on here, bro. We want to hear your thoughts, bro, about to his trainer. You know, the interview this morning, if you caught it. Uh, Dwayne, I know you shouted me to reach you. Yesterday in the comment section, but you gave me a website, bro. I don't know what that is. I tried hitting it up. I don't know. I tried, bro. I tried. All right, man. I'll let y'all in. Be good. Have a good day. All right, D Dub, what's up, big homie? What's up? First of all, Estevan, I gave you an email address, not a <laughs> website. So it's an email address. Sergeant Rio at live.com. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Now that we're taking care of the administrative stuff. The administrative duties. Yes. Let's get to what you asked me to come up here for. First of I all, I just wanted to see your beautiful smiling face. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. That, Good morning, my man. That, that'll get me 50 cents and a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, big homie. Go ahead. Hey, uh, first things first. The interview I thought was was very good. Again, I I gave you kudos in the chat room about incorporating the the, the uh, questions from the chat. Uh, that made it a, a far more interactive experience for everybody to see that you were willing to include questions, comments from the chat room. So that that uh, I give you a thumbs up for that. Uh, with respect to the Dolphins, my question, since Elandon Roberts is probably going to be uh, on the pup list, what person do you see being able to take advantage of that situation most? Would it be uh, Jason Strobridge? Tyson Render or uh, uh, Calvin Munson, which one of the linebackers do you think takes full can take full advantage of that opportunity to play for those games and fill that roster spot? Uh, you want to take that one first, Cam? Yeah, man, I've I've got um, you know a couple people, uh, folks that I think. Um, my fill in. So first of all, Landon Roberts, you know, his game was up the middle, right? He, he, he was a run stopper, a gap filler, um, and somebody that um, played well against the run. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Tyson Render, in my, my opinion, is more of an outside guy. So I'm going to leave him out of this conversation. But uh, you asked me or asked us, you know, who, who's going to step up? Who has the opportunity to step up? And there's two gentlemen um, that got added to this roster uh, that play the similar role as a Landon Roberts. And that's Duke Riley, who has some experience um, with the Falcons and um, had a good career, I think it was LSU. And um, who's the other guy? Uh, Brennan Scarlett. And you go watch this guy's tape. He's 6'4", 263, but he moves well out of stand. Um, more of an inside-outside guy, but he has an opportunity to uh, play on the inside as well where Landon was. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm anticipating that those two guys make the roster. So that's why I didn't probably include them in that. And although you're correct, um, I was looking more at who, which one of those guys that probably would be maybe designated to the practice squad that could come up and try to take advantage of the opportunity to be on the roster, the oh, the uh the 53-man the roster for, even though it may be a short period, could be eight games, who knows when Lennon Roberts is going to come back. Uh, it could be, you know, he missed one game. It could be where he missed six or seven games. So. Yeah, I, I you know, and I'm with you, but um, I, I, don't, I don't see Duke Riley or 
or Scarlett as they pin in for the 53. Uh, because of Vince Beagle, you know, he's coming back. And to me, he's a lock. Um, you know, so and they, they signed McKinney. You know, you've really? got Baker. Um, you got Van Ginkle and, and Phillips on the outside. So the linebacker room, to me, is pretty full. And, and one of those guys, Riley or, or uh, Scarlett, has the opportunity, in my opinion, to move up from the practice squad or even cut list to the 53. Well, you know, how many how many linebackers do you think they're going to they're going to uh, bring up? You think well, if we're, if we're listed, you know, and I, I like Tyshawn Render. I mean, I, I think that guy's got game. I think he's he's flexible. He's bendy. He, he rushes off the edge. Well, um, but I, I you know, I see him behind Jalen Phillips and, and Agba. Um, if you list those guys in the linebacker room, I don't. Um, so you got McKinney, you got Baker, you got Beagle, you got Van Ginkle and Phillips as the five linebackers. And then, you know, Landon Roberts, Munson, you mentioned, he's got special teams um, uh, experience and value. So he's another one you could throw in there. He needs to stay on special teams because he, he, he was running around like a chicken with no head when he got in the game <laughs> Buffalo. Hey, hey, I get you. And I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you there. But um, you know that's our linebacker room, right? Yeah, that and, and that's probably a, a, you know the the rebuild is not totally one hundred percent complete. We're way ahead of schedule, and that's thanks to some some uh, some trades and some uh, free agent acquisitions that really have uh, allowed the team to focus on other spots rather than invest draft picks in the linebacker room. But you're eventually going to have to spend a first, second, or third round in this group in order for that rebuild to be complete. And um, Hey, you know, M, wanted, you, M wanted me to ask you both, what about Jonathan Ledbetter? Well, he's a, he's a defensive end, right? Well, he's a defensive end that he uh, hasn't seen. He didn't see any play last year. Uh, he sh he's shown some some sparks, but he's got a he's got a lot of a uh, he's got a lot of people to push past. I mean, when you think about it, and I, I I'm I'm thinking more defense. See, defensive ends and outside linebackers are are pretty flexible, uh, interchangeable in this linebacker, in this defense, basically, because uh, you can see some de some people that were defensive ends that they're, they're going to be playing those outside linebacker roles for the edge rushers. So that's why you got probably about 15, 16 people that – are currently on the 90 person roster and i'm thinking that maybe 12 or 11 get to come up and i don't think that ledbetter is going to be able to push past uh strobridge strobridge and the rest to get up get on the 53 man roster he, he he may end up on the practice squad, but you know uh, this is one area where I think that you you might only lose one person off the practice squad to go to another team, rather than the wide receiver group. Where if you try to stash some talent in the in the in the uh, on the practice squad, that's a wide receiver. They're gonna get snatched up and be on somebody else's team, somebody else's practice squad, or or fifty three man roster because uh, the depth at the wide receiver core is plentiful, and you might be able to hide a Strobridge or or a Render for one more year just because you you need to have those seven or possibly eight wide receivers on the roster, on the 53-man roster. Hey, uh, Cobra Commander asks, uh, why do we say the Dolphins don't value running back, yet two years in a row 
we wanted but missed on one that's that's what we as the fans have said we wanted but i don't recall anybody the front office ever in the front saying office ever like saying that. we want a number one bell cow running back so you have to think about just i mean look remember they they went out and got they they put the claim waiver in for carry on johnson right yeah. so so that right there tells me that they're at least looking at it but i don't know i felt like if they wanted to prioritize it they had the opportunity to and yeah. they didn't and, and listen, last year they they had the opportunity on four, you know, first or second round opportunities and passed on all of them. You know, they did the same, you know, with three opportunities this year, uh, maybe five going into the third round and passed on all of them. And it tells you right then and there, comfortable with their life, their running back room, right? They they Gaskin had a decent year in terms of production, you know, running behind, you know, a, essentially a rookie. Um, offensive line, you know, so, you know, I think they like Ahmed. They went out and signed Brown, you know, for short yardage and, and time, you know, clock eating situations. They and they're not done. The they're not done. They, they're going to sign draft the dopes right behind it. But yeah. if, if if they could be done and if, yeah. if they don't pick anybody else up, you know, yeah. I think they're comfortable with the room as it is now. They are. They're comfortable with the room. They have. They have accomplished their priorities for 2021. What they prioritize, their four or five top priorities. When you think of when you when they look at what they wanted to accomplish, they've accomplished what they wanted. They wanted a free safety. They've been wanting a free safety since they got rid of Minka, since they traded Minka. They wanted to improve the offensive line. They did that, and they've done that the last two years. They got an edge rusher, which was desperately needed because although they came, they, they got, they were ninth or 10th in sacks with 41 sacks, they had to blitz a, a whole lot to get that accomplished. And they weren't that effective with the blitz compared to other teams' uh, uh, positive results from those blitzes. So they had to blitz a lot more to get what they wanted. Now they want to be able to stabilize, not blitz as much, but get more pass rush by getting that edge rushing. So they've accomplished that. And, and let me tell you, they, they, you know, Gaskin gave them like 880 yards of total production from a sixth or seventh round draft pick. So what's that tell you? It tells you, it tells you, yes, they can get by for another year until they feel as though, that is now a priority. Now, correct. Uh, I, I, I'm a fan. I'm, I go back to Zonka, Lamar Smith, Delvin Lamar Williams. Lamar Smith, wow. You know, You're bringing up a you name know, there, boy. You know, uh, Norm Bulash, Don Nottingham. I go <laughs> way back. Hey. All right. I would like for them to have gotten a running back. But the front office, the GM and the coach had made a had made a decision that that was maybe eighth and priority rather than second, third, or fourth. So Agreed. they got they got they they got their quarterback, they got the wide receiver, the explosive wide receiver, they got the edge rusher, they drafted a cornerback as well. They drafted not one but two safeties in the last two years. They are they are building this this up. They just have they have ordered their priorities a little different from what we as fans want. But I would not be surprised if next year they get a center and they get a linebacker and maybe a running back. All right, guys. Guys, real quick. Uh... We're at 54 likes, so we hit the goal of 50 likes, but now let's get to 75. The original goal this morning was 100 likes. I try to get to 100 total donations. Now, we're at 44 donations, so let's get to 50 total. Uh, we're at 45 donations because we had somebody do. So five more uh, $5 donations or more uh, gets us to the 50 uh, uh, benchmark, and then uh, 16 more likes 
gets us to 75. So uh, tell them, hit that like button, bro. Hit that like button. And let me tell you something else. If an OG like me <laughs> can figure out how to tweet <laughs> a, a, a link on their, on their Twitter, everybody should be sharing the, the, the link for this site on their Twitter, on their IG. See, even an OG like me can learn the lingo. Okay? So get it done, people. Push each and every one of the Dolphin YouTubers. Push it out there. That's one of the ways we can get a change in the national perspective if we ourselves push it out there. Yep. Push out positivity. Push out kindness towards the Dolphins. Get those YouTube links out there. Preach, Dwayne. Preach. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> Where's the organ when I need it? Dun, dun, oh, dun. man. Dun, dun, I love dun. it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, M. Dolphins fan said, I would, homie, but working right now, and there's a lot of noise around me. I'm going to be on soon. Uh, all right, M. I love you too, hey, brother. E.M., E.M., um, you and you and uh Steven and Doug and Reason and Steven, y'all co y'all communicated well, efficiently, and cooperatively that on that, that panel. Evening, on that panel. Yeah, and that was a fun panel. I can tell you, um there are quite a few Finn fans, Finn Laws, Finn family members that would like to see that. Maybe not. I know it's hard to, to to do schedules on a weekly basis. That was such a fly by night thing that all but of us I got know. together. And I, I almost got on there myself because I was we were we were going to do a show, but uh, I decided nah, I, I won't be on soon enough. So I decided not to jump on there. But uh, if y'all could figure out a way to at least do it on a monthly basis. I would love that. That would be, and I feel like we could rotate. A whole we could YouTube rotate everybody's. Family. We could rotate everybody's channel. One yeah. month we do mine. One month we do reasons. One month we do TDs. Yeah. One month we do Dougs. And maybe somebody else is in the future. You know, does his but, name start with D? And 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 Larry as well. And Larry, <laughs> I was on Larry's channel yesterday. I know. I saw you, man. I saw you. I saw you. I, I saw him you. up there. I was like, let me go show this man some love. You know. Every now and then, every now and then, I gotta give love to Larry because you know what, Larry, Larry does things in that in that afternoon time frame where uh, it's that early afternoon too. Yeah, that 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 lull in the day, but it's it's good to get a dolphin a dolphin jolt of cafecito a dolphin cafecito, <laughs> you know that he brings. So everybody. You know, support support all the YouTubers. I mean, K Flexing. You know, I'm great trying to get K, K Flexing and I are you talking know, to each other. Support on them all because I tell you what, during this during this time with COVID, uh, and was home a lot. Man, it got me through. Sometimes, I mean, I read a lot of books. I did a lot of self improvement, but I also like folding your laundry, like folding your laundry, like you were yesterday on yeah, the I, other day on my uh, show. Hey, hey, hey! I can multitask, man. The army taught me to. Don't multitask. tell my wife that another that a man can multitask. <laughs> I'm out. That's my excuse, sir. Come well, see, on, I man. Been, I've never been married, so I have to multitask. I have to get things done. I have to get things hey, done. D, I don't trust. I, I don't trust anybody else in this house, my house, to do the cooking but me. So let me tell you that. <laughs> That's why you're East Thirty Two tailgates, duh. You know, Come on. Hey, 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 and um, Dwayne, have you been? Have you been? You've been? Have you ever been to a game in Miami? Yes, I used to okay. have season tickets back in. Wow, I think it was like 2012 or thirteen. The 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 season that that. The the uh the Dolphins lost to Baltimore with a last second field goal. That was the season that I was there. Yeah, 
So yeah, I've been memory. wanting to beat the Ravens for a long time. You know what? Time out. Time out. Was that your first Dolphins game? No, that wasn't my first ball, the Dolphin game. My first Dolphin games were in New York. But that was I your was first going, Dolphins game in Miami. That was my first Dolphin game. That wasn't Dude, my. Yeah, that was that the first That was my season. first Dolphins game in Miami. Yeah, yeah. I found so out that, I was having a kid that day. My wife called me and wow. said, hey, honey, what are you doing? I'm getting autographs at the Players Hotel while they're leaving to go to the stadium. She's like, well, I need to tell you something. I'm like, yeah. She's like, uh, I'm pregnant. I took a pregnancy <laughs> test. I took two pregnancy tests. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have there a son. Go. What? There you go. What so better the day, way to learn the news? The day I went to my first Miami Dolphins game in Miami was the, you know, was the a day I found out I was having a son. I tell you. True story. I've been a – that's a great story, man. I, I, I've been a Dolphin fan – for a long time, as you could tell by the names I, I was ripping, but it's nothing. Plus, some like, of the gray hairs that are on your beard. I'm not, you know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> don't, just because there's snow on the roof, don't mean that the, the <laughs> sun is going to burn hot, baby. Okay. Uh, it is. It is always a joy to go somewhere else with dolphin colors on, and then. Come out with a W with a dub. Oh, that's even better. That's even Man. better. But just that representing is. the team in a positive way, that's great. But then when you come out with that dub, oh man, it's always that's better. a wonderful feeling. I've been to Indianapolis. I've hey, were you in Atlanta? I've never gone to Atlanta for a game. I've been to Pittsburgh. I saw the Pittsburgh game. I saw was. When um was it the 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 screwed up call by the by the referee? No, this one was the uh almost lost at the end when the the guy and, ran it back. Antonio Brown was running the running the, the the lateral and stepped out of bounds. And stepped out of bounds, boy. Let me tell you, boy. Man, I was at home screaming, talking about snatching the the thrill of victory. You know, and snatching that. From my bro, boy, bro. Even though we won me. that game, I was like, "Oh my god, that's that's typical Dolphins. Like that is straight typical Dolphins, right?" Hey, like, hey, hey, D. You know, going back to what you said about going to a different stadium, man, and and feeling that vibe. You know, when we we pull out that dub, you know, shout out to Scott Howell and the Atlanta Dolphin Fan Club. We went up there and ran a tailgate and ended up feeding like it seemed like two thousand people, wow. and, and just had a <laughs> wave, a wave. Of, of dolphin up that new stadium and and i think it was jones who picked off that pass to seal the deal at the end man i tell you we were dancing in that stadium it was lit up orange and aqua man it was awesome yep hey when when i would the, the last time i went to the meadowlands because this was this was before it was the met life the, the meadowlands yeah. back then right um that was the year the dolphins with sperano Won the division it in the Meadowlands, and that was Brett Favre, right? But it was the Brett Favre Jets. So as the game, the clock is going down, I could see a whole section full of Dolphin fans going J E T S. Suck, 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 suck. 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 Oh man, it's the greatest chant fantastic. ever. Fantastic. All right, so so. All right, I got, I gotta, I gotta let you go because a couple more things we gotta do. But there's two things I want to say to you before you go, bro. Number one, you gotta go to a MetLife takeover, and and you have to do that, bro. And my guest on this afternoon show is pre-recorded, um, but it's uh, Igor, the president from Dolphins NYC fan club, and we're gonna talk about the takeover, bro. So you gotta check that out. I'm gonna uh, check it out. Shameless I'm plug. And then yeah, number. I'm Number two, when you come back down to a game, you need to let us know because you got to go to my man's tailgate, bro. You got to go to East Thirty Two. Can't I? I look, we. I will take care of you, bro. Like, I got you. I got you. I, I'm gonna. I, I saw on Twitter. So again, it's not just for the young. It's just for us <laughs> as well. Where Irving Irving had actually announced it was somebody who announced that. If you wanted tickets 
for Miami home games, get with him, he'd give up at a at a much this better guy, yeah, rate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much yeah. better rate. I'm not gonna say cheap, but a much better rate than probably stuff up or whatever. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get to one probably in November or December. Dude, no, you, you gotta come to uh fan club weekend. That's the what's, one you want to come to. What's the that game? Texans game? What's that game? Come, Texas, to, the, come Texas. to the Texans game. That's the one you want to go to. I promise okay. you that's the one you want to go to. Okay. What's that? It'll on, be the time of your life. You will never, I guarantee that's you'll in October? talk about it for the rest of your life. That's in October? Uh, when is when yeah. is the Texans game? October, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I might be able to do that because I'm going to be in Tampa for the Bucks game. I'm going to that game. And shout out to if, Papa Pump. Hopefully he's gonna be doing something. I if they, if the they have day. if if they're playing the following week and I'm down there in that area anyway, I may as well just Dude, stick stay. Around. Just stay, bro. I just promise you the fan club weekend is the way to do it. Bro, I gotta let you go, man. But All I right, can man. see you coming on today, man. I love Fins you. Fins up, baby. Fins up, up, baby. Be good. Hey, big All love. Right. Have a good weekend. Bro. I gotta love my fan. I, I the the fans here are just absolutely amazing. Um, I know you gotta get out of here. We're at eleven. We're at fifty nine. I want to get to seventy five. If you gotta go, you can go. I'm gonna try to stay on till seventy five. Yeah, man. I gotta run. Um, man, great show today, bro. Um, Julius was outstanding, and uh, I feel like we got so much more to cover, and we'll just have to hit it up next week. I know we didn't even get to anything we really wanted to talk about. Um, next week, uh, we'll. Uh, so I'll make the announcement now. I have no problem making the announcement now. Uh, next week, uh, we'll, uh, I'm going to be going away for vacation after that, for um, starting on the 16th. So you're going to do two shows with TD Finstalk as the host. TD Finstalk is going to do the morning show hosting from the 16th yep. through the 25th. So guys, check that out. TD Finstalk is going to host Clock Blockers for a week and a half while I'm on vacation. That's going to be dope. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be big time. All right, brother. I love you, man. I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer. We're at 60 likes. My goal is 15 more likes. Let's do it. Let's get hey, to 75. Just a reminder for all y'all, get the uh, the Vice Color swag from East uh, East 32 yep. Dolphins Tailgate. We need get five more, more like donations. Tailgate. Five more donations. Let's get it rolling, and I'll ship it out to you, man. Let's go. All right, all right, I'm going to uh, stay on with these guys a little bit longer. I love you, brother. Be good. All right, big love. I'll talk to you. No doubt. Peace. Peace. All right, man. Look, that was uh, – let's, let, let's, let's have some fun here, people. Let's do some stuff here. Let's, let's pull this in. It's hashtag spread kindness Fridays. Don't worry about those numbers on the side. We weren't able to hit that there. That's okay. We'll, we'll get to it eventually. I know we're getting close, Rob G said, with the $5 donation. All right, four more donations. Let's go to 50. Now, the original goal was try to get to 75. If y'all want to do that, I'm not going to stop you. But it's going to be good times. Uh, so any single donation of $5 or more gets you automatically entered into the DWA Swag Bag giveaway. Enter as many times as you like. Uh, the original goal uh, was 25. We surpassed that by so much. Um, uh, so we were that with Rob's, uh, donation here at $5, we're now at 46. So we need four more donations to get to 50. If you guys want to get to 75, we'll definitely make that happen. D dub with a super sticker of five. All right. Three more gets us to, to 50. If you guys do get to 75 donations, I will, th I will throw in. I will throw in a DWA hat, a DWA hat, okay? DWA hat, I will throw in for um, if we get to 75 donations as one of the other prizes because the prizes that I have so far, because that seems to be what people want. They like the hat and the shorts. Um, so I'll let the person pick whichever one they want. How about that? I'll do it that way if we get to 75. All right, so DWA swag bag for first place, DWA shorts for second, that East 32 tailgate color for third, that 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 Miami Vice color 
Uh, the NorCal t-shirt, fourth, fifth, and sixth place. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's get to se- – if we get to 75 donations, I will make it happen. NorCal says, write it down, throw it in. My guy. Uh, uh, flip side says, TD is the man. And then Cisco said, TD's – come on, man. Not every – look, but that's uh, that's good, though. I want – like – TD's going to do it, and if I got to go on vacation again, you let me know who you want me to host next time, Cisco, and I will try to make it happen next time I got to go. Because my goal is to never have an off day for the show unless it's like a holiday, and I can't do show every single morning. So I always want to try to have people fill in. Again, this is a family. I want people to promote their own stuff. Um, So you let me know, and I'll try to uh, make that happen. Uh, give me a couple people so that way I, I'm not just relying on one person to try to make that happen for you, Cisco. Uh, but I will look into it for the next time. Uh, wow, six items. Yeah. And if we get to 75 donations, I'll throw in a seventh. I'm just saying. Uh, so, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's make that happen. I'm super stoked about that. Uh, Estefan says TD's the man. Mighty Zane, first time viewer hitting that like button. Mighty Zane, welcome, baby. Welcome, Mighty Zane. Mighty Zane, if you want, you can also hit subscribe, too. We're we're pretty awesome. You know why we're pretty awesome? Because of you. Because of the fans. Because they're absolutely amazing. Uh, sorry, uh, Cisco. TD is the man with reason and EDW. Uh, y'all leave my boy Cisco alone. He's he's entitled to what he wants to think the same way fantasy panel is. There is no, there will be no, if you guys don't like, you guys are free to speak your mind, but not everybody's going to like the same cup of tea. I get it. I love TD personally. He's one of the nicest guys you will ever meet in life. Seriously. Like he is one of the kindest human beings and has such a big heart. Love him. But look, this is not everybody's cup of tea. That's okay. TD will be the first to tell you that. What is TD's go-to saying is, if you if you lie to if you lie to me, you lie to yourself or whatever it is. <laughs> Shout out to TD. I love you, big guy. Hope you're watching. Um, all right, let's see here. So yeah, so all right, so we need what three more donations. All right, sixty-four likes, eleven more likes, three more donations to get to fifty donations total. Um, if you guys want to get to 75, I ain't mad at you. And if anybody donates $100 or more to the channel today, then they will automatically win whatever they want out of this ordeal, and it won't uh, take away from the ordeal. So Cameron already said that he uh, would find a way to come up with another uh, hat and shirt set if, if somebody wanted that, that donated $100 or more. NorCal, I'm sure, would do it. And I know that we'll do it. So um, that's what I want to do. Cisco says, that is your opinion. I got my reasons for not liking. Uh, he spits too much of that media garbage. Nothing he says is facts. All hate. No, it's not, Cisco. But that's okay. I love I I love you, TD. I love you. You're, you're loved here. But Cisco, you're loved here too. You're welcome on this platform anytime, Cisco. Uh, Rob G, uh, let's go, fam. All right, two more donations to 50. Let's go. All day, all day, all day. Ask your questions. I want to hear what do you guys want to talk about when it comes to the Dolphins? Next person who donates gets to pick the topic. Next person who donates gets to pick the topic. Let's go. Let's go. I love everybody. That's 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 my problem. I, I don't hate on anybody. Hey, Cisco, I could agree with you more, but we both be wrong. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. $100 or more to MSM. I'll throw in a shirt for sure. Yes, any donation of $100 or more today, uh, you get to pick whatever you want out of this thing. And we will make it happen, Captain. It's a fact I ride with my mob, not the lames in the media. Well, Cisco, what am I? Because I'm I'm 
I, I, I need to know what I am. Am, am I, am I, am I in the mob? Look here. Am I a consigliere? Every time I think of uh, Billy Crystal, I think of that that the the him and um, Robert De Niro. Love that movie, by the way. Uh, D Dub, uh, hey Larry, I enjoyed being on your show yesterday. Shout out to you. Uh, Finn's panel says thanks to Wayne. Hey Larry, I enjoyed being on your panel too, big guy. That was fun. That was a fun, fun thing. All right, uh, guys, pick up uh, next person to donate gets to pick the topic. We can talk whatever you guys want to talk. This is your show for the rest of the ride, fellas, ladies. If you're watching, 65 likes, whatever you guys want to do. As the Finn said, we love you, but really, it's spread kindness Friday, and you spin that haterade. Cisco, I hope you're watching. Don't leave. Uh, we love you. Yesterday, I hey, I love you. I appreciate it. This is your show, guys. What do you guys want to talk about? You guys get to pick. I am not picking the topic. You guys get to pick the topic. The next person who donates to the channel. Uh, I like it. Uh, Cisco Ortiz says, I don't need anyone to agree with me. I'll let Tua and this team do all the talk for me when the season stores. Facts. Then all you TD fanboy eyes will be open. Hey, hey, make me eat my words, Cisco. I'm a big guy anyway. I, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. Uh, Cisco could be worse. Could be. See, look, hey, hey, this is Spread Kindness Fridays. Y'all need to stop. Let's go. Spread Kindness Fridays. No more hate. <laughs> I do I do love you guys in the chat, though. Y'all be having me rolling. Rolling. Uh, 10 more likes, MSM crew. Let's go. Come on, 65 likes. Let's get to 75. The original goal was 100 likes today. I bet y'all can't do it. I bet y'all can't get to 100 likes. Y'all won't do it. Y'all can't do it. Y'all can't get to 100 likes today. I don't even believe it. I don't even believe that y'all are going to go out and share everything right now to tell everybody that they need to come watch this show. All right? I don't even believe it right now. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm calling you all out. Uh, Mark says, I'm rolling right now. Puff, puff, give <laughs> guys. Let's go, man. Let's pick the topic. What do you guys want to talk about? This is your show. The rest of the morning show on clock clockers is your show. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Captain. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, Miami sports music. My top five signees. Agba, Baker, then Gasecki if necessary. Grant, if absolutely necessary, then Fuller after the season. What are yours? Oh, man. Great question, D-Dub. Um, let's see here. Let me think about that. Bones says, you tried my gangster, so I had to tweet the show. My guy, I love you, Bones. I love you, big guy. Like it. Y'all are the best fans in the world, including Cisco. Um, you tried my <laughs> – I love it. Let's see here. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, Emmanuel Agba. Like, so I, I'm assuming the question is what I think my top five signees are. It's not what I think is going to happen. It's more of a wish list. Can you confirm that for me, D-Dub? Because for me, there's a wish list and there's what's going to happen. Because those are two different things. I really mean that. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you my 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 wish list. Number one is Agba. If you can re-sign Agba and you can get him at a contract friendly deal of eleven or twelve mil, all for it, all day. Open up the page. Uh, I will sign the paycheck. Agba needs to be here. Second is uh, probably Baker. Uh, I would agree with that too because, look, we, we just need to have the depth at the linebacker position, right? And so so that's what I would say about that. So he would probably be that person that I would want. Uh, 
look, the reality is after being on the panel the other night, I'm not sold that Kaseki is the person that I um, would want to do. Like, I, 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 I don't, I'm not, here's my thing. I was very gung-ho on Kaseki a few weeks ago. I heard some people's opinions that, you know, are, are on the, that were on the panel the other night. I tried to look up some stats and I still haven't formulated what I think my opinion of it is it right now. Do I think Gusecki's re- going to resign? No, I don't. I think he's gone. But do I think that if I had the opportunity to resign him, would I want to? Well, after hearing some of his stats, he's, he's not as like, he's not in the tight end formation. So it's, it's very interesting about that. So um, I think if if TD said correctly, guys, I'm I'm probably saying this wrong, but I want to say he said 17% of the plays that Gasecki was in was when he was in the tight end formation. Otherwise, he was playing the slot. So you're not a tight end based on those stats. So with that being said, he is not Gasecki's not a great wide receiver. And there's a hell of a lot better wide receiver assets on this team. So I don't know if I'd want to resign Gasecki. Um, I like his potential. I like what he has to offer. The reality is Gasecki's going to get paid like a top five tight end in the NFL. He's going to. He's going to get top five tight end money. Um, who's the other guys that you you mentioned? Um, Grant, no. I, I don't. I don't. I, look, here's a reality. Why would we keep eight wide receivers? I know people are wanting to do that, but I don't see. Guys, 65 likes. Come on, hit this like button. Let's go. Um, you know, we're looking at the wide receivers. There's no way I think we're keeping eight wide receivers. That's just not going to happen. And and if you think that that's what's going to happen, well, then I think, you know, you're you're definitely – you're definitely sadly mistaken because, in my opinion, you know, there's seven maximum roster spots for the wide receiver position. So somebody's going to be an odd man out, right? So that's that's exactly how that's going to go. And then Will Fuller, definitely. Especially if he has a productive year, I am all for Will Fuller. So I would say Will Fuller, definitely. So, I mean, that would mean two other people uh, to replace Grant and replace Gasecki. Because I'm all for Agba, I'm all for Baker, and I'm definitely all for Fuller, especially if Fuller proves to be anything. So, uh, could you guys give me some names of potential free? I don't, um, I don't want my computer to lag. So, guys, give me some potential names of like you know five names that weren't named in D Dub's thing that could be potential free agents at the end of this coming up year, uh, three or four, and I'll I'll try to replace those two. But that's my thought on that. Uh. Let's see here. Drafting of Long was a punch to the solar plexus for Gasecki negotiations. Bro, like, he's not resigning here. Like, it would be very, very interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, I don't think he resigns here in any way, shape, or form. 68 likes. Let's go. 68 likes, and I think we need three more donations or two more donations. I think we need three more. Let's just say three more. Three more donations to get to 50 donations. You guys won't do it. You can't do it. Anybody donates $100 or more today gets their pick of whatever they want on this list. I will make it happen, Captain. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Gusecki uh, has got great hands. I wouldn't pay him wide receiver or tight end money, though. And that's what he's going to demand, Godfather. Like, he's going to. Bro, that's what he's going to demand. He's going to demand top five tight end money. He's working out with all the great tight ends of the NFL. Like, he's already being seen as one of the top five tight ends of the NFL. So, I mean, that's what will happen with that. Uh, Rob G says, my bank sucks. (laughs) Rob, I hope you win everything, bro. Well, not everything. But I hope you win a lot. I do, because uh, you've been you've been you've been doing your thing today. Right now, Rob's leading in the daily uh, donation challenge. He's given two today. <laughs> Love it. Uh, 
as much as I love the fins, I hate the business side of it. I know it's 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 different. You know, one of the things, A Rod, that I was saying, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? It was something on somebody's channel that the Dolphins have never been good at re at, at they've opened up their paychecks and their bank account to free agents, but they've never re-signed guys that should have stayed here. And I don't understand it. I don't like it. That's still something that's practiced to this day, even with this team. Because as far as I'm concerned, Agba should have been re-signed already. 100%. Because the reality is, if you wait this out, and Agba has a monster season, you're going to pay him, as TD says, a million dollars a sack. Let him have 14 or 15 sacks. Miami's not paying him 14 or 15 million dollars. That's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Um, uh, so uh, look, I, I I don't understand the Dolphins' hesitation when it comes to re-signing you know talent that's already on their roster. Guys, two more donations, twelve more likes. Let's go, seventy-five likes. You guys won't do it. You guys, you 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 guys aren't going to share. I'm going to call out, as as my man said, uh, I'm going to call out your gangster. Come on now. I'm going to call you out. You guys won't do it. You guys won't share this. You guys won't go take this link, share it, and go post it on your Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, and TikTok, or whatever. You won't email it to your mama and your cousins and say, hey, you guys got to check out this show. This is a pretty awesome morning show. You won't do it. Uh, Cisco says, I wanted uh, Najee bad, never wanted Phillips, um, but it is what it is. That's my guy, and he's working to defensive rookie of the year. That's how I am. I ride with the mob and everyone on it. Dude, I, yo, Cisco, here's – bro, I, I love Phillips. I do think Phillips is a top 10 defensive player in this draft, and I think he has the potential to be amazing. I mean, amazing. But I will agree with you that I wanted Najee Harris super bad. He was he was the one that I wanted. He I had him in every mock draft that I did. I had him in every, and I think he's gonna freaking kill in Pittsburgh. Kill. You know, uh, it, it's it. Yo, know, I I'm telling you right now, it's it's absolutely like he's gonna be. Najee Harris will be a top five running back in this league. No doubt about that. Uh, Fins will trade before the deadline if Gusecki isn't a team player contract-wise. Gusecki's not finishing this team. Like, here's two, here's something. Two things that'll happen this year, people. Gusecki will not be on this team come the end of the year, and Jakeem won't be on this team week one. Those are my two, like, uh, uh, you know, the, I, I think those two things are going to happen. Jakeem Grant will not be on this team come week one, and Gasecki will be traded before the year's out. 100%. Um, let's see here. Thanks, bro. Uh, be at work in the morning. This ain't the place I'm sneaking right now. Hey, Cisco, you know I told you. I told everybody. Y'all better not get fired because of me. Hey, I'm asking, I'm I'm asking for y'all donations. I can't help pay y'all's bills. Don't be getting in trouble for me. <laughs> I love you, bro. I appreciate the love. Uh, Raging Dolphins maniac. When Phillips is chasing Allen in the Bills' backfield, you will forget about Najee. From your mouth to God's ears, I will. But bro, I mean that doesn't replace the fact that we still need a running back. I love Phillips. I love Phillips. I love him. Turnover chain. Turnover chain. Please let him bring a turnover chain to Miami. Boy, Solo's going to make a remix so fast. Y'all ain't even going to be able to see. Uh, D-Dub says, expiring contracts, one year's remaining. Malcolm Brown, Max Scurra, Landon Roberts, Albert Wilson, Jacoby Brissett, Michael Parday, Jason McCourty, Nick Needham. Uh, are some of the known players. Uh, look, if Albert Wilson turns out to be three-quarters of the player that he was, I want to re-sign him. 
and uh, Malcolm Brown too. So let's say that those are my two people to replace um, Kaseki and I forget the other person um, off the top of my head. But, yeah, I, I would replace them with Albert Wilson and Malcolm Brown. And that's depending on what type of seasons they have. That's what I think. So we'll 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 definitely have to see. Uh, Najee's shine is independent on the new OL in Pittsburgh and how well it gels. I agree. Uh, Alejandro is no longer there, if I'm correct, and who's been there for like over a decade. The guy from the Army. He's played offensive line for them. I mean, he was a leader in that locker room. And so, you know, if not having him anymore is going to change the dynamic 100%. I think if Gusecki does, doesn't get traded and plays all year, he will get franchised or sign a team-friendly deal. The ball's in his coin now for sure. If Gusecki does not get traded, which I think he will, by the way, we're going to release him. We're going to get a cop pick for him. Because I don't think we're going to get more than a first or second round pick. I mean, I don't think so. But we'll see. Uh, Still longing for J.K. Dobbins, D-Dub said. Me and you both, bro. Guys, two more donations. Let's go. Two more donations. It's 67 likes, so I need... I need... uh, I'm having a brain fart. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight more likes. Eight more likes to 75. Two more donations to 50 total donations. Let's go. And if you donate this morning $100 or more to the channel, you will automatically get one of these uh, donation uh, uh, giveaways. Let's go. Uh, I got my victory chain on. LOL. Love it. Hey, Rod, I was thinking the same thing. If they bring the turnover chain phenomenon to the NFL, I will flip out. Bro, you, 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 brah, it would be crazy. San Diego Padres have a rally chain. Yeah, my boy Manny Machado. I love Manny Machado, by the way. I live in Baltimore. I've always been a huge Manny Machado fan, and he's from Miami. And so he's the one who made that victory chain. I love Manny Machado, bro. Even if you don't like baseball, he's the best defensive third baseman I have ever seen, and he's probably top three all time ever. Top three third baseman all time. Defensively. And he, he's got a bat too. Uh, I believe Phillips will have 10 sacks or better in our system. I want all my players to ball out, not fail, so I can prove my point. That's not a fan. That's not a fan. That's a hater. <laughs> Uh, I love you, Cisco. All right. Uh, D-Dub says, Gusecki should be traded before or after opening day for an inside linebacker or center. Center scares the hell out of me, D-Dub. I've been saying that for a minute. I did tweet the link earlier. Let's go. Watch when I can. It's some great content. Can't wait here from more fans. Hey, Brandon, I appreciate the love, homie. Love it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brooks Robinson, baby. Hey, all day. Now I never saw Brooks play in person, but obviously living here in Baltimore, you know, people would never want to give Manny Machado the mantle and and rightfully so. But man, I saw Manny Machado do some things on the field at third base defensively that I never have seen in my life before since then. I mean, I saw him like dive 10 feet into foul territory to grab a ball and then pick it up to throw the runner back out at first. I mean, just unbelievable plays. Padres beat my Mets last night. Nobody cares about the Mets. About the Marlins, baby. We're not doing good right now. So bad. Finn's panel, uh, 566. I saw the size of that thing. I remember when Stephen D showed a pic of D-Dub Dolphin dialogue. <laughs> When we play in the AFC Championship game, if Mike Gusecki is a huge part of getting there, do you pay him? That's actually 
one of the best questions all day. Um, wow. Wow, that one's got me stumped. 67 likes, guys. Come on, let's get to 75. Hit that like button. Um, and two more donations. Let's go. We can get we can get to uh 50 donations. Um and if you donate a hundred dollars or more, you get to get automatically one of at least one of those things that's on that list. Uh let's see here. Um yeah, I guess you do. If he's a big part of it. But Cisco, I'll I'll ask the question back to you, big homie. What does that look like? Does that mean he had like an amazing productive year or does that mean he showed out in the playoffs? I mean, I guess you could say both, but do you need to have the productive year and what does a productive year look like to be able to justify spending top five money at his position? So I'll reverse the question back to you and then I'll, I'll piggyback off that. Uh, Brandon said, funny enough, Former Marlon Xavier Scruggs called Baltimore, called a Baltimore game, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes, he did. Uh, we're hoping to have Xavier uh, Scrubs, former Miami Marlin, uh, on the morning show here uh, next week. So uh, nothing set quite in stone just yet, uh, but that's going to be uh, pretty good. Um, if you guys follow him on TikTok, he's got a really good TikTok and uh, Instagram too. Uh, D Dub, uh, Greg Nettles was at third base as well. Yeah, but he was no Manny Machado. Uh, Fantasy Cisco, Big Mike, whether we make it or not, is the best tight end I've seen in Miami since 2000. Pay him. And if not, I hope Greer trades himself out of here. Hey, Larry, thins up. Oh, the, the blasphemous for my man already starting. Fantasy, what's up, brother? I love you, big guy. How are you doing, man? Ah, ah, is that the first thing you did so far this morning? Is that the first comment you made? Blasphemous. Uh, D-Dub, it is highly unlikely that Kaseki has the numbers to mandate a re-sign because of the plethora of wide receiver talent. 100% agree. D-Dub, get rid of Kaseki 2-1 dimensional. Estefan. A hypothetical, Kaseki, Grant, and Needham, and a second-round pick in a trade for Waller of the Raiders. What say you? Well, it's definitely hypothetical, and it'll never happen, but I would probably make it in a heartbeat and not even think twice about it. Not even thinking twice about it. Guys, 67 likes. Come on. Why is that like button just standing still? 75 likes. Let's go. I've been out since 8.30 this morning, guys. Come on now. Help me out. Help me help you. Uh, Fantasy panel says, I was being nice earlier. Uh, I mean, yeah, Estefan, just so you know, I would I would make the trade in a heartbeat for Darren Waller. Yeah. Um, and I would make that trade. I would create, trade Gusecki and Grant and Needham. And a second rounder for Waller. I think Waller's that good. I do. Uh, Cisco says, I don't think Gusecki's the top five tight end. And I agree, he only runs the seam and can't run block for you know what. But bros, I hope he has eight to ten touchdowns this year. From your mouth to God ears, I got you on that. I agree with that. But I don't, don't worry, I'll wait because it, it ain't happening. I want it to. Whoa, fantasy, come on. I don't know. How... I'm just going to let that sit on the screen for a minute. Are you saying Gasecki's better than Waller? I'm going to hurt you right now, fantasy. Come on. It's Spread Kindness Fridays. I can't be wanting to hurt somebody on Spread Kindness Fridays. Come on, man. You really think Gasecki's better than Waller? Bruh. Bruh. No way. Not in a million years. Guys, 67 likes. I need y'all to share this thing. Let's go. Have all 28 y'all that are watching right now, 
You should have a lot more watching. But all 28 year old, have you all all of you hit that like button? Let's go. Let's go, people. And we need two more donations. Two more donations. Let's go. Bones, Pete, come on, man. Come on, man. I love it. Uh, let's see here. Kaseki cannot block, does not run sharp routes, and with the offense being tailored to more timing for Tua, Kaseki is not in the future plans of this team. Enough said. All right. Fantasy panel. Yes, I think Kaseki is better than Wallace. Y'all complain about Kaseki blocking, but Waller's a wide receiver turned tight end who doesn't block either. But you just you just answered your own question though, Pete. You Gasecki Gasecki doesn't turn off the field like the way Waller does and doesn't put up the same numbers. So automatically Waller's a better wide receiver than than Gasecki, right? Yeah. And they both don't block. So by nature of your comment. Waller's better than Gasecki. I'm just saying. Uh, the 50-50 balls, Gasecki is good and will not be a trend for a Tua-led offense. Uh, Waller wants better routes. Uh, Larry said, uh, valid point, Pete. Uh, it depends on how long plays this year. If he shows he can compare... Um, the problem solved. Rob G said he got you there. Fantasy <laughs> guys, we are sitting on sixty-seven likes for like fifteen minutes, bro. Seventy-five, seventy-five likes, two more donations. I think y'all just wanted to keep me on. You guys want me to talk longer? That's what it is. I see what y'all are doing. I see. I see y'all trying to reverse psychology. Me, I get it. I get it. Uh, excuse our boy Pete. He did too much sugar with his cereal. <laughs> Guys, I'm literally working on like an hour and a half of sleep. I was up late last night working on all the graphics for the interview this morning. Um, so I just want you to know how much I love you guys. Seriously. I'm exhausted. Um. All right, 68 likes. There we go. Seven more likes. Seven more likes and two more donations. And if anybody donates $100 or more this morning, they will automatically be win uh, any one of these prizes. Why is Waller and Gasecki lined up outside and not blocked? Because they open up the middle, and that is and that is just as good as blocking. Wake up. Bro, we're not – I'm not arguing that with you, bro. What I am arguing <laughs> with you about politely and kindly, because I love you like a brother, uh, is my argument with you is your argument is, is helping my point. You're saying they both can't block, so they cancel each other out there. And you said by your definition that Waller's a better receiver. So by virtue of your own definition, Waller is better than Gasecki, based on what you're telling me. I'm not going off of what I'm thinking there. I'm just reading what you are telling me. Uh, do, 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 do. Killing it. Hit that like button. Family support the homie. 68 likes. Come on. Uh, you're right, Bones. Pete is in an alternate universe. <laughs> Pete is in an alternate universe. I love it. <laughs> Everybody's still waking up from LeBron getting his butt kicked. Man, I can't believe that man got busted out of the first round, boy. I cannot believe that at all. I agree Waller's a better receiver, but I know Gasecki's a better blocker than Waller. But you just said that they both can't block. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's go. Mike G. Dunn said he was going to tight end school. You know what that means. He's going to learn how to block. Oh, man. Rob G. with the third uh, donation today. I love you, Rob. I You have supported this channel so much this past week financially. And also, you have been liking everything. And I've seen you share on like multiple different my uh, Facebook groups. So I really appreciate the love, Rob, that you – I really hope you win. And by virtue of uh, how many times you've put stuff in, I think you will. <laughs> but I appreciate the love. It really, it means a lot, Rob, seriously. See, Pete be tripping, yo. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. As the fin says, I'm going to test your gangster. For real, nothing wrong with window shopping, Rosie Perez or Selma Hayek. Rosie Perez. And and for me, I, I think Selma probably looks better. But Rosie Perez, I think, would make me laugh. And so uh, I like that, you know, my wife can make me laugh. And so that's one of the things that, that turned me on about her, besides her beautiful looks. So, yes, I, I, I like a woman who can make me laugh. Uh, <laughs> you get me in trouble, Estefan. Uh, see, Pete be tripping. And Fantasy says, I be tripping. <laughs> oh, my God. I love you guys. You guys are great. Guys, 68 likes. I need seven more likes, and I need one more donation to hit the 50 total donations. And don't let it be Rob G. Rob's done so much already. I really, really appreciate it. And, guys, if anybody donates $100 or more today before I get off the air, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. If anybody donates $100 or more, I will, I'll will i let you pick whatever you want, and I'll throw in an autographed uh, item from a former or current player. I have to go through the stuff to go see what I have. Um, but I will, I, will, I will give you an auto. If anybody donates $100 or more, I will let you pick whatever you want out of this list, and I will do. I will also throw in an autographed item uh, from a former or current Miami Dolphin. Uh, do, 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 do. Rob G said, "Too late." <laughs> Five dollar donation again for Rob G in the building. We hit the fifty donations. Love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's go, Rob. Everybody give it up for Rob G. Seriously, Rob, you you you're the man, brother. That's 50 donations. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. You guys can keep donating it definitely it, it, it'll increase your chances. And uh like I said, if anybody donates $100 or more, I will throw in I, I will let that person pick whatever they want off this list. And also a autographed item of a former or current Miami Dolphin. Uh, 70 likes. So we need five more likes there, people. Let's go. Rob G in the building. 50 donations, baby. Let's go. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, doo -doo. Eva Mendez, Flipside Fishing says, Rage says Scarlett Johansson. I'm in Montgomery County, bro. Oh, bro, I'm in I'm in uh, Hartford County. We need to link up. A Rod, my man, Stephen D. Bones, Pete, you just be saying off the wall stuff to be funny. <laughs> no, I think I think Pete believes what he's saying. Five more likes, let's go, people. Uh, Pete has his contrarian outlook, which helps us fans see issues from different perspectives. We need Pete in our fan base. We need Pete's in our fan base. Well, we definitely need Pete in our fan base. I'll give you that. Uh, a thousand yard receptions, uh, a thousand yard receiving eight to 10 touchdowns is a tight end is a tight end is elite. Yeah. I, I would agree with that statement. 
Uh, I guess he will not come close to those stats this year. If he does, that pay him. Pay that man his money. One of my favorite lines from John Malkovich. Pay that man his money. Yes. If he does that this year, I will play that little scene. Pay that man his money. I'll like, I, yes, I'll make it happen. Uh, flip side, yes, hit that like button. Guys, five more likes. Let's go. Let's go. Pete, we go too far back and Finn Phantom to hate on each other. <laughs> Joe, has there been any post-June first cuts or teams? Bro, that's been so surprising for me. It's been so quiet. Nobody's cutting anybody. Nobody. It's been crazy. And for real, I think it's because a lot of teams are waiting for teams to cut. So people are playing chicken. They're playing the game of chicken. Uh, NorCal roll call listeners, Nor Northern Cali streaming live daily. Uh, like and share Finlaws. NorCal is the godfather of the Finlaws, just so everybody knows. When the godfather talks, you listen. Okay, okay, I'm reloaded. Um, let's see here. I don't uh, either, D-Dub, but I hope he does, bro. I want a Super Bowl, so that by all means, guy needs to ball out. Tight end stats not happening. Good quote from Rounders, big time, says, all day, baby. All day. 70 likes, five more. Let's go. And if you donate $100 or more, if you donate $100 or more, you get to pick whatever you want from this list. And it won't take away from this list, so somebody will still be able to win whatever it is. And I will throw in an autograph of a former or current Miami Dolphin. I have to go through and see what I have. But I'll make it happen. Uh, Big Mike going to get paid. Big guarantee. The way Gusecki defended Tua makes me believe Greer already spoke to Gusecki about payday and probably just have to prove his shoulder is 100. I, uh, I mean, I, let's get, that's not uh, unreasonable to think that that probably happened, by the way. I could see that actually having been a conversation. I could actually see that having have been a conversation. Uh, no cuts yet, which I find myself a little surprising. Rob G said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe man said, good man. I thought it was just me. Nah, uh, the, the fact that there's no cuts is amazing to me. Uh, no cuts yet, which I find myself. Yep. Fantasy panel says, I can only imagine us getting together in a Super Bowl weekend party. I don't care how you feel. I'll buy the drinks. We're partying big, bro. I promise y'all when we make the Super Bowl, I will be in whatever city that is in. I don't know if I'll be at the game, and I'll do my damnedest to try to be at the game. But, bro, we there. We there. And we're going to party like like I told my everybody. The day the Dolphins make the Super Bowl, I'm going to cry like a little girl. I am. I'm Because I it, it's just been something that it'll just be crazy. It'll be crazy. It will be crazy. And so all I'll need, I'll find a way to get there. I just need a place to stay. So wherever the Super Bowl party is, I need a bed. I need a place to stay. And I need food in my tummy. So if Pete is bringing the, uh, if, if uh, D-Dub's bringing the dr drinks, right? Um, Or Pete, Pete, you're bringing the drinks? Who's bringing the drinks? Pete's bringing the drinks. Who's bringing the food? Let's go ahead and call this out. Who's bringing the food? Pete's bringing the drinks, and who's getting the place to stay? Um, I got a notice a little bit ago with Flo doing media availability. Can you play the Flo interview? Have you watched the interview? 
Uh, yeah, I could play it for you guys. I'll tell you what. If if I, I'll do this, if I get to my seventy five likes, and I get one more donation, more than uh, the five dollar minimum, it could be five dollar and one cent. <laughs> if I get more, one more do- donation of five dollars or more, or five oh one or more, and my seventy five likes, I'll play the inner for you, Pete. I'll make it happen for you, buddy. But I need my 75 likes this morning. I've worked hard for it. I need that 75 likes. Uh, Pete woke up from the floor sleeping on his twin mattress, hence the reason for his takes. Bones, I'm trying to get my wife to buy those sorts for my birthday, 0628. Or you could just, you know, donate and try to win. I'm just saying. Uh, Those cuts can come anytime after June 1st. Yes, they can. Me too. I'll be anywhere. Larry... Larry, bring your own beer. Just kidding. I got you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Fins make the Super Bowl. I would even party at my son with my son's mama, so long as the Fins are in the Super Bowl. <laughs> you guys are pretty awesome. I love it. Uh, Rob. Oh, my God, Rob. Guys, Rob is killing it. With the $10 donation. Oh, my God. All right. Well, the four more likes. Rob did. Rob did what he needed to do. Rob did what he needed to do, y'all. Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all. Oh, my God. I don't have time for the competition. I just need your shorts. That's my support. (laughs) I ain't mad at you, big homie. I am mad, but I do appreciate the love and the support, man. And you're always in here, and I enjoy talking with you. I love it. Uh, D-Dub says, I will bring chicken and fish. All right, there's the food. So Pete's got the drinks. D-Dub's got the chicken and fish. Huh? Huh? I'm just saying. NorCal says, uh, the thing I love about this regime is that things stay in-house. If you make public news causing unwanted attention, you get gone. Gone. Love it. Love it. Uh, D-Dub, I get that teams aren't making cuts to get free agents they might want to pick up. Yeah. I bet I'll be there. Uh, Rob is going to get, Rob is going broke pretty soon. <laughs> LOL. Bro, I, I feel bad, man. I feel, I feel very humble and I feel bad. Like Rob is killing it, bro. Rob is straight up murking it. Murking. America. America. I'll bring the brownies to the party. <laughs> of course you will, Mark. I love it. No kidding, Raging. Rob, uh, give that man that whole shebang. Give the man the whole shebang. <laughs> Bro, he's he's definitely, oh, man, he, he done so good. If anybody donates $100 or more today, they will get an autographed item from a former or current player. We're at 71 likes. We need to get to 75. And I'll let them pick whatever they want from this thing. Uh, fantasy fan panel, uh, two separate fryers. <laughs> Dwayne, don't cook the chicken and fish in the same grease. <laughs> I love it. Uh, love you too, bro. Uh, I need them shorts. Big time. Shout out to Big Time. Oh, man. Fins up all day, every day, times three with the $6.66 donation. I appreciate it big time. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the love, homie. Um, Teams still need to evaluate those possible cuts during OTAs. Patience. Uh, let's see here. I know I'll bring the bal- b- balcitos. F- 
fantasy panel. That's how tired I am, bro. I didn't even notice the the six dollars and sixty six cents till you just said it. That's how tired I am. Oh my god. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bones P. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're 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 having a cookout in here as we talk. We're just racking on each other and everything. I love it, man. What up, big time? That's a heart. Mi that's a heart. Miss you big time. Miss you big time. Oh, man. Big time. I appreciate the love, man. I really, really do. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Guys, four more likes and I'll play the... Uh, let me look for it. I'm going to I'm I'm count on you that you guys are doing it. I'm going to look for the interview now. Interview... Um, Coach Flo, right? Has any four more likes? Uh, nope, that's not it. If you have a link to it, let me know and I'll play it. As soon as we get to 75 likes. Hey, somebody put in the, um, whatchamacallit, the link to this interview, or to this uh, thing. I'm trying to find it. I can't find it for some reason. Uh, I'm laughing at you big time, at you mocking you know who. All right, I want in on the inside joke, Pete. You need to hit me up behind closed doors and let me know. Uh, Estefan said, I'll bring cigars. Uh, Miami Sports Music, do you think Merritt, uh, if not on the 53, will leave and sign with another team or remain on the practice squad with the Finns. If he gets an active... Ugh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a good question, right? Like, you got to understand the reality of this team and the, and the, the depth that we're in. The depth that we have at the wide receiver position is something that's unreal. It's unreal. So, you know, that's that's my thought process on it. So we'll have to see. Um, you know, to, I, I think I want to say he'll stay. But, man, if somebody offers him a good contract, a guaranteed money, and a chance to be on a 53, you got to take it. You got to take it. You never know when you're going to get another opportunity. Estefan says, I'll bring the cigars so we can celebrate two undefeated seasons. Go Finns, ho. I like it. Uh, Waddle had two drop punts today. It's the end of the world. <laughs> it's the end of the world. I like that, Esther. Guys, uh, give me the uh, link to the um, thing so I can play it. To the interview, the Coach Flow interview. We're at 71 likes still, though. 71 likes. I need four more likes. Let's go. You know what that means? If we're not getting them, you guys need to go share. You need to go share. Make sure you guys go share. Yes, 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 yes. All right, let's see here. Uh, I like that, Esther. Uh, I'm not tech savvy or I'd put up the link. Rob, you do enough for this show already. Let somebody else do some work around here. Uh, let's see. If we start out 5-0, and oh, we going undefeated. Bro, would love it. Talk AFC Dolphins. What's up? Hey, talk AFC Dolphins. We need four more likes. To hit 75. And if anybody donates $100 or more today, and you can tell people this too, then they can pick anything they want from the list here on the right. Spread Kindness Friday. 
And uh, I will also throw in an autographed uh, item from a current or former player. I just ask whoever wins that if they do that. Uh, they tag that when they open it, they uh, take a picture of it and tag it on social media. All right. I don't have Miami Herald. It's nowhere else. I'm 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 doing it now. I know I probably should have it if I do a do if I do a dolphin show, huh? Right, I'm back to article. All right, I got it. I think I got it. There's no there's no um there's no thing on here. It's literally just a 43-second uh, uh, thing. It's not the whole press conference. Cisco, waiting for the show to wrap so I can check out Coach Flo's press conference. I'm about to play it right now as soon as, I, as somebody will send me the link for it, Cisco. Uh, D-Dub just tried to, but it's only the 43 seconds of it. It's not the whole interview. Oh, you know what? Here it is. I think I know where to go to get it. Seventy three likes. Yep, you just hit it. I think you were just doing exactly what I was doing, D dub. All right. All right. It's a 20-minute thing. So here's what I'll do. We're at 73 likes. If I get to 75, I will go ahead and play it, okay? Uh, but I, I, I need you guys, while we're playing it, donate to the channel and hit that like. I'd love to get to 100 likes. I'd love to, uh, you know, and if we're doing this for 20 minutes, let's try to get to 100 likes. And... Um, Right now, if anybody donates uh, anything at this point, I'll tell you what. I'll do you one even better. Because we're at 73 likes right now. If you donate, this is overtime. If you donate anything at this point, okay? If you donate anything, if you sign up to become a member, if you donate anything and you sign up to become a member in the next 20 minutes while we're playing this, I will automatically throw your name into the uh, the drawing, into the raffle. Okay? If you donate anything, it could be a dollar, I will go ahead and throw your name into the raffle here. Okay? But if you, do but if you donate $100 or more, you will automatically get... A free, a, a uh, autographed item of a former or current player, and I'll let you pick whatever you want on this thing. All right, so Fantasy Panel just did a $1.99 super sticker. Shout out to you, big homie. And I'd love to see you guys sign up to become a, 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 subs uh, a member of the channel. Shout out to you, Fantasy Pan. I really appreciate that, homie. That means a lot. Um, yeah, so look, that's the thing you don't, while we're playing this press between now and the end of this press conference, I want to get to a hundred likes. We're at 73. I'll start the press conference at 75. If you donate anything, you automatically get your name entered into the swag giveaway. And if you donate a hundred dollars or more, you will get to pick whatever you want off this list. And I will send you a autographed item of a former or current player you guys got that let's go 73 likes i'm not going to start playing it till it's 50 
Let's go. And you guys need to share this thing that I'm playing this live because my, 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 uh, whatchamacallit, my uh, thing doesn't say it. Usually I would do another video. Let's see here. 73 likes. I'm not starting this thing till there's 75. It's on you guys. Let's go. Any donation. Doesn't matter if it's a dollar. Your name automatically gets thrown into the donation pile. To the donation giveaway. Raffle. Whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, and... Um, the other thing that we're going to do as well along with that is uh, if you donate $100 or more between now and the end of this press conference, um, you'll be you'll get to win whatever you want on this list plus an autographed item of a former or current player. 73 people. Get to 75 and I'll start playing this thing. Let's go. And if, if, that, if everybody here is... You hit like, that means you guys got to share it with somebody. Let's go. Cobra, what you doing over here trolling? Talk AFC. I'll get you to 75. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Cover over here trolling. All right, we're about to play the press conference. As soon as I get to 75 likes, I'm sitting at 73. If you guys donate anything, Cobra, don't play with my emotions like that. You can't sign a player who's on contract. Nice try. <laughs> um what should we call it? Uh yeah, so oh look, look, that's what's up. Talk AOC, I just saw people go up. I mean, no nobody hit the like button yet. But uh as soon as I get the two more likes, I'll start playing this thing. Guys, any donation between now and the end of this press conference that I'm about to play, whether it's a dollar a hundred dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars, six dollars, ten dollars, doesn't matter. Even if it's a dollar, I will automatically put your name into the uh giveaway. Uh you will get a slot in the giveaway. So uh hit those donations. The donations help our channel grow. A B A B, what's up? Um, and uh also um if anybody donates a hundred dollars or more. I will take care of them and get them an autographed Miami Dolphin former or current player along with their choice of whatever they want on this list. So let's go. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Come on, 73 likes. Cisco says hit that like. We're all waiting. I texted my wife to like the stream. She's tired of Dolphins. <laughs> Your wife, my wife's mad that I'm probably still on here. I'm doing this for you guys. It's like watching PBS with all the donation requests. <laughs> uh, hey, man, I'm just trying to grow, Ragin. I'm just trying to grow. Don't don't hate me. I don't want the heat. 74 likes. One more. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. 75 likes. All right. Let's play this bad boy. Let's go to share. Share screen. All right, guys. You guys got work to do while you're watching this. I need your help. Let's get to 100 likes. 100 likes while we're watching this thing in 20 minutes. Okay? Give me a sec. Let me pull this thing out. Man. 
uh, wanted to ask you, you know, the Patriots players you brought in over the years, how, how has bringing those guys in helped uh, you with what you want to do there, whether it's, you know, instilling the culture or already knowing some defensive principles that you, you want to run? Um, well, I mean, first, you know, foremost, it's, a, it's, it's about uh, us feeling like they fit us as people, uh, just from a character standpoint. Um, and then, you know, as players, I mean, I obviously understanding the, the system is is part of it. Leadership's part of it. Um, uh, you know, but overall, you know, at the end of the day, it's about, you know, talent and, you know, what we think is their ability to help us, help, help our team in this organization. And, and just regards to, you know, guys that you've known and kind of came up with over there uh, to give them the opportunity and to kind of have the opportunity to reunite with them again, what does that mean to you? I mean, it's it's you know for for you know the guys that we brought in from from there. I mean, obviously there's familiarity and uh, you know relationships there, um, uh, and understanding of of you know what you know what I try to represent, what we try to represent, and uh, you know which is you know guys who are tough and smart and love to love to play and compete and the team first. So I mean, there's there's familiarity from that standpoint. Uh, an understanding of that, uh, and uh, hopefully they can put those things into action. Adam, uh, good morning, Brian. Uh, it's been pretty widely reported that you, you you were pretty flexible with how the the off season would go, flip flops and all that, to help kind of assuage some of the fears, uh, not the fears, but the concerns of the PA. Uh, I, I was curious, have you gotten out of this what you normally would? Has there been any difference in this? And, and how encouraged have you been by the turnout? Uh, well, congrats to you, Adam. I hear you're, you're well, you're, I hear you're leaving us. Um, Thank you. I'll, to, I'll still be around. On to, uh, uh, you know, greener pastures. Uh, but, you know, sp specific to the question, um, I think we've gotten, we've gotten a, a lot out of it. Um, look, this time's about communication and fundamentals and techniques and learning the playbook, understanding the playbook, having an understanding of concepts offensively, defensively in a kicking game, uh, you know, building rapport with teammates. Um, I know we've been able to, you know, work on some just individual techniques and fundamentals. Um, and then, you know, communication, cadence, uh, shifts motions adjusting the shifts in motion so uh, i think we've gotten uh you know quite a bit out of it and uh, we still have you know today and uh next week and then and then mini camp so um, hopefully we we, we we get a lot more out of it thanks for the kind words cam uh good morning flo how you doing um good. We've talked in the past about that free safety spot being a communication spot. You know, obviously there's no starters yet, but with with a rookie maybe competing for that role in Javon, how much do you put on him as far as communication, as far as kind of leading the back end of that defense early in his career? I mean, I think all the rookies have a lot kind of on their plate right now. A new environment, uh, new playbook. You got to learn the names of your teammates, the people in the building. So they've got, they got a lot on their plate. Um, along with, you know, Javon and Jalen and, you know, Jalen Phillips and, you know, really all the rookies. Uh, this is a, you know, I would call it a step-by-step -step process and, uh, you know, more than the, this, this thought that we're going to put everything on them and say, hey, learn it all. It's, uh, it's more, hey, here's a coverage, here's some terminology, and then we, we get a feel for how quickly they learn it. Um, and this is all positions. This is not specific to, to Javon. Uh, how quickly they learn it, how much, you know, what, how well they understand it conceptually, uh, can they communicate it, and then you give them more, and then you give them more, and then, you know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, you know, their role is going to be what they make it and how much they can uh, retain and then communicate out in those, those kind of 
let's call them uh, signal caller positions. Um, how much they can they can they can retain and then communicate to the rest of the group. Um, it's really up to them, you know. I guess to answer your question, Cam. Um, so there's no hey, it's going to be this timetable or hey, we're going to give them all this information. It's really about how much they they can retain and how much how much they can handle. And you know, as, as rookies, um, you know, that's that's something you know we're getting to know them, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to figure that out over through time. But he's done a good job thus far, I would say. Joe. Hey, Flo, good morning to you. Joe. Uh, we spoke to Tua recently. He said a lot of things. And one of the things that got a lot of attention is when he said this. He said, I didn't actually know the playbook necessarily really, really good. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on that and him having been, you know, a rookie? Yeah. Uh, my thoughts on that are, um, you know, they, they kind of go back to what we talked about last week um, with him being more comfortable, um, him uh, just having better command in the, in the, in the, uh, in the huddle right now. And, you know, honestly, I just think he's, he's comparing last year to right and where he is right now. Uh, so, and I get it. You know, I, I understand that. I remember being a first year position coach and, you know, coming out of that year, going into the spring, going into the next season, saying, you know, I could have been better last year. I should have been better. I'm better now. So I, I think, you know, from a contextually, I don't, I'm not sure if I, I, I have a pretty good, I think we all understand where he's coming from, given uh, you know, at least the conversation I had with you guys last week. Um, I think that's, that's, I don't know if that makes sense, but I think he's thinking about where he is right now versus, there, you know, that time a year ago, just reflecting, and that's good. You know, this time is about reflection, um, and you know where you are now versus where you were six months ago. Uh, I think he's worked hard to improve in a lot of areas, and I think he has. And um, I think he's, uh, you know, kind of communicated that out. Thank you, Ruthie. Flo, this question kind of goes back to Safed's earlier question, but specifically um, with Jason McCourty being here, almost everyone when you talk about the McCourties talks about them outside of football and how good of human beings they are. And obviously you have a lot of experience working with Devin and also Jason together. Um, just bringing him here uh, has to be exciting for you. I just, because of how great he is to have around. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jason's, from a leadership standpoint, from a experience standpoint, um, you know, as a, as a, as a, he's a good player as well. Um, I think he brings a lot to this team, uh, but again, it's, it's, I would say it's not about Pat's players or former, you know, Patriot players, you know, it's about guys who we feel like fit this team. And, um, you know, those are the types of guys that we bring in uh, and it's, not just former Patriots, but it's, you know, guys from, you know, various other teams as well. So, you know, the guys who we, we feel like fit, um, we do obviously do our due diligence trying to um, find out about, you know, the person uh, as well as the player. And, uh, you know, obviously Jason fits the bill as well as a lot of the other guys we brought in. Barry? Hi, Brian. Uh, we know everything obviously is voluntary now. And when guys aren't out there often, it's because of personal commitment or maybe they're just training in their hometown or something like that. I was going to ask you, without naming any names, do you believe any of your absences are related to guys who have contractual issues? Maybe they want an extension. Maybe they want more money. Or based on your conversations with everyone, do you feel like that's not a factor in any of the absences? Uh, I mean, you know, you, you mentioned that it. it's voluntary and, and I think after, you know, last year uh, where there was no off season, I think, uh, you know, guys around the league and you know, our team felt different. Um, they found a different way to train and, uh, you know, they feel comfortable doing that. You know, we have a few on our team um, and I respect that. You know, I have no, no issue with that as I think 
know, my conversations with every player on this team is, you know, they're doing um, what they need to do to, to, to be ready to, to contribute to this team and uh, practice and play at a level that's, that's going to help us. So, yeah, I, I have no issue as long as they're ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that and, and, uh, and, uh, and I support it. Stop it. Well, I just wanted to go back on the tool comments. Um, it, it seemed like he was kind of trying to tiptoe, not throwing maybe his relationship or work relationship with Chan under the bus. But um, was were there times where you felt like he wasn't able to check plays or alert plays or, or, or didn't have a full grasp of what you guys wanted to execute offensively? Uh, look, I mean, honestly, I'm, uh, last year is last year. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm more of a forward thinker. I'm really kind of focused on practice right now uh, or walkthrough, uh, which we've got in a couple of hours. Um, uh, I, I understand the, the question, um, but you know, I think, I think, you know, two is, uh, you know, we've talked about his growth a lot, you know, from, you know, in the last six months and his, his, you know, how he's reflected on that. And um, I think, you know, my focus is on helping him improve on a daily basis. Um, obviously, you use the past to kind of, you know, point you in the right direction of where to, to make those improvements. Um, and we'll just continue to, you know, focus on, you know, this one day at a time and, uh, and, and help, you know, Tua and really every, you know, I know we're talking about one, a lot of the focus get, it gets put on one player, but, it's really every player on the roster. Um, I mean, I, we as coaches, that's what we're trying to do is help them all um, get better, improve, you know, reach their potential. And, uh, you know, if we can do that with the individual players and then pull it all together um, in different units and groups, then uh, hopefully we have a, a, a team that can support one another and, and, uh, and can be productive on the field. Al? In, in what ways did you see improvement out of Raquan Davis during the course of last season? You know, I think like every every rookie, um, like every time you, you 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 practice, you get a rep. Um, you, you know, it's a good experience. You know, whether it's a good play or a bad play, you learn something from it. I think that's uh you see improvement through through the course through his individual his fundamentals his techniques and practice and you see that translate uh you know into the team portion of practice or the you know whatever run period or play action pass period or whatever we're doing in practice you see those improvements uh you see them in the game you see just an understanding of what we're doing conceptually what we're doing why we're doing certain things um and it's not just Raekwon, it's not just Tua, uh, it's really, you know, all the players. Uh, look, this game is about, you know, you know, forming good habits. You know, I talk to the players about that, you know, really on a daily basis. We, we got to, you know, practice good habits from a ball security standpoint, from a footwork standpoint, from a hand placement standpoint, from a... Uh, uh, you know, attacking the ball, you know, you hear, you'll hear, you'll hear, you know, the coach, you'll hear, you know, Chuck tell the DBs to attack the football. You'll hear uh, Gerald Alexander talk to, uh, you know, the, the safeties, and, you know, bad breaks me to lead to mixed missed tackles and we can't have missed tackles. So we can't have bad breaks. Like those are, you know, we got to practice good habits when we see guys improve on those habits on a daily basis. Um, that's the improvement that we, we, we want to see. And, you know, every coach is tasked with, uh, helping the players at their position uh, improve. Uh, and, you know, we all try to work together to, to, to make sure that happens. And, you know, the players obviously put a lot of work into it as well. So, uh, you know, whether it's Raekwon, whether it's Tua, whether it's Brandon Jones, whether it's, uh, you know, Jesse Davis. I mean, uh, we're all we're trying, to, we're trying to improve all these guys or help all these guys improve. we got time for two more. We'll go to Cam and then finish with Alan. I have another question, but I wanted to follow up just on what you said. I thought that was interesting with, with GA and, and, and Charles. I'm curious, obviously, you were a defensive assistant coming up. Do you see any of yourself into in any of your you know younger defensive assistants and kind of share your experiences with them as they go about their career? 
Uh, I mean, I look, it's not just the defensive assistants. I'm not, you know, I mentioned those guys, uh, but it's really all the coaches. We got, we got a fairly young staff. Um, all these guys work hard. They all, uh, you know, they're hungry to learn and get better and improve and uh, find different ways to help their, their the guys in their groups get better. I mean, that's, you know, that's why they're here, you know, and, uh, but, you know, specific to Chuck and GA and, you know, Campanelli and, you know, Austin Clark, uh, Grizz, yeah, I mean, obviously George and Eric, uh, I think we got guys who are passionate about the game, Lem, uh, passionate about the game, passionate about coaching, passionate about, uh, you know, helping their guys improve, um, passionate about, uh, learning the game you know there's, there's so many things about the game that we're you know the game evolves and it changes every every year you know different schemes different concepts different uh uh you know you know modes of play different rules different situations you know, we're all you know all these guys are eager to uh to learn it all and 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 try to pass pass that information to the players in hopes that you know we'll, the smallest thing, to, you know, is the difference between making a play and not making a play. And oftentimes in this league, you know, with as good of players as there are, the difference between making the play is this much. And I think we're all trying to, trying to, you know, find different ways to, to, you know, make that, make up that difference. And uh, yeah, I think, I think, you know, Chuck, GA, you know, Josh, you know, really everyone on the entire staff, I think they, you know, they're all passionate about this and uh, I can hear it on the field. And then, you know, uh, you know and I know they'll continue to do that. And, uh, you know, Lem's the same way and, you know, Colby's the same way. And um, we're all just, you know, trying to, trying to get better, you know, myself included. Thanks. And if I could briefly ask my original question, um, we talked we talk to you a lot about Tua, obviously, because he's the quarterback, but is there a way that maybe you can contextualize or give us an example of maybe his practice methods or routines that you've seen, you know, in your eyes from last year to this year and maybe how he's grown? Uh, you're, talking, you're talking about? Tua, just I, I know we talked about the comfort, like maybe an example that you've seen that, hey, you know, this kind of stood out to me and how he's maybe grown or I noticed this was improved from last year or something because obviously we weren't there a lot last year so we can't compare and this year is a little different because it's walked through so uh, if that makes sense um i mean you know similar to you know what you're saying is it's walk through so just from a mechanics from a meeting standpoint i can talk to it but from a uh I, I would say he 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 wants a process for for uh, he's he, he's 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 got he's trying to put together a process for um, you know how he studies how he eats how he trains uh, really kind of everything um, and I would say I've seen that um, so from a scheduling and process and routine and you know, a system standpoint. He's got a you know system in place, or he's putting together systems that you know he thinks will help him do X, Y, or Z. You know whether it's uh, you know training, whether it's meetings, whether it's um, you know fundamentals, uh, throwing mechanics. Uh, I've seen that for sure. Last question, Al. Good morning, Brian. Uh, I'm yeah. wondering whether there have been internal discussions or with other teams about possibly holding joint practices this summer. Um, yeah, there have been some discussions. Uh, nothing fine, not truly, truly finalized just yet. Uh, but some discussions. We'll just we'll see how this goes. I mean, we, uh, honestly, we don't even have. Kind of still waiting on some of the final protocols and. Uh, you know what we can can't do so um but yeah there's been some 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 discussions and you know i, I I'm, I'm always in favor of of uh doing joint practices there i think they're they they, they bring a lot from a a uh, camaraderie standpoint from a competitive standpoint um i think you can get a lot out of those uh, i know we did you know with tampa a couple of years ago and um you know, my experience is that you get a lot out of those and 
kind of breaks up training camp in, in a good way, in a positive way. All right. All right. What'd you guys think? What did you guys think? Uh, very, very interesting press conference. Um, yeah. Uh, a couple things that stood out for me. Uh, number one, he didn't want to discuss the Tua talk. I think is, is something that's very, very interesting. Um, let me plug my headphones back in. I was very, very surprised about that. Um, second thing that I thought was very, very interesting is uh, something that I had briefly touched on uh, is um, the joint practices. I did not know the NFL was allowing them this year. So the fact that there have been internal discussions in the leagues pretty much just waiting to make like whatever the final protocols are for that uh, is huge. Absolutely humongous that they're allowing joint practices this year. Um, let me tell you how big of a deal that is without, and, and, and let me tell you why. So having joint practices because there's only three preseason games is going to give guys opportunities to shine and make, have a chance to make this roster. Like it's, it's going to be a big deal. So I am super, super stoked about that opportunity. I think it's going to be um, a really, really good one uh, to kind of see what they're going to do or how they're going to go about it. Um, I, I think uh, Tua talk declined is not a good look. Flores isn't a Tua guy. I disagree. I think. I think. I, I think that he wasn't avoiding the question for the sake of avoiding the question because he didn't want to talk about it. I think that he's just guys. This is this year. I think he is a right now guy. That's just my thought of Flores. I'm not saying that that is the correct way. I'm just telling you that that's what I think it is. You know, looking at it, I think that that's what it is. Um, you know, uh, Jacoby is a Flores guy. <laughs> oh, Lord. You and TD, Jacoby. Um, yeah, man. I mean, the, look, I, I don't know what else to say other than, you know, that's kind of what it is. Um I, I didn't hear too much from the press conference that maybe uh, Beasley leaving Adam Beasley leaving. <laughs> I mean, that, that was news to me. I didn't know he was leaving. So that's honestly the biggest thing I got out of it. Besides the joint practices. I don't think there was too much to be said there. I really don't. Did you guys read into anything? Was there anything that you guys took from that, that you thought was very interesting or um, you didn't like about it or you did like about it or, you know, created more of a question for you. Um, I, I know each person gets one question to ask usually from the media. I'm just usually surprised with some of the questions that um, about what he says, right? About, about how he goes into it. Fantasy says TD admits he's a troll. I'm not a troll. <laughs> Marcus J said, I only caught the tail end. Marcus, what's up, brother? Uh, Cisco says, Coach Flo understands what two is trying to say. Why doesn't the media? Um, because the media's job is to create headlines and create clicks. I mean, that's that's there's your reason, Cisco. The, I, the media is not there to give an accurate statement of how things are. They're there to give a controversial side to a particular topic so that they can get clicks and readers and all of that stuff. The best part about my channel or Miami sports music is I try, I want to make the show about somebody else. I want to make the show about you, the fans. I want to make the show about, you know, whoever's on my show. Because I don't ever want it to get it. Like, I have my opinions of things, and I, I don't mind saying my opinion. But a media's job 
fantasy said Amedia's job is to get under the truth, asking questions in every angle. Not anymore. That should be what the media's job is, but it hasn't been like that in years, years, a hundred percent years. Um, I mean, that's just my thought on it. 78 likes. Uh, can we get to, can we get to 90? Can we get to 100 guys? Can we get to 100 likes? Come on. Would love to get to 100 likes. At least beat yesterday's, which I think was 90s. So 12 away from 90. So can we get 91, 92? But if we get to 90, I want to get to 100. Um, Vince Panel says, not just sports media only. You know, you're right. I mean, I, I got you. I agree. Um, Brian says, you wanted to trade Gusecki, right? Wouldn't you say he is a top 10 f- tight end right now? Uh, I'll do you one better. A- According to the outlook, all right, so so there's two different ways to look at this, Brian. One way is to look at the numbers. The other way is to look at this from an eye, just an eye point of view, like an eye test. The eye test says he's a top, top, top five wide receiver. I mean, top five tight end. I mean, honestly, that's, that's what the eye test will tell you. The, and... I think it's an average eye test. I'm not talking about somebody who knows like football in depth and in detail. I'm talking about the average fan. So yes, I do think that they will. But the second thing to be said is I don't even think he's in the top 15. Because he doesn't play tight end. So somebody brought up to me, I think it was TD last week on this panel, that said he only plays 17% of the snaps in the tight end position. When he's on the field. That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. So, you know, I think that that, you know, I hope that answers your question. Um, but, you know, that that's just my valid opinion of it. Um, uh, Mr. Ballgame, do you think, I do think Flores likes Tua, though. Otherwise, he wouldn't have ha- had those one-on-one meetings with the kids every week. I agree with that. 78 likes, guys. Come on, let's get to 85. Um, 100%. I 100% agree with that. Uh, guys, any donation, even if it's a dollar right now, um, gets you automatically entered into win the donation. So forget the $5. Even if you guys donate a dollar, I will put you into the donation uh, swag giveaway. Um, so donate to the channel. Helps the channel grow. If anybody donates $100 or more, you will get an autographed item of a current or former player. Including whatever you want from this uh, list of prizes here. I'll also let you choose one of those. Uh, mostly slap. I think Aseki is going to be like a Ryan Tannehill. If we get rid of him, he will pop up in a different franchise, and he will at least – he's at least with a second rounder, though. Um, It depends on the I, – I, I, when it comes to tight ends, it truly depends on the offense that you run and how you utilize your tight end. There are some teams that utilize their tight end as another offensive lineman. There are some teams like the Oakland Raiders, Oakland, the Vegas Raiders, that still that use their tight end as a wide receiver, like Waller. So it all depends on the type of offense that you're kind of setting the pace to. So you know, I I, I think that you know that that would be the case. Brian is so right. Gasecki goes with Chargers with Herbert. It's a wrap, and even Green Bay with Rodgers, he's going off. Again, you're I, I'm, we're making the same point. I think it's the offense he goes to. I think it would be the offense that he goes to. That's just my opinion of it. A big tight end is a short quarterback's best friend. Well, two is short, but he's also left-handed. So I don't know if that plays a factor into anything either. Guys, 78 likes. Come on, hit that like button. At this point, I just want to get to 80. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I will be so sad if we get rid of him. No, I'm not saying that it's going to happen anytime soon. 
And by soon, I mean at least by the beginning of the year. <laughs> uh, what is the physical stats on long? Somebody want to answer that? What's the physical stats on long? Height, weight, 40-yard time. I'd like to know all that. All right, guys. You had me out for four hours today. I don't think I can do this anymore. I'm exhausted. I'm working on two hours of sleep. I, I, I tried to stay on as much as I can with you guys today. Um, we didn't quite hit 100 people for likes, but that's all right. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Right? Um, I think we got to like 52, 53 donations uh, for the week, which is going to be awesome. Vince Fantasy Panel says he's 6'5", 253 pounds. Um, I'm not answering any more questions, Brian. I'm exhausted. If you guys donate to the channel, I will answer more questions, but I can't do it. Like, I'm I'm struggling here. Uh, get used to the idea of Gusecki not being in Miami, D-Dub says. Yep, I agree. Um, Brian, I want to see you come back. I'm going to answer your question just because I want to see you come back. Make sure you come back to the channel and you like and subscribe it. I think we're going uh, 13 and 4 this year. I think we're going 13 and 4 this year. Um, 79 likes. Come on, get to 80. Any donations to the show help me out. Help out the uh, the brand and the podcast network. If you guys want to sign up to become a member, make sure you guys do that. Get you some well-earned rest, Stephen. Thank you for your hard work, brother. Hey, no, I appreciate you. Rob, you were absolutely amazing. Amazing. You donated so much this week, bro. I, I'm so grateful for you, Rob. So grateful. Um... There's 80 likes. That's what's up. Yo, we AFC championship game bound. Hashtag facts. Yes. 100%. We are definitely. We are definitely that. Brian, if you also want to uh, become a member, you can be like my man Marcus and D-Dub. D-Dub and Marcus, tell Brian how awesome it is to be a member of the channel. Uh, yeah, kind of tapped out on the donations myself. <laughs> Big time. Much respect to your hustle and grind, Steven. Great show. Nah, man. Great show to you. Like, I I, I, uh, I do this for you guys. And and, and 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 it's real easy to say, nah, man, you do it because, you know, I, I do it because I love it. But I, ha I could have done this in any way, shape, or form that I wanted to, right? Like, I could have picked any format to kind of do this show. And I wanted to do it with the fan in mind. And I really mean that when I say it. I do it for the fans. Because I am a fan. So, you know, I, I um Yeah, I, I think I think it's awesome. Um I would not have it any other way than hanging out with you guys every morning. I don't know if four hours is what I can do. Um Cisco said I would bet a thousand dollars on us winning over nine games this season. Cisco, I don't bet anymore. August 13th, 2017, not one gamble. Yep, true story. Almost four years of, of recovery from gambling. But I, I'll, I'll talk about it. I, I still find it fascinating. Over-unders and all that kind of crap. D-Dub, being a member is great. You get the perks, but the biggest is the union with and the knowledge of fans, Brian. See? See, Brian, look at D-Dub. D-Dub knows. D-Dub knows. Marcus, tell him what it's like to be a fan, to be a YouTube member. Rob, tell him what it's like. I don't bet no more either because I'm a sore loser. Uh, Marcus, I don't gamble either. Nasty habit. Well, guys, I appreciate you guys donating to my channel this week. All of you. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Because I know you're not doing it to try to win something, at least from you guys. I know you guys are doing You guys want to, don't get me wrong, but 
you guys are doing it because you support the brand. And I really, that means, that means a lot to me. I'm not going to get emotional the way I did yesterday. I'm not going to cry at the end of the show because I'm too tired to cry. <laughs> That's real. Uh, 80 likes. I was seeing if anybody else was going to hit that like button to see if we get to 85. Let's sneak up on in there. 15 away from 90. It's 1221, right? I'll stay on for another nine minutes. I'll stay until 1230 for you guys and do officially four hours. I'll do four hours with you. It's great being a member, Brian, for real. Perks and the Finlaws are great in this group. See, Brian, you want to sign up, bro? You want to become a member? Oh, two of pops off. Yeah, man, that makes all of us. A hundred percent. That makes all of us. All day. All day. Yep. Gasecki six six two sixty. Very comparable to 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 long. D dub put. Yep. Definitely. Cisco. That's what I do as a side hustle. Keeps me out of the BS I used to be in. Plus, not trying to sound big headed. I'm really good at it. Cisco. All the more power too. I know that there are people that can do it and have it. I am not one of those people. So, bro, if you got it, get it. Do your thing, my guy. I'll, I'll, hey, I'll promote that kind of like I, I, I still like one of the. Uh, so if you if you watch my afternoon show, I'm a big uh, movie guy. So I always do like the Back to the Future DeLorean thing when I'm talking at the beginning. All right, guys, let's get back in the DeLorean. Let's hit 88 miles an hour and let's go back in time. And um, I always talk about the sports almanac and Back to the Future. That I wish I could have the sports almanac and Back to the Future, bro. Like it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, if I had that, I would be straight up. <laughs> but then I guess it'd be cheating, right? But man, like I, I, I would have killed to have the sports almanac back in the that from that movie. Killed. Uh, Ortiz, you and me both. I love fantasy football, dude. I uh, did fantasy football for years. Looking at like a three-time fantasy football champion. I was a beast. Uh, if you go on TikTok, so many delusional TikTok fans think we're only going nine and eight. Bro, they can think that all that they want, man. We're straight up going 13 and four, bro. That's what I think. 13 and four. I'm Dolph fan. What's up? I know, right? All right, guys, about five more minutes and then I'm getting off. Can we get to 85 likes? We're at 80. Can we get a couple more donations? Even if it's a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar. Um, if anybody does donate a hundred dollars or more, you will get to pick whatever you want on this list, and I will do a uh, giveaway of a autographed item from a former or current Miami Dolphins player. If anybody donates $100 between now and when we get off in five minutes. Uh, the bills will be hard to improve. Um, Marcus says 20 and 0. Says Gortiz, 13 and 4, 14 and 3. That's what I feel I see it happening. Bro, we're going to kill it this year. We're going to straight murder it. Murder it. That's what I think. It's going to be awesome. Everything is awesome. Uh, fantasy panel, take risk in life, invest in yourself, and believe in your investments. If not, you'd be sitting on the same seat. You woke up and wait on hope. Wishing and praying and hoping. And, yep, I remember that. Uh, I agree. That's why I'm doing this, fantasy. I I am betting on myself. I am straight betting on myself. Oh, shout out to EM, baby, with the $10 donation. <laughs> mm. 
Much love to you, homie. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I love it. Thank you, EM. Seriously. Got like three more minutes, guys. Four more minutes. Brian Williams, do you want Julio Jones? Um, I'm leaving money on the nightstand. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all are the best fans, though. You have me rolling. Rolling. I'm coming through. Hashtag awesome. I bet, I bet y'all don't uh, donate to the channel. I, I bet, I bet I don't get at least five donations between now and the end. Remember, you could be a dollar. I bet I don't get at least five donations before I end the show in the last three minutes. I bet I don't. You won't do it. You won't do it. Uh, Mister Ball Game says I just put ten k every year specifically for gambling. I don't spend a penny more, regardless. Everyone knows needs to know their limits to each his own. That's what I say. I can't do it. I know my limits. I've done that for a very, very long time. Ian throwing nickels like like manhole covers. <laughs> that is tremendous. Just joking, Ian. <laughs> uh, nah, man. I'm, I'm telling you, the moment I turn this camera off, I'm straight up going to bed. Like, in the sack. By the way, just so everybody knows, I'm going to do the giveaway first thing on Monday morning show. Because I'm like taking the weekend off. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not. I can't do it. Marcus J said, if I would, I could. Uh, if I could, Stephen, I would. Marcus, you've already donated, bro. Don't even be like that, man. You, you, you're that guy. And you're a member of the channel. It's all love here, homie. And if you can't donate, I'm not mad at you either. All I want you to do is like and share everywhere that you can. That's real. I can't grow without the likes and the shares. The money the money helps to be able to do things that I want to do and get better equipment and, and all that other stuff. But, bro, on some real stuff, I can't, I can't do it by myself. Mr. Ball Game, $10 super sticker. That's one. Can we get four more? In the next three minutes, y'all won't do it. Y'all can't do it. Shout out to Mr. Ball Game. Mr. Ball Game, that's awesome. I appreciate that, man. You know what's awesome about like M and Ball Game? Like they they, they both do their own thing and and on YouTube and they're still like giving and oh man, you guys are man, it you guys are awesome. Awesome. Absolutely amazing. Bet y'all won't get four more. I bet y'all I bet y'all don't get four more. I bet y'all don't get three more. Y'all y'all won't donate. Uh fantasy panel, you better go dream of two winning Super Bowl because that's the only place he'll be winning in your heads. <laughs> uh you have a blessed day. Catch you all next time. Had to put the two a hate comment before you go. Hey, I love you, brother. I definitely love you guys. Uh, 81 likes. I like it. I like it. Ball game is king. Logo defender. I like it. Stephen D, keep on that grind. Keep doing your thing. Uh, already ahead of the game, fam. I have huge holdings in Arethium, uh, Carnando, Bitcoin, and Polygon right now. So we good, homie. A hey, ball game. <laughs> Shout out to you in, in cryptocurrency, my guy. You know, I, I need to be like I, I'm going to start accepting crypto. I'm, I, I, I haven't got into that. I tried to, and to me, it was too much like gambling, so I had to get out because I just I was looking at it every day. It was not a good thing for me. Uh, fins up, great show. Keep up the great work. Cisco said. Cisco said the line week one, Pats minus three. Three, that's a free pick. Take the Dolphins plus the money in the under. Dolphins 28-10 all day. 
I bet y'all don't get one more one more donation in the last sixty seconds. I bet y'all don't give me one more donation. I bet it won't be a hundred dollars. <laughs> don't nobody want that uh, autographed item from a former or current player, and to pick out their own thing off of that prize list that you see there. They don't want it. They don't want it. Won't nobody donate in the last minute. It's the future, fam. Yo, hey, I agree. I agree. I know it is. And until I'm good on on the money side of things and getting this thing up and going and moving, I, I'm not touching it. And I know now's the time to get in. But if I ain't got it, I ain't got it. And I'm not trying to act like I got it when I don't. So... Yeah, but I mean, I, I I agree. I think cryptocurrency is definitely where it's at. Um, ball game. Marcus said, "Still live, crazy." Yeah, I know, man. I'm on four hours. I'm, I, but nobody's gonna donate in the last minute. I'm live on air. Don't nobody want to do that. They don't want that life. They ain't about that life. They scared. They ain't about to donate in the last minute of me being live. Buy Dodge while it's worth it. Still, soon it'll be unaffordable. Let Dodge bill y'all bankroll. You know I'm telling you guys, hurry up and buy a ball game. Good stuff. Make some. Marcus says, Steven, go get some sleep. <laughs> uh, that's a beautiful thing. Let them sleep. Uh, but it hey, makes it much sweeter. And can we get four more likes? Can we get one more donation before I go to sleep? <laughs> Y'all won't do it. Uh, 82 likes. Y'all won't give me three more. Well, if we get to 85 likes, I'm going to try to stay on to get 100 likes. That's real. We get to 85 likes. I'm going to stay on to get to 100. I'm going to give you guys five more minutes. My goal was 100 likes today. I want to get it. And if I have to work that hard for it, I can at least say I got 100 likes live while I was on the channel so far. I'm not ever going to work that hard for it anytime soon. But I want to get to 100 likes. $100 today in Dodge can change your life in five years. IMO. Rob G said $3 super sticker. Rob's killing the game, son. Rob gonna have Rob's gonna win every prize. Rob's gonna win everything. He's gonna save everybody on shipping, though. <laughs> Shout out to you, big homie. You said a hundred dollars a day in Dodge can change your life in five years. A hundred dollars today in Miami sports music can change. Uh, how amazing your content is in the next five months. <laughs> uh, Marcus said, $5, go get some sleep and enjoy your weekend, bro. Uh, I love it. I love you guys. You guys are so awesome. Uh, you guys are the best fans in the freaking world. I tried to buy a thousand Dodge last night, but Coinbase was tripping, shaking my head. I sold the thirteen I had last month and didn't see it recovering, but I still killed. Marcus, you're right. I just need to go. No, they're not giving me my eighty-five likes. They don't love me. You guys do, but they don't. You guys are awesome. Um, I will do the drawing first thing Monday morning. Um, you're breaking me, Marcus. Sit down, bro. <laughs> Here's the real reason. I mean, look, I appreciate the, the love in that, but y'all have me laughing in here, and sometimes I just need to laugh. And so I feel like that's the best medicine sometimes is laughter. And y'all be having me wilding out in here, especially when Pete and M and Cisco 
all y'all just go at it. It's it's good stuff. And D Dub. That's what's crazy about this, right? Like none of us have really even ever met each other in real life. And I still feel like I spend every day with y'all. Y'all like I spend more time with y'all. Am I doing a show this weekend? Bruh. I might get on somebody else's show. I don't know if I'm gonna do one. 84 likes. Come on, if y'all hit that one more like, I'm gonna be so mad. Cause that means I gotta stay up and try to get to a hundred likes. I got to do it. I don't know. Mr. Ballgame, I'm certain the people here have liked the stream. I look, there's 18 people watching <laughs> after four hours. <laughs> look, do I want to get to like a thousand or two thousand views and three thousand views like the like like you know, the, the rest of the guys on the panel, I do, but you know, I'm, I'm moving this thing. Like I'm, I'm doing, I'm building it. And I feel like the way to build it is to, is to develop relationship with all you guys and not for the sake of building it for that, but the, to understand how genuine, like I'm trying to be and how, how genuine I'm trying to, trying to do it. Marcus said, no chat, don't do it. They had 85 likes. We need 15 more likes. I'm staying on until I get a hundred. I'm going to stay on until I get 100. I'm going to stay on until I get 100 likes, Marcus. They hit 85. I said I would do it. I be daring y'all. How am I going to not dare myself and then not do it when it happens? But y'all need to stay up here with me. <laughs> I can't do this alone. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. How many you got? Uh, I have 85 likes. I need 15 more likes. Do I have to make 15 burners just to get you to go to sleep? <laughs> Greedy, aren't you? I like it. Hey, man, look, I my goal is to get to 100 likes. I want my 100 likes. Let's go. Wake up, you wake up everybody. Tell them to get on. Tell them I ain't left. I've been here all morning doing it. Let's go into the early afternoon. And then after I get off, Larry, you get on your channel and you take over the rest of the day. Hey, somebody, somebody just gave me the thumbs down. <laughs> Y'all, yo, if that's you, Marcus, trolling me, I will be. <laughs> Uh, they gave me the light back. <laughs> Everyone take your likes off. He will start screaming and never sleep. Oh, it was you, Pete. <laughs> oh, man. 86 likes. Let's go. Let's go. 14 more likes, people. 14 more likes and five more donations. Let's go. 14 more likes, five more donations. Let's go. We can do it. We can do it together. Uh, since you got a rock to 100, tell us what you think about the fence kicking situation. I have no problem with our kitchen situation. I think it's perfectly fine the way it is. I am interested about the punting situation on some real stuff because uh, this guy we got from Carolina had a big injury. So I am interested um, to see what happens with that, you know. Um, Hey, Larry, uh, LOL, Steven, I was just thinking about hopping on later. Larry, as soon as I finish getting my 100, I'm getting off. Can you confirm if you're going to get on? Because I'll send people over to your channel. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm interested to see what the punter is going to be like. Um, so it'll be, it, that'll be interesting. Um, let's see here. AB, confidence is good. Marcus, I'm just going to have to quote Shaggy on that one. It wasn't me. <laughs> you think nine, you delusional kid. I could kind of see ten. I don't know what you guys are talking about, though. 86 likes. Come on, 14 more likes. Let's go. 
This is how you guys help me right now. You guys share the link and tell all your Dolphin friends to hop on and hit that like button. I know you guys have Dolphins friends. I know you guys have a lot of them online. Fins fan, just getting to have lunch soon, potential rainy day here in Tampa. Um, no confidence. 17 and 0, 13 and 4 is my realistic prediction. That's mine. I've been saying 13 and 4 is what I think. Um, just gonna have lunch soon. Well, I already said that. Um we went 0 and 16 with trash on offense and opportunistic opportunistic defense. We're a whole lot better on offense, and the defense has a chance to be elite. Hashtag facts, son. Facts. Oh, people are starting to leave my stream. Now I'm only at 16. I guess they're kind of sick of me this morning. I probably overdid it. Uh, I don't want our games. Rainy day, good day for unplanned show. Yep. So you're you're saying after the after I hit my 100 likes, when that happens, you're getting on? Four and one. No stupidity, it's delusional to say 17 and 0, but that's what we doing. <laughs> I ain't mad at you, homie. Do you think we'll be a battle between Blake Ferguson and Rex Sahanra, which are long snappers? No, Blake. Blake's good. Blake is good. 87 likes, guys. 87 likes. Let's go. Let's get to 100. I'm a few hours north of you, Finn's fan panel. It's been raining here since last night, off and on. Uh, looks like 2 p.m. today. All right, so, hey, after we hit 100 likes here at 2 p.m., you guys got to go to Finn's fan's panel. That's Larry's channel. Go to Finn's fans panel at 2 p.m. today. After after we hit 100 likes here. And then I need you to go give him 100 likes. <laughs> go make it happen. I need 13 more. I'm serious, guys. Come on now. Help me out. Uh, I used to be a fan in school saying we're going undefeated every year. That was high school. I learned. I learned real quick. Uh, Dolphin, there will be battles at every position. Is there another long snapper in the building? If there is another long snapper in the building, there's definitely competition. I don't think there is. 88 likes. Eighty-eight likes. Eighty-eight likes. Uh eighty-eight likes. The Dale Earnhardt Jr. number eighty-eight. Larry is my uncle, but he doesn't know that we are related. <laughs> I did not call you stupid or delusional. Cloudy in Columbus rained here yesterday. I said, think it's 17 and 0. Just put you up on Twitter, Marcus J said. See, Marcus, you're the man guy. You're telling me to go to sleep, yet you're still helping me. That's love. That's so love. You said stupidity, so called my action stupid. <laughs> Guys, it's hashtag spread kindness Friday. There's going to be no fighting here in the last few minutes. By the way, now I'm down to 13 people watching. <laughs> I'm losing people, guys. What's up? Is it really that bad? The show can't be that bad right now. Um, Trying to give Steven something to talk about after four hours. <laughs> Hey, amen to that, bro. We've talked about everything this morning. Ferguson isn't any other isn't any different than the other players. He will be challenged like everyone else. Twenty and zero is the reason for even being a fan, being delusional. I'm going over with the DNA, Larry. Let's go to Mari. <laughs> Mari, <laughs> that's not my baby daddy, Mari. Uh uh, that's not my baby daddy. Look, he got eyes, I got eyes. He got eyes, I got eyes. That's definitely him. <laughs> uh, these are the la these last three drafts we were building the foundation. This is the team we're ready to take over, Cisco says. Yes. Rob G says, no, the show is great, brother. <sighs> Guys, 12 more likes and I'm going to go to sleep. 
I know, guys, look at me. I'm exhausted. I need 12 more likes. Okay? I need 12 more likes. Sadie Safi Dean said, Albert Wilson might be carving out a nice role for himself. He's catching a lot of balls out here. I hope that's what he's catching. I hope that that is the case. Al Preston William balls out too. 89 likes. Come on, 11 more. Eleven more likes. And I'm going to take a nap. Actually, probably sleep till I gotta go to my evening event. Uh, because my show in the afternoon is pre-recorded, so I don't even have to do the show live this afternoon, which is pretty good. Because I'm exhausted. And everything's done for it. Eighty nine, eighty nine, eighty nine, eighty nine, eighty nine. We at eighty nine, bro. That's that's eleven more likes to get to one hundred. Hey, I said five more donations too, didn't I? I said it could be a dollar. Let's go, five more donations. I see y'all forgetting about my donations over there. I do say if you donate $100 or more, you get an autographed item, former or current player. I'm just saying. Plus, you get to pick anything that's on this list. Uh, Cisco Ortiz said, keep hitting that like button, fam. Yeah, but AB, how do you see nine? You think we getting worse with this receiving core? Darren Smythe says, one of the best parts of working with co-OC and tight end coach George Gossi is his ability to explain the offense from more than just one lens. But I'd rather the perspective of all 11 on the, but rather than the perspective of all 11 on the field. Says it's easy to see why he was promoted. I like that. I like that. Mr. Ballgame says, I'm out, folks. Got to go see a man about a horse. Mr. Ballgame, I love you, brother. I appreciate it, man. I'd love to come on to the show with you, Reason, and uh, Richmond. I don't know if you checked out that interview I did with Richmond, man, but make sure you check it out, bro. Uh, yeah, man, dude. I, look, I like these players saying this stuff. This is the stuff I want to read. This is the stuff I want to read. I want to read about players seeing stuff with um, other Dolphins coaches and other Dolphins players. One of the things about that press conference that we saw earlier today is a lot of fans want to read between the lines, and that's tough, right? Because when you start to having to read between the lines of a coach um, or a player of that matter – it's then on you to interpret what he, what he was trying to say. And that's not fair because I don't think you'll ever truly get inside the head of anybody to be like, hey, look, this is what they're going to do. This is how they're they're going to go about it. Um, there, there's no way to do that. So when, when I hear, when I see Durham Smythe saying one of the best parts of working with the offensive coordinator and tight end coach George Godsey is his ability to explain the offense – for more than just one lens, says it's easy to see why he's promoted. That stuff is great to hear. That stuff is absolutely amazing to hear. That's the stuff I want to hear from the players because that lets me know that the coaching staff and the players are in sync. And I'm not talking about Justin Timberlake. Okay? That's what I want to see. And that's what I want to hear in more press conferences too. You know? 91 likes, let's go. Let's go. 22 people watching now, 23. Let's go, hit that like button. Guys, if you donate, even if it's a dollar, uh, I, I'm going to do a DWA swag bag giveaway on Monday, first thing Monday morning, for all the people that donated this week. I want to say we're at like 60 donations right now. Um. 
But if you get uh, any donation between now and by the time I get to 100, um, you get to pick anything you uh, – uh, you'll be entered to win anything on this list. If you donate $100 or more to the channel, you get to pick whatever you want on this list, plus I'll send an autographed item of a former or current player. Uh, today is hashtag spread kindness Fridays. Um, the other thing I'd love for all of you to go do right now is go to your social media, to Twitter, especially Twitter, because I do a lot of stuff on Twitter. Uh, please go to Twitter and follow me at Stephen D S K P L S K P L says for spread kindness, positivity, and love. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Let's go do that. Quick riddle, super sticker fuck. That's what's up. Just got your name in the drawing for some DWA swag. Love it. Love it. Marcus J says, I even made my dad like this show. He ain't even a Dolphins fan. Shout out to Marcus's dad, homie. Marcus and Rob G are doing it, bro. Y'all are doing it. And, Quint, and, and, and back to you. Back to you. Let's go. Well, y'all got me hyped now. I'm ready to go do another four hours. Let's go. Y'all don't get me going. Don't get me going. Don't get me. Boy, y'all start donating, hitting that like button. See if I don't go crazy. See if I don't go crazy again. 91 likes. Let's go. I need nine more likes and I need four more donations. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Bro, let's go. 91 likes. Uh, shout out to Marcus, though, making his dad like the channel. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Cisco says, no doubt, but I believe this team and coaching staff are ready to go on the next uh, uh, other. Bro, you are nuts. Four hours? Bro, I have been on since 8.25 this morning. It is now like almost 1 o'clock. So I guess it's over four hours now. It's almost 5. My goal is to get to 100 likes today, and the original goal is to get to 100 donations total, but that's okay, or 75. I think we're going to miss that by a few, um, but that's all right. So um, we're going to do it, though. We're going to, you know, this channel is going to grow, and it's going to grow because I'm dedicated to you guys and the people that are on here right now. You guys have been dedicated to me, and we're going to watch this thing grow into a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Here at Miami Sports Music. I'm super excited about the things we have coming up. Um, I just, I, matter of fact, you guys want to know what we have coming up? Let me show you. We got this. We got Allie. We got the Freak Show coming out at the end of this month. I am super excited about Allie coming on to the show. Uh, she's going to have her own podcast. Um, her, her, her dolphin super fan name is, uh, AKA doll freaky. Right. And so, um, you know, the freak show, Miami sports music podcast network is going to be awesome. I'm telling you when that drops, it's going to be wild. Uh, AB says Larry does four hours in his sleep. Yep. I'm doing four hours in my sleep right now. <laughs> Uh, how much Steven does how, that, that's how much Steven loves the fans bro that's why I became a member this man is awesome I appreciate it by the way I've never met Rob before Rob is literally a, like a true fan of the show and just very loyal and very like he shares me on social media all the time and just yo big time big ups to you Rob G and and the same thing with my man Marcus Marcus even getting his dad to like the show. That shout out to the homie. Eight more likes. Let's go. Let's get to 100. So we got that. And then I need you guys to go check out my man. What would Shula do? Uh, Wade. Wade's got a lot of cool stuff, guys. You guys got to go check out Wade. Wade stuff is so good. Um, love it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it, it's really, really, really good stuff. Um, make sure that you guys go check out Wade. What would you do? You guys can go on Miami Sports Music Podcast Network and check that out. And you guys can check out the lineup of things. We got Clock Blockers. 
We got What Would Shula Do and uh, our three affiliates, TD Finn's Talk, Dougley Do Wrong, and then our media director over here is also the lead writer at 305sports.net, Jamie Bahamas. Uh, so this is your Dolphins with Attitude podcast lineup right here. Uh, that is currently, we're going to have to add a few shows in there. Uh, Doll Freaky being one of them, the Freak Show. That's going to be awesome. So make sure you guys stay on the lookout for that. That's going to be good times, right? Um, guys, it's Spread Kindness Friday. Seven more likes to go to get to 100. I'm looking for four more donations, even if it's a dollar. The original thing was if you sp- if you do a donation of $5 or more, it gets you into the drawing. For the last half of the show, I've just been, if you donate anything, even if it's a dollar, your name goes into the pot, okay, uh, to try to win something. Um, we're, we're trying to grow a brand. We're trying to do something big. Uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to be a little busy once I go back on Facebook. I got like 10 admin notices. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 going to be it's going to be good times. Seven more likes, 93. Let's go. Let's go. Seven more likes. And um, yeah, and if anybody donates between now and the end of this show today, uh, by the way, you guys don't have to donate through YouTube. You can donate through Cash App that you see up there at the top right and or PayPal. My Cash App is the dollar sign Stephen D13. There's no fees on that, by the way, for anybody who wants to know. I do like Cash App a lot. And then PayPal uh, is at Stephen D Report. Um, or forward slash Stephen D report for PayPal. So make sure you guys go. Uh, if you guys don't want to do it through the YouTube, you guys can do it through there. And then also make sure you guys sign up to become a member, right? Looking at the member stuff real quick. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff. A lot of people that are on this channel, a lot uh, are members of the show. People like Saxman J. Will or Marcus. Uh, Jason Miller or Chef Zhu or D-Dub or A-Rod or Rob G or Estefan. Shout out to all you guys. All of you are absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I, yeah, I love it. I love it. Marcus, seven more likes, guys. Come on, let's get Steven some sleep. Facts, bring back the throwback. Brandon, any shows this weekend? Uh, no shows this weekend, Brandon. I might I might get on somebody's stuff live. I don't think I'm going to go live. That could change if it does. You want to know? If you know, follow me on Twitter, at Stephen D. S. K. P. L. At Stephen D. S. K. P. L. Follow me on Twitter right now. I need you to go do that. Go follow me on Twitter. Uh, come on guys, get your cousins to like the show. If you have to two and four minute offense, defense workouts. Yes. We're going to get the seven more likes, bro. I'm determined. We're going to get to 100. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe a pre-record from a dolphin's corner. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, if I have to, I will. We can make that happen. Uh, Shout out to uh, the morning show here on Wednesday. We're going to have Richmond Webb on the morning show on Wednesday, guys. It's going to be dope. I'm going to need you guys to come check into the show on Wednesday morning. We're going to talk about the Dolphins. It's going to be awesome. Yo, bro, I would like it two more times. I got two extra accounts. New back. (laughs) I like it. I like it, Brian. Be back. (laughs) I am not mad at it right now. However I can get to 100, I'm all for it. Let's go. Uh, Lost Dolph. Dolphin Nacos Canal, a.k.a. the Dolphin Maniacs. What's up, big dog? What's up, big dog? Hey, shout out to you, man, watching the channel. 
Make sure you hit that like button on your way in. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. Just to let everybody know what we're kind of doing, because I think there's some new people in the room right now. Uh, make sure you guys um, go check out, uh, what should we call it? Uh, Spread Kindness Friday. Spread Kindness Friday is something we do every Friday um, here. 94 likes, six more. Let's go. Um, I'm giving away, if you donate anything to the channel, through the Super Chat, through Cash App, or PayPal, then you will win one of these six things. NorCal t-shirt, East 32 tailgate, Miami Vice colored hat and shirt. It's dope. I mean, super dope. And the material's breathable. Oh my God, I love the material of the shirt. And the, the DWA shorts, those are straight fire. And a DWA swag bag. So if you donate anything, right? could be a dollar we were doing it at five dollars this week and for this last hour of the show i've said look you donate anything to the show i will put your name in the bucket you guys can do it through cash app you can do it through paypal you can do it through youtube okay um make sure you guys go do that make sure you subscribe to the network and sign up to become a member we're pretty awesome and make sure when you set, when you hit that like button and subscribe, you set the alerts on. Do not forget to hit the alerts. YouTube messes you up. You think you subscribe to somebody, but you're not. You have to hit the alerts button. And you have to hit all alerts on. So that way you know every time I'm on. Uh, Lost Off the Maniac says, uh, are we going after Melvin Ingram? No. I think it's a smoke screen. Uh, I think if we, we would have signed him already, personally, I, I would love for us to. I'd love to eat my words on this one. But if we haven't done it by now, we're not doing it. That's just my opinion. Now, 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 you know what? Let me contradict myself and say this, though. I will say that there have been no post-June 1st cuts by any of these teams. So it is entirely plausible that the Dolphins are waiting for something. Um, and, and so it, it could be, it definitely could be shout out to Marcus J with the $1 donation. Marcus is back in there like swimwear. Hello. Marcus, didn't you mean to put that decimal behind the other, the, behind the zeros? <laughs> shout out to you, Marcus. I love you, man. I appreciate it. TD said that we're signing Melvin Ingram days ago. Guess he was wrong again. I Look, I, I wish we were. I I like him. I think he gives us amazing depth. But if he ain't signed yet, I don't see him being signed. That's just me. Hashtag Marcus says, nope. <laughs> Come on, guys. Six more likes. Give me to 100 likes so I can go. Help me out. Help me help you. You guys are trapped here just like me. I'm trapped. Quick, quick. Get me out the closet, closet. Uh, uh, the Bills suck, man. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. A trade for someone wanting a wide receiver of ours. Jakeem Grant all day. 96 likes. Four more likes, and we get to 100. I bet you I bet y'all don't give me a couple a two more donations though before I get four more likes. I bet y'all don't give me two more donations before I get two more likes or four more likes. I bet y'all can't do it. I know y'all won't do it. Y'all ain't about that life. Y'all ain't about that life. Y'all are not about that life. No, sir. Read. 96 likes. Let's go. 96 likes. Come on, get to 100. Jets being better than the Trash Allen next year. Wow. Whoa. That's a bold statement. I'd love to see it. That's a bold statement. Uh-oh, Marcus, Marcus calling my bluff. 
Marcus calling my bluff with another one dollar donation. Marcus calling my bluff. Brian in my dreams. <laughs> I like it. Four more likes, guys. 96 likes. Come on, get to 100. Uh, Marcus called my bluff, boy. Shout out to Marcus. Shout out to the homie Marcus. Marcus, don't waste your strip club dollars. Oh, there is, it's not being wasted here, big homie. We're doing big things over here at Miami Sports Music. You, you stay and subscribe and check it out. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. You're going to love it. You're going to fall, fall in love with us. Don't make me get my dad to donate. I bet you don't do it. I bet you don't get your dad to donate. You won't. You won't do it. You won't get your dad to donate. Prayer Warrior, $5. Shout out to Prayer Warrior. $5 donation. Love it. Love it, guys. I'll say this, uh, Prayer Warrior, because uh, I haven't seen you in the room a lot. Number one, welcome. Uh, oh, that's my dad. <laughs> Uh, I was about to. I was about to welcome to uh, and welcome prayer warrior. I appreciate it. Welcome. I really, really, really do. Um, love it. You're rich, Stephen. Need no. I'm not, man. This money goes right back into the channel. Here's some real stuff. It really does. Like I, I, I uh, pay a lot of monthly subscriptions to make sure I can, you know, upload certain things and have certain um, stuff to be able to make uh, all the uh, fancy schmancy graphics and. And all that. So, you know, a lot of a lot of this money goes right back into it. Like it really does. Um, the money that's being donated right now is going back to the opportunity for me to be able to make uh better better quality stuff. Um, I'm not the best graphics person, so I'm interested in getting some better graphics quality people in here. Um I want this thing to grow. I want this thing to be legit. So that's where the money goes. And that's honest. That's honest to God. That's where it's going right now. So it's going back into Miami sports music for a variety of different things. Um, and so, you know, every dollar helps. I really mean that. I don't care if you don't. And I don't care. Here's some real stuff. The donations are great and they are helping. But how I grow is through likes and shares. That's how I do it. I can't do it any other way. Uh, I want to open up my bilingual Dolphins fan channel. Hey, yo, I got a surprise for you, yo. You need to stay in the next 10 days. I got a huge surprise for you. I got a major announcement coming like in the next 10 to 14 days. We're just getting everything finalized. I got a major announcement. In the next 10 to 14 days. Be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that. I'm just waiting to get everything finalized. Once it's finalized, it's going to be a wrap. You're going to love that. You are going to love what Miami Sports Music is about to do with, with. Oh, yeah. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. And that's where the money's going. Like money is going to that. It's awesome. Finn subscribers to show because this is a great channel from all Finn's fam. So please make this show great. Stetson, I appreciate it. I really do. You don't know. Like I feel very blessed and grateful that I have the support I have from a lot of you. Stetson, you know, D-Dub, A-Rod, Rob G, A-B. Pete, you know, um, Cisco, everybody, whether you donated a dollar or you or you donated your time to just watching me and sharing and subscribing and liking like all that means the world to me. It means the world. 
Can we get Le'Veon Bell to show up at OTAs today? <laughs> uh, no, sir. That's not happening. Uh, Cisco said, when she get on, most likely, most definitely going to be checking her out. So, uh, Allie just moved into her new house this weekend. Uh, so, as soon as Allie gets settled in, uh, the very first room she is doing is her man, or her, her man cave. I'll say her man cave. Her uh, woman cave. Her dolphins cave. And um, that's that's where it's gonna that's where it's gonna grow. It's gonna be a big deal. It's going to be awesome. That would be great. El Dolphinatico's going viral. Hey, hit me up on Twitter at Stephen D S K P L. Seriously, I'll tell you behind closed doors what I got going on. You'll love it. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. Only three more likes. Get your burners out. <laughs> Shout out to Marcus with the $2 donation. Love it. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. 97 likes. Come on, guys. Let's get three. Three more. Three more. What's your Twitter? All right, can you see right down below? At Stephen D. S. K. P. L. Spread kindness, positivity, and love. At Stephen D. S. K. P. L. You can find me on Twitter, find me on Instagram, find me on Facebook at that. At Stephen D. S. K. P. L. 98 likes, two more likes, y'all. I bet you I don't get one more big donation over. over I bet you I don't get a twenty dollar donation before I hit I hit a hundred likes. I bet you I don't get a twenty dollar donation before I get a hundred likes. I'm with you, Marcus. Shout out! Shout out to! Shout out to Rob G. Shout out to Rob G. Damn, I love this guy's grind and respect. Nah, man, I love you. I love your 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 <laughs> talk. AFC Dolphins five hour stream. You're grinding. Yeah, I'm about to. My wife about to be. Re, she real mad at me right now. So I, I need to be no Twitter nothing Dolphins or YouTube related this weekend. I think twenty dollar donation. Who's gonna do it? Who's gonna give me the twenty dollar donation before I get out of here with these hundred likes? Come on now. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on, baby. Prop G said, you need to rub my feet, bro. <laughs> Marcus J with a dollar donation. I love it. Steve D, are you a Pete to a hater fan? First of all, I love Pete. Second of all, I disagree with almost everything that he says. Everything. And uh yeah, yeah, I I, I am not a Tua hater. I am in support of Tua. Uh if everybody knows me, they know that I uh I love Tua Tunga Valoa. Marcus J one one dollar, one dollar. Awesome. D Dub, you sound like you could have been a preacher as well. Yeah, I'm. I, I, I um, am, I am an ordained minister, and uh, I do a lot of stuff with church. So yeah, that's that's the other side of my life. Guys, please let us make a hundred likes today. Lost off and maniacs. Good God, ladies and gentlemen, we got to a hundred likes. We did it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hit my goal today. Took me five hours, but I hit my goal. I hit my goal of 100 likes. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to you guys. 
Shout out to you guys. Who's going to give me the highest donation today? Who's going to do it? Highest donation. I'll get off the air. <laughs> Did you get the $20 donation? No, nah, I didn't get it. I was just calling out to see who was going to give me the highest donation today. Marcus with another $1 donation, though. Shout out to Marcus. I, 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 yeah, seriously. I try not to talk politics or religion on here. I try to keep it strictly football, baseball, basketball, football. But yeah, I am. I am. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Marcus. <laughs> One penny per like. <laughs> Rob G, $20. Yeah, baby. <laughs> hey, somebody gave me 99. I haven't got to 100 yet. Somebody just took away their like. Oh, they gave it back. Y'all playing with me. I see what y'all are doing. I see what you're doing. Playing with me. Playing with me. Shout out to Rob. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it, man. Jesus returning very soon. Get the word out. Hey, all the time, baby. On my grind, time to grind, time to shine. See, somebody's playing with me. I need somebody else to hit that one like so this person can stop messing with me because I'm at 99. I don't feel right. 98 with one down. Come on. Y'all are messing with me. Come on, y'all. 98 likes. Come on, y'all. Somebody's messing with me. Somebody is straight messing with me. Talk football. Talk football? I've been talking football for five hours. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That $20 cost you two likes. <laughs> Daniel. Oh, this is truly my number one show. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, Rob. You are my, you, I, I, I don't want to single out. I don't have any favorite children, but you're my favorite because I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. 98 likes. Uh, y'all, come on, y'all. Really? 99. Y'all are messing with my head. I hate it. 100 likes. All right. Don't don't hit it again. Don't do it. 102. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, one last thing I'll 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 end with a football note because this is a football channel. Um is Aaron Rodgers going to get traded to Miami? No. Not at all. No way shape or form. I'm going to have to put you in my show rotation with Larry, DDW, and TD. Those are the GOATs, guys. Seriously. Oh, 199 likes. Really? Somebody, Somebody's messing with me. 102 likes. Now let's get to 200. I'm messing with you. Talk AFC said. All right. All right. All right. I love you, man. You guys are great. You guys are great. Shout out to Rob G with the highest donation of the day of $20. Who's going to give me 21? I get 21, 21, 20, 20, 21, 21, 21, 21. Do I have 21? Do I have 21, 21, 21, 20, 20 going once, 20, 20 going twice, 20, 20 sold to the man whose name is Rob G. I like it. Uh, Coach Coip June and y'all are heard. Yeah. Coach Coop is, you know, uh, trying to get healthy, and um, he is a part of the channel. Uh, and so, you know, he's taking the summer off, but as soon as football season gets kind of back in full swing, uh, that is the goal, that he will be up there. So that will be a big deal. Um, yeah, so so it's – it's uh, shout out to Coach Coop. I'm excited about him coming on board. It's going to be big. 
uh, collab. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, I, I have affiliates is what I call it with D Dougley do wrong TD Finn's talk and coach coop. And then Wade has what would Shula do? And, uh, Allie coming at the end of this month, doll freaky. Um, she's got, uh, the freak show. Um, that's going to be an amazing podcast. Go check her out. Um, at dolphins, lady 99 at dolphins, lady 99. Um, that, so her show and Wade's show, what would Shula do, uh, are both on Miami sports music podcast network. So they will be on pod the podcast network. So, um, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Chris Georgia came no Tobin. <laughs> no shot. Hey, look, I, 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 I don't want to get into it with people in the local media. I just want to do my thing for the fans. And so that's what I do, man. I do everything I do for the fans. And Tobin, believe it or not, has been actually pretty good to Solo D and us when we try to promote like Solo D's music over the years. So shout out to him. And uh, Leroy and Tobin. Yeah, they've both been pretty good. And then, honestly, my favorite local guy from the local media is, is Alex Dunno. Alex is my brother. Love Alex Dunno. Absolutely love him. Um, there's nothing better than than listening to him. So uh, was at 103 and counting. Keep hitting that like button. Yeah, no, I can't do it no more, guys. I got to go. I got to go. All right. How many hours did I do today? So I did... 9 30, 10 30, 11 30, 12 30, 1 30. Five hours today. Five hours. So that's 25 likes an hour. I worked I worked hard for those 25 likes an hour. Um but hey, look, we're gonna get bigger and it won't be as hard to get a hundred likes. That is the goal. Brian, appreciate the love, brother. All right. Marcus, <laughs> with the last donation, $2. Go get some sleep. All right, I'm going to get some sleep, I promise. I promise I'm going to get some. All right. You guys are great. I love you guys. Y'all be good. Don't do nothing. I wouldn't. Oh, you guys, really? Y'all, this is what y'all going to do? Super sticker, $2. Really? That's what you guys are going to do? You guys are just going to keep it? Really? Really? D-Dub? Don't see? Y'all do this at the end of every show. And you know that it gets me every time. Stop it. Because this stuff does make me emotional. Marcus is about to open up a GoFundMe account for Steven. Oh, y'all are killing me, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Y'all are the best freaking fans there are in this entire world. There's nothing better than Miami Dolphin fans. The love, the support. Like, I am so happy that God made me a Dolphins fan. Like, seriously, I mean that with everything. Brian Williams said, "You stream more than some people stream whole uh, than pe than some of the people's whole streaming careers. You got that right." You got that right. I'm out, family. It's our time to take over. Fins up all day, all day, all day. Marcus J. Yo, I know, man. Prayer warrior and D Dub. Oh, my God, y'all. Really? Really? Two? Two? Oh, y'all are killing me. Y'all still coming with it? Come on. Let me go. Oh, my God. God, his wife's going to put him in the doghouse for the weekend. I'm already there, bro. <laughs> At least I could justify it and be like, honey, I was, I was making money. It was a dollar, but I'm making money. And, uh, yeah, so, um, <laughs> talk AMC Dolphins. 
Y'all don't do it no more. Don't hit that. Don't hit that donate button again. You won't do it. You won't do it. Rob G, you're going to make bro's wife. You put that on that chest. <laughs> this man rest. <laughs> you won't hit that like. You won't hit that donate button again. You won't do it. <laughs> D-Dub did it. Ah, oh, he did it again. Ah. Uh, but she don't like you streaming this long, but you the GOAT. Brian, the same way you told me you were leaving, I can't leave either. I appreciate that. I don't think I'm the GOAT by any stretch of the imagination. I am far from that yet, label, but I am trying to be there. That is the goal. Mm, Papa said, if you're going to do something, be the best at it. And so that's what I try to do. That's why I'm up. Like, so here's my day, guys. Why are you guys keeping on this, these, uh, uh, what should we call it? If you guys are going to keep on donating, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did the last 24 hours. Okay. So last 24 hours, Thursday. Okay. I did my afternoon show live with, um, not the best drawings kid, which you guys should do that. It was a really, really good show. Then after that, I had to do all this editing stuff for Julia, start the editing stuff for Julius Pro. It didn't even finish it. Then I had to pre record the afternoon show for today with Dolphins NYC. And I did that till like 10 o'clock. And then from like, I don't know, 10 30 to like 5 a.m., I was up just doing graphics for everything, for both shows, getting stuff ready for next week, just trying to get ahead. So I go to bed at like 5, 15, 5, 30, wake up to do this at at uh, probably 8, 8.05. I start, try to wait till last minute, hop into a cold shower, splash the cold water on my face. And then I've been up here now for five hours. So like for real, that's been, that's been like what the, like that's like when you guys donate a dollar or $2 or $5 or $20 or I've yet, I've yet to get the hundred yet. But when you guys donate all that kind of stuff, like all that money, like it makes it know that I'm worth it. Like it makes it know that the work that I'm putting in, because I'm putting, this is, this is it. This is what I want to do for 11. This is my full-time gig as far as I'm concerned. But what I want to do is I want to create content that is for the fans and for the fans only. And and so like that's that's what I'm doing, man. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm grinding so hard. That's why I'm okay putting in five hours right now. Like I'm exhausted. And I still have to make a phone call after this just to make sure the 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 afternoon show is going to be good. But bro, like I'm. It's a grind. It is a grind every single day. And um, there's days when they're good and there's days there's days that it's not. But, you know, look, I I know I when I was a kid, I had a piece of paper just like this. Right. And uh, on the paper, I wrote like all the things I wanted to do. I was like 11 years old. I might have been nine years old or 10 years old. And one of them was that to be a, a sports announcer, to be a sports radio personality. And here I am. I'm not doing it through ESPN or something like that. I'm doing it all on my own volition. There's no financial backing for this. I'm literally doing this out of my own pocket of what I do. So every dollar you spend helps out tremendously. And Solo's been like, you know, me and Solo have been tight for a decade, strong. And so, you know, the thing for us is, you know, he loves his music. I love doing this. And we're just out here grinding. And I know what I need to do is I need to have consistent content to make sure that, you know, the love for what you guys are watching every day is of top quality. Five hours is awesome. It's crazy. I don't know if I'm going to do it again anytime soon. I can tell you that. But I want you to know that's where my passion is. You think I would work five hours at a nine to five if I ha if I didn't have to? No, no way. I'm doing this because this is what I'm meant to do. This is what I love to do. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. 
So so that's kind of where it is. D-Dub with another $2. Come on, y'all. Come on, D-Dub. Does Nick Needham get re-signed? Uh, we'll wait to see. Secondary is pretty strong this year, so I'm interested to see what he looks like. The book's still out on that. Uh, Finn's fan panel is awesome. Steven, five hours. I'll pray for your marriage. Yep, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Damn, you're still on, homie? All day. Uh, Brian, you're getting real inspirational now. Hey, man. I'm telling you right now, Brian. Miami Sports Music will be the number one media outlet in um, South Florida in the next one to one to two years. We will be. I'm telling you. I'm telling you we will be because that's what I have in my mind. We're going to do everything from baseball to football to basketball to hockey to soccer. We're going to do – you know, nightlife in Miami. We're going to do food trucks, like like the food in Miami. We're going to do, you know, uh, we're going to do some amazing stuff with Dolphins fans. We're going to do some amazing stuff. Like I have all this stuff. That's the other thing too. If you guys only knew what was up here and what I have planned, oh my God, like that, that's crazy. And so, you know, the, I, at Talk AFC, I'm not even in Miami. I live in Baltimore. That's the other thing. I live in Maryland. I'm doing all this from Maryland. Everybody who works for Miami right now, like it, it's it's um it's crazy. I mean, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. T Dub, stop. Steven needs to get some sleep. <laughs> uh, how much you get per 100 hits? Answer in DM, please. Now, I don't mind answering that out loud to people. Um, honestly, I'm still trying to figure out YouTube algorithm, but basically, um, I think in the three weeks I've been on, because I don't like, so this is the way I was told to look at it. For every thousand views, it's like seven dollars, which is nothing. It's nothing. I can't. There, there's no way. So, um, you know that that's kind of that's kind of how that I was told to look at it. You know, from like a YouTube perspective point of view. So every thousand hit is like seven to ten dollars or something like that. And so, I haven't averaged a thousand on any of my shows yet. I'm averaging two to 400 views right now. So, you know, it's a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. The donations are what helped me kind of be able to pay for my monthly subscriptions and all the digital media stuff and all that. I'm like straight giving you guys an open curtain to wizard of Oz of how this works. Cause I don't want you guys to think I'm taking advantage of anything or anybody. Like I'm literally just trying like, yes, I, you know, it was, it was, it was things that, uh, you know, how do we go move forward with this? And and that's what I wanted it to be. So, yeah, no, no money's really going into paying any of my bills yet. I want it to, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not there yet. And it won't be for a while. So how do I get there? I get there with your help. I get there with people trying to spread this word that this show like I need to get to a thousand, two thousand, three thousand views a show, and then from there I think it'll take off from there. You know, that's what I think needs to happen. So, and and I need subscribers, and then my social media needs to go up. So, like, follow if you're not following me on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, go do it. I need I need those likes, I need those follows, I need those shares. In order for me to be able to sell this thing to eventual, like, you know, look, I want to be able to get, you know, sponsors and stuff for this, but you know what they're looking at? They're looking, you know, they're looking at that. Yeah. Finn's panel says I get $7 of 80s and average about a thousand per show this month. Yep. 
if I'm reading that correctly, a thousand views per show is about seven dollars. That's about right. But I'm not reaching a thousand on my show yet. I mean, if I'm looking at it and and I'll again, I'm gonna give you guys straight insight to to just stuff because I, I, I want to be transparent with you. Um, I don't ever want people to think I'm taking advantage of uh, them or anything. Uh, so your channel, customized channel, uh, content. Live. All right. I am. All right. So right now I've had 417 views today. Um, yesterday I had 364, 234, 300, 513. Um, when I had Finn side on, I had 750. When I had TD on, I had over a thousand, but I myself am adding anywhere from two hundred to four hundred per channel. About well, views a, 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 a video, a live video. You know, so yeah, I don't, I don't look. I want you guys to grow with me. I want you guys to see the beginning of this. AB says transparency. I like it. Yep. Um, what up everybody? How y'all feeling? Much love and respect. Yep. Advertisement. Yep. Nice. Finally, a, a lot of YouTubers don't do this. Yeah, they don't like, you know, so, uh, whoever thinks they're being taken advantage of can meet me in the street. <laughs> Steve, do you know who uncle Lou is? I've heard the name before. I'm not exactly sure. I listen to DDW. His logo looks like yours, bro. Did he copy you? No, uh, uh, not at all. As a matter of fact, he you talking about the the um, this one? That I if if you're talking about that, I would say ninety percent of all of our logos are predicated around the dolphins. Um, are dedicated around the Dolphins. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Good night, Steven. See you Monday. Guys, want to help donate through Cash App, PayPal, and Patreon. YouTube takes huge fees from us YouTubers. Yeah, I have not really even started to notice that till I started first seeing that. I had no clue how much YouTube was taking, but I also want to make it easy for people. A lot of people don't have those or don't like Cash App or don't like YouTube and Patreon. And so if 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 YouTube is the platform that I'm using, eh. What made you switch from being a radio? I didn't grow up here. I grew up in North Carolina and long before the Panthers were there. Yeah, so I I'm a Dolphins fan for life, my guy. I bleed aqua and green. Uh, uh, orange and aqua, whatever. I'm tired. Uh, TD's always hitting numbers. Yeah, TD's TD. If you really want to see somebody who's doing this right, I look at TD and Reason, and I feel like those two guys are, from a YouTube perspective, they're doing it the right way. They're doing it, and and they're good at it, and and they're great at what they do. Like I give both of them props, and Doug too. Doug is the same way. Doug, and Doug's up there with them, a hundred percent. So those those three guys right there, you know, you go and look at their numbers and everything. They're they are doing, they're doing the thing, man. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, let's see here. Give me one second. I got uh, people texting me now. Um, and so yeah, that's that's kind of. Okay. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, doing that. What else? Uh, Mr. Miami. Uh, that's why I donate through PayPal. So y'all get it all. I, PayPal, PayPal takes two though, but they don't take, I guess, as much as YouTube does. Uh, DDW may be the top dog. Yeah, he is. I mean, look, him and TD both are in reason. Like, I, I don't even want to say that one is better than the other. I think all three of them are great at what they do, and they they they're good at it. Um, you know, and and so that's um, Miami native. It's just dry right now. When the season starts, you'll get more views, especially if you go live during games. I'm actually going to be at a lot of the games. And you're right. That's probably true. But um, I'm thinking about doing a pregame show from the, the tailgate. That's the goal. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, though. So that's in the works. That is in the works. So, And, and I want to give something for every fan, too. You know, so like when you guys donate, it's it's a big deal, you know. Um, it, 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 you know, for me, it's it's. You guys took hard earned money that you guys earn to donate to my channel. Like that's a that that means a lot to me. Like when you I don't think people. um, Yeah, DDW is the pre-recorded champ and CD is the live show king. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's the fin I'm looking right now that you said you said you sent me one in in PayPal. Uh, I now you sent me two this morning. All right. And so just so you know. From both of your donations, PayPal took ninety cents altogether, which is fine. And then I think when I doubt when I put it into my account, I think it'll be like another thirty or forty cents. So, yeah, I mean, it's I guess it's a hell of a lot better than what YouTube does. I I like Cash App the best. Cash App to me is the best out of all of them, but I'm not ever going to promote it like that. Like for me, it's I'm just grateful you guys are like even if I get a dollar, bro. Like I don't care. Like I feel like. You guys are sending me any, like, you could have found the dollar on the street and you could have done something else with that dollar. It does not matter. So, Miami Native, you should cover uh, UM Games too. That'll draw a whole different audience. Um, yeah, like, here's here's the real thing. So, um, when you look at what uh, UM does, Miami Sports Music, like, I want to have a heat show. I want to have a hurricane show. I want to have a Panther show and I want to have a Marlin show all on our channel. Cause I think they would all be big. So what I'm trying to find right now among a million other things that I'm trying to do is podcast or YouTubers that are willing to do podcast. Um, if they want to go on live, that's fine, but we got to discuss like the, the live stuff, but like, that's what I want to do. I want, I, I want, I want to see a whole bunch of podcasts. If the podcast is live, that's fine too. That doesn't bother me. I just, um, you know, if, if you guys know of a good podcast that they're not affiliated with anybody but themselves, but you like their content, hit me up on, uh, whatchamacallit, um, you, uh, not YouTube, Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter at Stephen D S K P L. And I want to know what other podcasts you might like, but what, not Dolphin stuff. What I'm really looking for right now is Hurricanes, uh, Panthers, Heat, uh, and Marlins. I really would love to find those. And maybe even a soccer one, too. You know? So, um, yeah. So, let me know. Those are the ones that I would like to do. So I hope I guys gave you a little bit of an intel because now I've been on for five and a half hours. I love you guys. You guys won't donate one more time. You guys won't donate to the channel one more time before I get out of here. You won't do it. You guys can't do it. Uh-uh. 
nobody else is doing it. You'll be the only one. Steven trying for a six hour show. Uh, Marcus J seriously considering my own dolphin show, probably only once a week, maybe daily, not sure, but I'd love to do Marlins might throw them in Marcus. If you're interested, hit me up on Twitter. Like I'm looking for people that are willing to do content on our network. I'm trying to grow something big here. So, um, I want to do it with people that, uh, <laughs> that are doing it. <laughs> Brian, uh, bro, I'm convinced you're never stopping the stream. Nah, because ain't nobody going to donate. Ain't nobody going to donate no more. I don't believe it. I don't believe nobody's going to donate one more time. They're not going to do it, Brian. Brian, they're not going to donate. They're not going to become a member to the YouTube channel. They're not going to click join. They're not going to become a DWA or DWA loyalty or a DWA for life member. They won't do it. They ain't about that life. They ain't about that Finn's life. Everyone is all over the Dolphins. Yeah, I know. Sure, I'll DM you on Twitter. <laughs> uh, Marcus, you're the man, brother. Seriously, if you're interested, yeah, hit me up. We'll we'll talk about it. Uh, Finsanity 5 might do Heat podcast collab. But, so Finsanity originally was going to be on the channel, and I still want her on. I love Finsanity, by the way. I think she's amazing. Um, but she's going to school, and so she she's focusing on her schoolwork, and I want her to do that. And But the moment she's ready to do uh, a podcast, I, I want her on so bad. Like, she's so good at what she does. She's very smart. She's very talented. And um, I'd love her to do Dolphin stuff. And, yeah, I think it would be big. I think it would be really big to have her on so uh yeah uh might do heat podcast club yeah i look larry i'm when you when you reach out when next time you talk to her say hey you know you need to go do a heat podcast on steven's miami sports music channel right on solo's miami sports music channel um talk aoc dolphins they lose half their team to the nfl though yeah Yep, that's true. Yeah, man. Look, I mean, uh, I just wanted to uh, to be transparent with you guys. I'm glad I did. I feel a lot better than I was. Because there's days where I'm like, was I asking too much? Was I? But I feel like everything I've read, this is how you have to start it. And so this is how you have to do it. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not the way. But it's the way I'm going about it right now. You know, and as we grow and as we expand, I think it'll get a lot bigger and a lot better. And um, that's my goal. Spread kindness Friday. Because I want to be able to give back eventually, too. That's what I want to do. So. Um, I sent it to you. Even sent the logo concept. Oh man, you really, you really doing your thing with that? I think I just got it because I just got a notification on my phone. Uh, no, I didn't see it. One request. No, I don't see it. Did you? See, oh, you sent it on Twitter. Oh, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, look, man, we'll talk. We'll we'll talk, Marcus. If you're really serious about that, we can definitely talk. I, I want to put more uh, content on here, and uh, but I want to put quality content, too. I don't just want it to be, um, you know, whatchamacallit, um, I want it to be good quality content. That's the only way people take us uh, seriously. Wait, I have a question. Why is he called Solo D? Uh, because, first of all, his first name starts with D, and there's only one of him. He's Solo. So uh, that's why. Everybody calls him D. So he's the only D. Um. Uh, keep grinding and putting out good content, bro. You'll get there before you know it. 
I'm glad I actually had the conversation with you all today about that. You're right. A lot of people don't have that conversation. Bro, just stop the stream, my guy. <laughs> all right, I will. I promise. Five and a half hours later. Reach out to my guy, Top Billion. That's the name of his channel. Stetson, great show. No problem. I'll tell you what, I'll get off the stream when I get one more donation of $5 or more. I get one more donation of $5 or more, I'll stop the stream. <laughs> Why somebody give me a dislike? Oh, I got a dislike. 105. Uh, send me their information, Estefan, Estefan, and like uh, social media, and I'll, I'll do it. 106 likes. Talk AFC. Is that you again, bro? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Right, it must be a Jet fan. Haters are, Steven. That they are. Haters are going to hate. Get the rest, bro. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm out. I can't do it. Rob did it. Rob's been doing it all week. Brian, this has been the longest three minutes of my life. <laughs> oh, M. M with the $10 donation. Oh, yeah. Oh, you guys are awesome. Uh, probably because they want you to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, shout out to M. Shout out to Rob in the building. You. Yep. <laughs> you can't leave. Hey. I'm, you know. <laughs> oh, you ain't leaving. Cisco, bro, you're still on? Webby's going to make you sleep on the couch, bro. <laughs> nah, because he's earned that sleep today, bro, for real. <laughs> sleep stream coming your way. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, I'm dying, bro. <laughs> Money's on the flow. Top billing is the truth. Just started covering the fins. Uh, bro, you still alive? Wow, I'm dying laughing. <laughs> I'm crying. Because, <laughs> hey, I got a 5 and $10 one. Won't nobody donate 20 They won't double that $10 one. Won't nobody donate $20. Steven about to go home with Mac. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> You know, goodness well, YouTube taking their money. Hashtag no sleep zone. Won't nobody donate $20. Won't nobody do it. He, he, he's, he's like, Trap, I don't think he can stop the stream. <laughs> ah. Money never sleeps. Yeah, won't nobody donate $20. Though. Won't, so, so it was funny because... Uh, Rob donated five, and then M's like, "No, nah, I gotta double that." So he donated ten. Won't nobody donate? Won't nobody double that? No, Steven, stop! <laughs> Drop the stream yard. We <laughs> just got started. I dare you. <laughs> Sleep is for the weak. Um, uh, won't don't. <laughs> Will you drop the mic when somebody drops twenty? I don't know because if somebody drops twenty, that means they doubled it, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna see if somebody will double that. But ain't nobody gonna do twenty, so I, don't worry about it. Uh, Cisco Fins Nation, we go hard. <laughs> you gotta turn on. I can't say her name too loud. She's in the room here with me. Uh, <laughs> someone better match my twenty. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, man, y'all are killing me today. Uh, you know what's funny? I'll be like, man, I'm exhausted. I can never do five and a half hours again, right? And then I'll be like, you know what? I think I could do five hours again today. Money flows. 
Don't make us DDoS your computer. Uh, won't nobody donate twenty dollars. Won't nobody double M's donation. Ain't nobody about that life. They ain't about that life, Rob. They ain't about that life. Talk AFC one hundred. If anybody donates a hundred, I will send them an autographed um, item from a former or current player of the Miami Dolphins, and I will let them have. Uh, they can pick anything they want off this list. You'll get two things. If they donate a hundred right now, I'll, I'll make that happen. You've been streaming for so long that I had to switch devices. My phone died. <laughs> Don't drop the mic. You can sleep when you die. Last week, someone told me when I moved to GA that I would cheer for the GA Bulldogs. I said, hell no, Canes for life, and my second team would be Georgia Tech. But there is no second team for me. Sports, 100. This whole world about to see a wild, see how wild a fan base we have when the season starts. And we start bullying facts. We've been doing this for a long time. We hungry. Time to eat. I've been watching Fast and the Furious from the beginning. And Tyree, we hungry. What you got? You got some food in there? We hungry. Won't nobody, won't nobody. Hey, Rob, nobody's going to donate $20. They ain't about that life. They're not matching M stuff. And ain't nobody about to donate 100 either, so. It's whatever. I guess y'all want to see me go to sleep. Won't nobody get to 110 likes. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, you guys have been great, though, so far. I, I Absolutely amazing. Oh, you guys, your chats don't know how to stop. Uh, I see what y'all doing. Y'all busy putting in the donation stuff. I get it. I get it. Y'all, y'all, somebody's about to hit that $20 donation to match M's, to double up M's. Because, you know, Rob did five, then M did 10. So that means 20's coming, right? 20's coming, right? Who's doing that? Cause nobody, some y'all just sleep on my on the stream. <laughs> uh, oh man, I'm actually surprised I'm holding twenty people strong in here. It's like with all this money, your mortgage is paid off, bruh, bruh. You got your hundred likes. Just go to sleep. <laughs> Give me a hundred and ten. All right, I'll I'll go because ain't nobody gonna match that twenty dollar donation. That's fine. I get it. I understand it. Y'all didn't have a good time today. I see you. If you still live <laughs> live in a month, I'll donate twenty. <laughs> uh, you know you know I will, Marcus. I'm doing this thing. I'm in this thing for the long haul. Oh. Oh my God. Hook up with Hurricane uh, T2Y. He's funny than another YouTube. I watch Paul Scoop. You know Footballville? Yeah, I've heard of Footballville. I've heard of Footballville. I haven't watched their stuff, but I've heard of them. Have the wife donate 20. Really, Prayer Warrior? Bruh. You know what's funny though? I feel like um forget a house, you'll live in that chair now. <laughs> oh, see, that's what keeps me on is these good these good chats right here. Talk AFC, we almost at five hours and forty minutes. All right, if somebody donates forty dollars. I'll stay on to, to get to six hours. I'll do another 20 minutes. And I'll talk about football. Somebody donates $40. I'll do it. I'll do an extra 20, 20 minutes. And and I'll do and yeah, we'll just 
My wife will donate. Let's go. Please, a 40. <laughs> but they ain't going to do it. Talk AFC. They ain't about that life. Ain't nobody donating that. Prayer Warrior 3. Shout out to Prayer Warrior. First fist bump. Uh, uh, uh. We got three. We got three. <laughs> oh, man. Just don't die in that chair now. <laughs> You go to six regardless. Uh uh. No, I'm not gonna do it. I won't. Not. Nope. Nope. Not gonna do it. We're gonna be. We're gonna be making a month of the milestones next. <laughs> That's another Miami Dolphins first down. <laughs> I'm crying, man. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, ain't nobody going to donate. See, and see, see, yeah. See? All right, so so this is how we're going to start it. Now we're going to start it at, we'll start it over again. Prayer got three. Who can give me a $6 donation? Who can double up Prayer Warriors $3 donation? Who's going to double up his $3 to a $6 donation? Who's going to do it? He's going to end the stream at 5, 59, 59. I ain't even that smooth. I don't even know how that would work. Who's going to double up my man Prayer Warriors $3 stream? Or $3 stream. $3 uh, um, donation. Who's going to give, who's, who's going to donate six? Who's going to donate $6? Who's going to double up Prayer Warriors donation? <laughs> I'm at 108 likes too. I can get to I can get to 110. That's another Miami Dolphin. That's a good one, Chris. I do like that. Ain't nobody going to donate 6. They ain't going to donate $6. Not going to happen. Not gonna happen. Hundred and nine. All right. See, that's a hundred and nine. You want me to make two new accounts to hit that like? Hey, somebody got uh, somebody hit a hundred and nine. Who's gonna get to a hundred and ten likes? Anybody? You know what? Instead of three dollars, who's going? Who's going to hit me with that four dollar donation? Who's going one up Prayer Warriors donation? This guy's got. To... <laughs> oh, my eyes are so heavy, bro. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Ain't nobody watching this at the end. <laughs> I'm going to have to, like, cut out the uh, the interview just so people actually watch the interview. <laughs> Talk AFC. Because <laughs> Ain't nobody watching a six-hour live stream where I'm doing absolutely nothing but laughing at your guys' chats for the last hour. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Oh. Oh my goodness! Who's, who's going one up? Who's going to one up? Prayer Warriors three dollar donation. Won't nobody do it. Ain't nobody going to do it. They don't want to see me go to sleep. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it got a little lively there at the end too. That's the funny part. <laughs> All 
All right, when we go get some football talk in here, okay. All right, we get some football talk in here. Damn, we had a hundred plus an hour ago. We went down to seventeen in the stream. Go get some rest, bro. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll do it. If I ever become rich, I will donate to each UTD TDW a thousand dollars. I promise. Hey. Love you, talk AFC Dolphins. Definitely. All right. All right. I'm literally going going this time, and I'm going to go to sleep. And, yeah, because nobody else is going to donate to the channel. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to do it. Nobody's going to donate. I'm at 109 likes. I at least got to get to 110. I got to get to 110. Somebody's got to hit one more like. It's only if you don't die in the chair. <laughs> 109. 109. Give me to 110 likes. Let's go. Let's go. 110 likes. You know, it's funny. Solo's going to hit me up. Dude, did you do six hours this morning? Or today? 110, 110 likes. Who's watching right now who hasn't hit that like button? I'm going to say the word football, and that means I talked about football in the last 45 minutes. Cash App does not recognize Stephen D. Because you're putting a thing at the end of it. Put um, the Cash App. Don't put the period at the end. Do Stephen D. 13. Here, I'll do this for you. I'll make it easier for you. Uh, cash. Uh. Hold on, bro. I got you. All right, hold on. Prayer Warrior said, Good night. What made you become a Dolphins fan? Honestly, my dad um, did. I, um, my dad grew up in Connecticut and was a, was a, was a Red Sox fan, a Celtics fan, just everything. And, um, you know, for me, when I was, uh, whatchamacallit, um, I'm going to answer your question. I'm just trying to get this link. Get one more donation and will Steven will sign Melvin Ingram personally. <laughs> Note about that. I'm going to answer your question, Brian. Give me one second. I promise you I will. I promise you I will.
Oh, you know why? It's not Stephen D13 anymore. Wow. That might help. I changed it. I'm glad I saw that. See, I was doing this at 5 a.m. and totally forgot that I changed it a couple weeks ago. It's at Stephen D S K P L. And it's got the money sign in front of it. Um, no, it's Stephen D S K P L. There we go. There it goes, right there. Stephen D S K P L. That's it. Right there, boys. Awesome. Okay. To answer your question, my dad grew up as a Connecticut fan. Everything was Boston fan, everything, but hated the Patriots for some reason and liked the Dolphins. Collected football cards as a kid. So when I grew up, I just liked, you know, what I, I liked what my dad liked when it came to that, but I hated everything else he did. I hated the Celtics. I hated the Red Sox. Uh, I thought my dad was just a, you know, bitter, mean old man, which he was not. He's just a military guy, and I was a stubborn kid. And But for some reason, I did love the Dolphins. And I think Dan Marino had a lot to do with that. So I think for me, you know, I fell in love with the team because, of you know, it was the only time my dad and I never argued. We were always hanging out. And, uh, you know, I remember watching the Oakland Raiders-Dolphins game on the couch with him as a kid. And I just, I don't know, I fell in love with them. I fell in love hard with them. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it was crazy. Who in the stream watched the games? I want to know what happened, basically. Um, yeah, for my dad is a Dolphins fan. That's it. Yeah. A hundred percent. So, you know, that's, that's what happened. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Shout out to Dwayne donating $30 through Cash App, y'all. Shout out to Dwayne D-Dub. Dolphin Dialogue donating $30 in the Cash App, y'all. Y'all give it up for that man. Y'all give it up for that man right there. And I got to 112 likes. Dwayne, brother, I appreciate it, man. It means a lot. All of it means a lot. It means the world to me. You guys are awesome and amazing. All right, guys. I'm really leaving this time. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um. Oh, damn. 15 minutes. I'll get to three. I'll get to six hours, huh? I guess I could stay on for another 15 minutes. Let's get to 125 likes and two more donations in 15 minutes. Can we do it? Can y'all do it? Can you do it? I'll go to six hours. I'll do six hours if y'all stay up here with me and promote with me. I need y'all's help if I'm going to do it. I'm going to need y'all's help to do 15 more minutes. I need 100, I'm at 112 likes. I need 125 likes and I need two more donations, two more big donations. Let's go. Let's go. Marcus J, fine, bro. You guys can ask me anything you want. Let's go. Uh, who do you think winning the Super Bowl next year? <laughs> Prayer Warrior Rose News. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. <laughs> um, I mean, look, I want to say, I want to say us, man. I want to say that we are like, I know I'm a homer, but there's no team that's going to have what we're going to have. Like, it's going to be crazy. 
Like, on paper, I think we're the best team in football. On paper. Top to bottom. Top to bottom. On paper, I think we're the best team. And the and and places where we're weak at, maybe at, at other teams have better. Like, you know, I, I just... Whew. I I just I think top to bottom I think we're better I think the depth we have at O line as well at with the exception of center um, and wide receiver I mean I just think it's it's going to be crazy I think it's going to be absolutely insane Big Time says have to respect the hustle times three I appreciate it Big Time uh, Who do you think the breakout player will be? I mean, can I say Jalen Waddle? I mean, he's a rookie, so I don't know. But, I mean, I think Jalen Waddle is about to tear it up. Jalen Waddle for offense and then Jalen Phillips for defense, bro. Those two guys are going to go crazy. They're going to go ham. And Eschenberg's going to start every game. Eschenberg's going to start every freaking game. Mark my words. Mark my words, he will. It's going to be wild. Uh, Brian, it's going to be, take a while for Coach Flo to got to grow the crop. Uh, look, I, I don't think so. I think that, I think this is the team that he wants. This is the team that Flo's ready to go into war with. Guys, 112 likes, two more donations. I want to say we're almost at 75. If we get to 75, I'll throw in a DWA hoodie. I'm serious. I said I would do it. So let me see where I'm at. Uh, which episode I got to go to? Hold on, guys. I'm going to count this. And then I'm going to answer your questions. I'm not done answering your questions. 28. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. 36, 37, 75. We already reached the 75. 80. 83. Let's get to 90. Let's get to 90 donations. Let's go. 90 donations. I didn't forget about the cash apps and the PayPal's. Um. Yeah, let's get to 90. So I think that's that's four more donations, and may and they and and let them be um, the biggest. Yeah, the biggest donations you guys can do. The biggest donation we've had so far today is thirty dollars, and I want to say the biggest donation we've had so far on this whole week was. Was that? Yeah. So the biggest donation we've had so far is $30. So beat $30. Four more donations. 
And how many more likes do we need? We need 13 more likes. My lucky number, 13. Like it. All right, let's see here. Um, uh, do, 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 do. What team do you think will surprise people next year other than us? Uh, good question, Brian. Um, Jacksonville. As much as I hate to say it, I think they are. Atlanta's going in the crapper. Don't see Carolina doing anything. I know that's the NFC. Never mind. Um, Jacksonville's the AFC South. So who's the AFC South? Um, boy, I'm 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 working on almost no sleep. That's why I can't think right now. Yeah, I mean, look, the Colts have Carson Wentz, right? Tennessee's winning the division, and who knows what's going to happen with with uh, Houston. So I, I think Jacksonville finishes second and gets the last wild card spot in the AFC. I can see that. I 100% could see that. I think it could definitely, definitely do that. Uh, we have the best defense in the NFL. No doubt about that. Uh, Chris says, I hate how we let the Bills just smack us like that at the end of the season. We knew going into the game we had to win to make the playoffs. Can't We need, we need to lose when we're playing trash teams. Because the teams we need to lose when we're playing trash teams. Bro, if we have to rely on the last week getting in again... We're not where we think we are. We are not who we thought we were. We are not who we thought they were. That's real. Maybe Jesse Davis can actually start. Nope. No, sir. Unless an injury happens. Uh, 90 donations. Are you serious? Marcus, you laugh, sir. You laugh. Um, Tua played like trash that game. Burgers, fries, pizza, hot dog, sandwiches. And the teams like the Steelers, which is messed up, rest of their players, we got BS from missing the playoffs in a 10 and 6 and a 7 and 9. Thought you'd be hungry. I am hungry. Hungry for success. Yeah, I think the Chargers are Jets, actually. Uh, oh, the Pats. Do you think the Chiefs solved their O-line issues? Do you think they'll be the AFC team to beat? I do I do think that they solved their AFC, their line issues to a certain extent. I think it's better than it was. I think their offensive line is better than it was last year. But I will say this. Miami can beat them the way they are today on paper. And in my opinion, Tua's best game was the second half of that Chiefs game. So don't get it twisted. We, The Chiefs are, are, I don't think they are the best team. That's just my opinion. Texans will suck without Watson. Don't the Rams have a pretty good defense? And so I'm interested to see how Matt Stafford does there. That is something that I'm interested in looking at. I think it'll be fun to see that. Guys. I think it's four more donations. It could be a dollar. Four more donations to get to 90 donations. And can somebody beat the $30 at $31? Who can do that? Or more? $30 or more. Match or beat the $30 donation. Who's the highest donation of the week, I think? What is Siler's first name or what's his whole name? The sleeper, uh, um, Zach Siler, I think. Exiler, yeah. See, I know. I I wasn't. I didn't even look. I didn't even have my phone turned on, like the sound on.
No, I don't see it, Rob. I don't see it, Rob. Chris Johnson, $90, 90 donations, and you won't stop. If I get to 90 donations, you tell me what I, you want me to do at 90 donations, and I'll do it, Chris. I'll do it. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Um, is that the reason we moved Phillips from linebacker to start Zach at DE? Yes, it is. Here's, you know what? Here's a good conversation to have. What will Christian Wilkins do this year? What will Christian Wilkins do this year? Because, by the way, I love Christian Wilkins. Absolutely love him. Love Christian Wilkins, but I have no idea what he's going to do. None whatsoever. Uh, don't worry, Steve. If the offense clicks and the O-line is average, we'll be good. We'll go 15-2. and two. I mean, I think we get 13 wins, so look, from your mouth to God's ears, Jay. Jay, did you hit that like button? Do you subscribe? Member of the channel? Let's go. Uh, do -do -do -do. You got to drink ketchup at 90. I will drink a very small shot glass of ketchup. A very small. If we get to 90 and somebody beats the $31 donation. Actually, make it two. I need to make it worth my while. I need two people to beat the $31 donation of the four donations that I we need to get to 90. And I'll do a I'll do a shot of ketchup. I'll do that, Brian. I'll do it. I don't have hot mustard. But I'll do a shot of ketchup for that. It's got to be four donations, and two of them have to be they have to be matching or beat the thirty dollar donation, which was the highest of the day so far. So if that happens, I will do that. Um, Wilkins is going to be great. This Pro Bowl is what he'll do. Why are they starting Zach? Don't get me wrong. I love Siler, but start Wilkins. I don't understand that either, but from what I get, um, it's definitely because of that. All right, Marcus just donated a dollar, so three more donations to go, but two of them have to be $30 or more. Let's go. Let's go. In order for me to drink ketchup anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so Marcus just donated two dollars, <laughs> one dollar, one dollar. All right, so we are two away now. We just need the 230s, Marcus says. Let's go. Two thirty dollar donations, and I will, and I. We'll throw a shot of ketchup. Being as I haven't had anything to eat all day now that I think about it either, by the way. <laughs> I saw, Marcus, I just saw your, your tweet. <laughs> it looked like from a few hours ago, though, now. <laughs> Can we get 15 likes on this video, Finns fans, so my boy can get some sleep? <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, bro. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna donate that. They 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 don't want to see me drink the ketchup. They ain't not about that life. They ain't not about that life. 
By the way, the Cash App, just so everybody knows, is Stephen. S K P L. <laughs> that's the cash app. Just so everybody knows, the one that's up there, I got to get fixed. And I'll do that over the weekend, but I'm not doing it today. Thank God your love. Thank God your love. I got nothing going on waiting to install so I can watch the NBA playoffs at night. Oh man, that's that's gotta be that's gotta be horrible. I hate waiting on the cable people. They don't ever do what they're supposed to do in the time they're supposed to do it. At all. At all, my guy. Drink a bottle of brandy with ketchup. I don't have any brandy. What's your favorite player on the team? My favorite player on the team is probably Christian Wilkins. Um, I I really think that that would be the case. Um, that will make the that will make drop the mic. <laughs> Christian Wilkins, I enjoy listening to. Him. He's not my favorite player on the field, but he's damn sure one of the funnest guys to listen to, like on the mic and off the field, from what I've heard. So I would say I enjoy listening to him, uh, especially when he's mic'd up and stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, on the field, I would probably have to go with Tua. I mean, I just, you know, seeing him do some of the things. There were glimpses last year that I was like, holy cow, this kid is good. Like, he's really good. And um, there were glimpses, in my opinion, and I know this is, will be a very controversial saying. Guys, two more two more donations, $30 or more. Um, whatchamacallit, uh, and I'll drink ketchup. I'll do a shot of ketchup. Um, there were times, I know this will be controversial, there were times that Tua last year showed glimpses that he was so much better than Ryan Tannehill ever was. And by the way, I like Tannehill. But there were some glimpses last year where my jaw was just dropped of what Tua could do. The potential's there. Right? The potential's there for Tua. And I just I want to see him get that respect. That's what I want to see. You know, I, 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 I straight up enjoy everything that's going on. So. Yeah, I don't see any. I I uh, forget who was trying to send me money here on the on the stuff. I don't see anything here from PayPal or uh, Cash App that you were just trying to send me. If I don't know if you were trying to or didn't or whatever, but um, yeah, I don't see it. So uh, that Patriots game, Stephen. Which one are you talking about? This one. I'm not I'm talking about that one. That one? Talking about the Miami Miracle? All day. All day. Yeah, we got nine people watching now. There's no way nobody's donating $30. That ain't happening. And I think I got to six hours now. All right. I did six hours of a live stream. Who wants to donate at least two more to get to the 90 donations? Ninety donations. Just need two more donations. Get to 90 donations. Two is Patriots game, Steven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, I mean, that's the only that's the that's my favorite Patriot game of all time, right there. Um, ah, I mean, I I I I, I didn't. I'm not sure yet. I'm still, you know, the book is still out on that because, you know, Belichick knows what type of plays. Yeah, like he, him and Nick Saban are like best friends. So he knew Tua. He knew Tua. He knew how to play him. He knew what his strengths were. He knew what his weaknesses were. What do you want me to say? Belichick know, is the smartest head coach ever, unfortunately. Um. I understand that he beat Belichick as a rookie. I'm just saying that Patriots team was garbage. And they didn't necessarily win because of Tua, but they didn't lose because of him either. Marcus with the two $1 donations. Way to go. Now sleep. Guys, 90 donations, over 113 likes. Um... Absolutely amazing, guys. And over six hours of live streaming. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are awesome. Um, sleep, it's not late. Yeah, I'm definitely going to sleep. Um, don't nobody donate to that channel no more. <laughs> I can't stay on anymore. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely... Uh, enjoyed today with you guys i hope you guys enjoyed it it was a little of you that just stuck with me and we had a really really good time it was all fun it was all games so let's make it happen captain all right guys i love you fins up make sure you subscribe make sure you like make sure you're you know you can donate at any time um, i'm gonna do the drawing on monday Try to get myself together this weekend. Make sure. Oh, you guys are going to like this afternoon's show on Onside Radio. So go check out Onside Radio at 6 p.m. And tell me what you think of the show. It's with Dolphins NYC President Igor, the guy who does the MetLife Takeover. It's a dope show. You guys got to go check it out. Okay? All right, so make sure you guys go do that. That's tonight at 6 p.m. on Onside Radio. It's going to be awesome. Uh, good job, bro. No, good job to y'all. Shout out to everybody who donated. Shout out to everybody who shared. Shout out to everybody who liked. Um, I don't think anybody else is going to watch the six-hour stream, so I'm going to have to take that interview I did with Julius Pruitt and change it. But uh, it was still it was pretty awesome. So I love you guys. Be good. And I will uh, see you all on Monday. Don't forget to watch the show this afternoon on Onside Radio. Peace out.